Get ready to match the stars. Michael Landon. Vicki Lawrence. Jack Klugman. Joanne Flew. Richard Dawson. Anita Gillette. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 73. And here's the host of Match Game 73, Gene Ritter. Hello there. Hello there. How are you? You ran that faster than Secretariat. <laughs> Listen, Jack, you know what he says? What? If you ever come back, you're going to come back a secretary. Oh, I should be so lucky. Oh, and I wouldn't marry my wife. I married right. Nashua. If you're all ready, I'll just press on here with the business at hand. I thank you for being here. I welcome you to Match Game 73. This is your old favorite updated with more action, more money, and more celebrities. You've met our stars. Now let's meet our current champion. Here she is, Stanley Viltz. <laughs> Well, Stanley, you've got a total of $450 to your credit. Our time ran out just as you were about to start the big super match. And you've done that once before, so you know how that goes. Are you ready for it? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, well, we'll get to that super match right after this. All right, we're ready to go on here. Are you ready, Stanley? You've won $100. You've got the right now to try for our super match, which can pay over $5,000. Here we go. We polled a previous studio audience for their best response to this. Odd blank. Odd blank. Now, the most frequent response given by that audience is worth $500, if you can match it. The second most common answer pays $250. And the third, $100. Whatever you win is yours to keep. But you can then go on to try for 10 times your winnings. So if you match the $500 response, for instance, uh, you'll have a shot at $5,000. Now, the panelists are going to help you. You choose three celebrities, one at a time, get their suggested responses, and then select one. Which one do you want first? Joanne. Joanne, how do you fill in this blank? Odd? Well, I saw odd, and I thought of Jack Klugman, yeah. so I thought of odd couple. Odd couple is mm -hmm. your response. OK, celebrity number two. Anita. Anita. I, th I would think oddball. Oddball. You also yeah. thought it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, she also I thought of it. Hear what he said? Okay. Uh, celebrity number three. Fool you. Vicky, yeah. how do you fill in that blank? Odd. I would have said ball or couple. So uh, <laughs> being as I can, I guess uh, odd or even, maybe. Odd or even. Okay. So That's your good. celebrities have given you odd couple, <laughs> odd ball, <laughs> odd or even. Okay, now you pick one of those or discard them all. But right now, and give us one of your own if you want, we call for one response. Ball. Oddball. Oddball. Oddball is her answer. Let's find out how that audience responded. We're looking for oddball. May we see the $100 response? Oddfellow. Nobody thought of that. I also didn't think of that. Right? All right, we're looking for oddball. May we see the $250 response? Oddball it is, and you've got the 250. <laughs> Anita gave you that, didn't she? <laughs> Oddball, okay. You've won uh, the $250, and you can now play for $2,500. Before we get to that, let's find out what's under the $500 response. It would have been if it said Otto Reeven up there. Oh, it would have been. I'd have been in real trouble. Your whole career would have gone down. Down in the toilet. All right, now Stanley, to collect the two thousand five hundred dollars, you must match one of our celebrities, and you must match that star head to head. Let's begin by getting the question, which is in this envelope. Everyone, listen carefully, because a celebrity will be chosen in a moment. Fill in this blank. Sugar blank. Sugar blank. Which celebrity do you pick to match on that question? Joanne. Joanne Flood. You turn around and face me while Joanne writes her answer. Sugar blank. Hmm. 
Okay. She has finished her answer. $2,500 at stake here. Now give us your response, Stanley. Sugar cookie. Mm. Sugar cookie is what she says. All right, Joanne, for $2,500, may we see your response? I said Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson is her answer. Well, Stanley, I'm sorry you didn't make that one, but you still have your grand total of $700, which is yours, and you're not through yet. Remember, you're still our champ. You're going to meet a new challenger right after this. All right, this is match game 73, and we're going to meet a new contestant. Let's say hello to Trevor Cumming. Tell us a little about yourself, please. I'm an air conditioning engineer. I'm married to a young lady from French Canada. And I'm also an Englishman from Brighton, London, which now gives us two nuts on the show. Okay. <laughs> that makes, <laughs> that makes two. <laughs> okay, good luck to you, Trevor. You're up against Stanley Vils here, who's a formidable opponent. Good luck to both of you. Now, uh, both of you are going to try to match our six celebrities in answering questions. You'll get two chances. At the end of the second round, whoever has matched the most celebrities wins, gets $100, and the right to go to our super match where you can win over $5,000. All right, let's start with round one. There it is. The challenger will make the selection, so Trevor, go. B. B is what he says. Everybody plays, and this is it. John said to Mary, your blank is flat. <laughs> John said to Mary, your blank is flat. Stanley is scratching her head here, thinking about that one. Everybody ready over there? They are already, Stanley, so we'll call for your response now. Trevor, I beg your pardon. Your blank is flat, John said to Mary. What do you say? Um, your tire is flat. Your tire is flat, is what John said to Mary. Let's see what happens up here with Mike Landon's answer. Your tire is flat. I don't think there would be anything else he could say to her except that your tire is flat. That's right. <laughs> All right. We're looking for a flat tire, Vicky. What have you got? The most common expression I hear is your chest. <laughs> That's what I want. I'll fight any man in this bar who says it there. <laughs> Jack, what do you say? We're looking uh, for flat tire. My wife has a voice like Andy Devine, so I said voice. Your voice is flat. Okay, Joanne, we're looking for your tire is flat. Oh, I went weird again. I said your hair is flat. Your hair is <laughs> flat. Hair there. Okay. What do you say, Richard, to this? Keep taking the tablets. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually, a lot of ladies do wear tires up here, and I said, your chest, your chest is flat. flat. Okay. Good. Let her mother worry. <laughs> Anita. Well, I, I, I like a person with a bouncy sense of humor, so I put, your humor is flat. Your humor is flat. So you scored once there, Trevor. And now let's see how Stanley does with this. Mary wanted to say yes when John proposed, but all she could do was blank. <laughs> Did you hear that, Stanley? Mary wanted to say yes when John proposed, but all she could do was blank. All right. Everybody's ready, so we'll get Stanley's answer now. Laugh. What do you say? Laugh. Stanley's answer is laugh, and let's see if that scores a match. Mike? Well, I'm afraid I take it a little more seriously than Stanley, and out of joy, I would say cry. Oh, she cried. Okay. Vicky, so we're looking for laugh. He's so sentimental. Stanley and I both laugh. <laughs> All right. Jack? I had forgotten my wife did laugh, but I cried. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All she could do was... <laughs> laugh. Laugh! Okay. Okay. Another match. Richard. Uh, she was delighted with the proposal, but as she was with child, all she could do was... <laughs> Let's see what you have, Anita. Well, I sort of somewhere in the middle. I said she just sighed. She sighed. <laughs> okay, so at the end of round one, the score is two to one in favor of Stanley. And now let's go to round two. Here it is. Okay, Trevor, you're the challenger. You'll make the selection. 
B. B it is. You've matched one celebrity. That was Mike, and now you'll try matching all of the uh, remaining ones. Mary gave John a bottle of blank. Mary gave John a bottle of blank. All set there, so Trevor will call for your response. What do you say? I have to say scotch. Scotch, you have to say that. Yes. All right. He's he says he's got to say scotch. Mary gave John a bottle of what, Mike? He's already, no, he's oh, that's right. He's, he's already matched him. Vicki, what do you say? Well, to help him get over the uh, proposal to which she laughed, I said she gave him a bottle of booze. Bottle of <laughs> booze. So that is not a match with scotch? No, no because it could be some other brand. Or it was it being British, you and I both said the same thing. Scotch is there. Look at it. Look at it. Well, Trevor, at this moment, the score is tied. Let's see what happens here with Joanne's answer. Well, you read it kind of rhyme form, and I, I thought it was a bottle of beer. Bottle of beer. Okay. <laughs> what do you I say, said Richard booze. Dawson? I thought you were going to say booze. Well, that's an Englishman, mind you. Oh, well, I don't drink. Us, I you. That's too bad. Okay, Anita. Well, I was covering myself in all directions, so I said booze, too. Booze. Okay, so you scored once. Mm tied the score and now let's go to the second half of this round with Stanley's assignment see if we untie it one match will win the game now you've matched Joanne and Vicki now you'll try to match Mike Jack uh, Richard and Anita here we go besides Nixon name a US president besides Nixon name a US president one match wins it for you. Your third one. Everybody ready over there? All right, Stanley, we call for your answer. John Kennedy. John Kennedy is what she says. All right, Mike, John Kennedy wins the game if it comes up on your card. Roosevelt. Okay. Now we'll go over to Jack Klugman. Besides yeah. Nixon, name a U.S. president. Well, since we're both British, you see, of course, it would be Kennedy because we are the same. All right, Trevor, we're going to have to say goodbye to you. We have a terrific gift waiting backstage for you, together with our thanks for playing Match Game 73. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Okay. Well, Stanley, you know, you've been here before. We deposit $100 to your account, and you're going to have a chance at the Super Batch now, another one, your third, in which you could uh, earn up over $5,000. We're going to start that super match right after this. All right. This lady has won her third game, and she's about to have her third go at the super match. Are you all set? Yes. Okay, you know how it goes. We ask a previous studio audience for their best response to this. Water blank. Top response pays $500. The second, $250. The third, $100. Whatever you win, remember, will be yours, and then you can play for ten times that amount. All right, now let's go to the celebrity selection and get their best response. Choose them one at a time, if you please. Joanne. What do you say, Joanne? Water? Fall. Waterfall is her answer. Celebrity number two? Richard Dawson. Waterbed. Waterbed is his answer. And now you got one more. Anita. Well, the only thing on my mind now, I guess, is the water gate. Water I gate water is what gate. she says. So you, they've given you waterfall, waterbed, water gate. Now, you can take one of those or give us one of your own, but now we've got to call for your response. What will it be, Stanley? Bed. Waterbed. Waterbed. All right, let's find out how that audience responded. We're looking for waterbed. May we see the $100 response? Waterfalls. That was there, wasn't it? Joanne gave you that. All right, we're looking for water bed. May we see the $250 response? Water bed it is, another $250. Okay. 
So you've got the $250. That means uh, you're going to have a shot at $2,500. But before we go on to that, let's see the $500 response. Watergate. Anita Gillette gave you that one. Yeah, I guess that's on people's minds, isn't it? All right, now, you know, Stanley, to collect the 2,500, you must match one of our celebrities and match that star head to head. I'll get the question, which is in this envelope here, and we're ready now. All celebrities, listen carefully, because one of you will be chosen in this head to head match. Irish blank. Irish blank. All right, Stanley, choose one celebrity now. Richard Dawson. Richard Dawson is her choice, all right? You face me while he fills in that blank, Irish blank. All right, he is ready. Are you ready with your answer? May we hear it, please? Whiskey. Irish whiskey is what she says. All right, Richard Dawson, for $2,500, your answer, please. Stew. Irish stew. All right, you weren't on the same wavelength but uh, you did win the $250. We'll add that to your previous winnings. And do you know where you are? You're over a thousand. She's got a thousand and fifty dollars. One thousand and fifty. And you're going to play against another contender, and we'll meet that contender right after this. Now, as we continue match game 73, let's meet a new contestant, and let's say hello to Kay Pinkston. All right, Kay. Let's find out a little about Kay. Tell us about yourself, Kay. I'm an elementary teacher currently on leave. I'm married to a chiropractic doctor, and we have three children. Okay, good luck to you here today. Uh, Stanley's already had a great deal of good luck. You know how we play, so let's start with round one. There it is. The challenger makes the selection, so Kay, what do you say? Let's start with A. A is what she wants to start with. Here it is, celebrities, everyone plays. John and Mary, <laughs> you remember them? John and Mary saved money on their wedding because Mary's uncle is a blank. John and Mary saved money on their wedding because Mary's uncle is a blank. Okay? <laughs> it always runs off the ends. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's get Kay's response to this because Mary's uncle is a... Mary's uncle is a preacher. Mary's uncle is a preacher. All right, will these have to be exact there, coach? They will? All right, let's find out what we've got. We're looking for preacher. Mike, what do you say? Well, you didn't give their last name, so I felt it was a non-denominational question. I said it was a minister. Minister. Are we going to match that? That is a match. Okay, that matches preacher. So there's one for you. Vicki, what do you say? I put caterer. A caterer. All right. All right. Jack, what do you say? Well, you know, there was Mary and John Moskowitz, and he was a rabbi. A rabbi. Oh, Why no. not? Why can't it be there, Jury? No match there. Okay. Joanne, what do you say? Well, I figured the most expensive item in a wedding is the food and the drink, so I said a caterer, too. Caterer, too. All right, we're looking for preacher Richard. What do you say there? Well, she was the son of a preacher. That, too? Okay, Mary's uncle is a... Well, I agree with Joanne. A caterer saves you more That's money. the most expensive thing. So, Kay, you scored twice, and now let's see. What's that? You... All right. They're going to accept Thank Rabbi you. Jack. You know, <laughs> my people would send you a lot of letters if you didn't accept that. What, is he not a man of the cloth? Right. Thank you very much. Well, the judge had to think that one over, but you made a great fight, and you scored another one for Kay. So now, uh, in the middle of round one, the score is three to nothing. And let's see how Stanley does here with this. Mary burned her blank. <laughs> Mary burned her blank, Stanley. Did not. <laughs> no peeking there. I've done mine. Oh, you have. All right, here we go. Stanley will get your response now. Mary burned her... Finger. Finger. 
She thought a long time on that, didn't she? Mike, what do you say? Well, unless you're really a bad cook, the first thing you will poke into the fire is your finger. There's a Another man. You're going great with this one, Jack. Is that hand? Hand. That does not match finger, right, yeah. Joanne? Hand. Hand, another hand. And Richard. That matches finger. Well, you fooled me on that. Uh, you did very well and exercised very good judgment. So, at this point, the score is four to three, Stanley. You're ahead. And, uh... Oh, we're gonna say goodbye. That's it, huh? We finished everything. All right, ladies, we're gonna see you next time. We'll pick up right at this point. Score is four to three. Thank you, celebrities, and goodbye Thank to you. you. That's today's session of Match Game. Hope you'll join us next time with our panel of six fabulous celebrities and our contestants. Gene Reverend saying so long for Match Game 73. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 73, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Get ready to match the stars. Dick Gautier. Barbara Stewart, Jack Carter, Joanne Flug, Richard Dawson, and Shelley Winters as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 73. And here's the host of Match Game 73, Gene Hey, listen, it's a pleasure to have all of you with us. And in order to make the record perfectly clear, ladies and gentlemen, we must say that very pretty actress type lady, Barbara Stewart, is married to that pretty actor type man, Dick <laughs> Cotier. Uh, yes. We had to tell everybody Looking wanted to uh, have to make that perfectly clear. For a while, clear. anyway. Before that, it was just fun. <laughs> <laughs> and greet everybody. Shelley, haven't seen you in a while. What have you been up to? Uh, I've been reducing. You have? <laughs> I've been dieting. But you've made a film recently, yes, haven't you? Yes, I know. I played a whale. No, no. <laughs> so that's it. That was Poseidon Adventure, and I had to be fat, which I really didn't want to do. I don't like to eat. And uh, <laughs> That's all over. Yes, it's all over with. Okay. All right, nice to have you with us. And here we go. Is everybody ready to play? Yeah. Sure. Well, then let's say hello to our two players, Jeff Nichols and Joan DeYoung. <laughs> hello there. Those of you who were with us last time will remember that Jeff has already won uh, $700. He's got a total of two games under his belt. And uh, we're into the game. As a matter of fact, we had played one round, hadn't we? And Jeff is leading three to nothing. And we're going to go to the second and final round. And Joan, you're going to have to match three of our celebrities to stay in the running there. We'll see if that happens right after this. Okay, here we go with round two. Are you ready? I will push the button. And remember, Joan, you must match three celebrities to stay in the running. You're the challenger. You'll make the selection. So if you would, please. I'll take A. A it is. All right, everybody plays, and here we go. Helen said to Peter, Why didn't you tell me the blank was wet? Did you hear that, Joan? Helen said to Peter, why didn't you tell me the blank was wet? All right. As soon as you finished, you are finishing. Okay, everybody's finished up there. So Joan DeYoung, we call for your response. Why didn't you tell me the floor? The floor was wet, is her response. Let's see if that scores for her. Remember, you must match three celebrities to stay in the game. Dick Godier will begin with you. She's looking for the answer, floor. 
Well, I, I grew up in Southern California. We used to, you know, go and you know, watch the Grunion and, and all that kind of thing. So I said, sand. The, Tell sand, me the sand was wet. Was wet. I see. Okay. It's a little kind of his answer there. Okay, Barbara Stewart, what do you say? A very female answer. A very female? Baby. The baby was wet. Yes, that is a female yeah, answer yeah, indeed. Adorable. And it's a pretty good answer, too. Okay, she, Joan DeYoung is looking for the word well, floor, Jack. I got a few older kids, but they have less control, so I said that the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, Joan, we're uh, getting to the moment of truth here. You must match the remaining three celebrities to stay in the game. Joanne Flug, she's looking for the word floor. Why didn't you tell me the floor was wet? Well, I was thinking of uh, the park in New York City, and so I put the bench was wet. The bench was wet. So our winner is Jeff Nichols. Congratulations, Jeff. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, uh, just uh, I see that Richard and Shelley held up their cards. They had floor. You missed it by one, Joan. You're a good sport, and therefore we've got a gift for you. Many thanks, Joan DeYoung, for being with us on Match Game 73. This is your third game, right? This is happy Jeff Nichols over here. He's very happy because he's won his third game, and now he's going to have a chance at the big money again, the super match. Are you ready? I'm going to try. Okay. Now, as you know, we polled a previous studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank guard. Or blank guard. I'll give you the accent both ways. The answer given most often by that studio audience is worth $500 if you can match it. The second most frequent response, $250. And the third, $100. Your celebrities will help you. You'll choose three, get their responses, and then pick one of those or use one of your own if you like. The money you win up here will be yours to keep, and then you'll have a go at the big money. Are you ready? All right, let's choose some celebrities here now. Joanne Flute. Joanne, I'm, what do you say? I'm split between two, so I'll go with the first one, lifeguard. Lifeguard is her answer. All right, another celebrity, Jeff? Jack Carter. Uh, <laughs> can you mention a commercial product? <laughs> well, I don't know. If you think... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I hate to. If you think that's. I studio... swear I'm receiving nothing. That's... <laughs> Jack, the only guidance I can give you is this. If you think the studio audience said that, then you say it. If you really oh, believe that. Really? Yeah. No, well, then I'll, I'll go with safeguard. 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 All right, that's his answer. You got two now. Richard Dawson. What do you say, Richard? Well, I know it's something that Jack hasn't been given. Obviously, I would have thought right guard. Right guard. Okay. Nothing personal, Jack. <laughs> I can smell it from here. So your celebrities have given you lifeguard, safeguard, and right guard. Now, you can choose one of those or give us one of your own, but right now, Jeff, we've got to have an answer. Lifeguard. Lifeguard it is. The audience seems to agree with you. Let's see what happens. We are looking for lifeguard. May we see the $100 response? <laughs> National Guard is the first one. No one gave you that. Still looking for lifeguard. May we see the $250 response? <laughs> lifeguard it is. There you go, Jeff. You got the $250. Right okay. <laughs> Joanne Flew gave you lifeguard because she's a pretty smart lady there. Okay. Now that means you're going to play for 10 times that amount, $2,500. Now we are going for the big money. First, let's reveal the $500 response. <laughs> right guard it was. Okay. Two of them up there thought of it. Richard gave it to you. Okay. You're now. <laughs> to collect your $2,500, you've got to match one celebrity head-to-head. -head. All right, would you choose a celebrity now, please? Joanne Flug again. All right, Joanne, you get ready to write. You face me. I'll get the question. All right, Joanne, you write your answer to this. Scarlet blank. Scarlet blank. Okay, Joanne is finished.
finished. Now, Jeff, we call for your response to Scarlett Blank. Scarlett O'Hara. All right, Joanne. For $2,500, may we see your answer? Well, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, so I put Scarlett O'Hara. Scarlett O'Hara! Joanna's very happy for you, too. That is great. <laughs> okay, congratulations to you. Uh, he says his sister and mother, his whole family is down there in the audience jumping up and down and uh, praising the praises of Scarlett O'Hara. Where are you from? New Orleans. Well, I guess it had to be Scarlett O'Hara. All right, you're going to meet another player, Jeff, and continue as long as you're our champ, and that'll happen right after this. <laughs> We've got one happy winner here who's won $3,550 to date. Let's say hello now to his challenger, Dottie Bird. <laughs> hello, Dottie. Hello. You're a very pretty lady. You want to tell us a little about yourself, where you're from and all that? Okay. I manage a dental office in Huntington Beach. I'm 24 years old, and I love to paint. Really? Mm-hmm. You paint in oils and all that? Yeah. And Mostly you manage a dental office. Yes. I got this. Oh, <laughs> I guess we better do that at some other time now, Dottie. You know how to play the game? Let me just review briefly. Uh, the two of you are going to be answering questions here and attempt to match our six celebrities. You'll get two chances. The one who does that the most at the end of the second and final round will win, gets $100, and the opportunity to go on for the super match where you can win over $5,000. All right, I will push the button down, and that means we're ready to go to, to round one. Dottie, would you please make a selection? B. B is what she says. Brand new game, so everybody plays. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you heard the enthusiasm. <laughs> Frank said, no. Frank said, I'm sick and tired of that dog blanking on my favorite chair. <laughs> Frank said, I'm sick and tired of that dog blanking on my favorite chair. And he said it just like that. Uh, uh, spelling doesn't count. Spelling doesn't count. <laughs> but let me just check it anyway for... No, 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 I'm only kidding. Spelling really doesn't count here at all. We'll figure out the meaning, and if it matches, it matches. Bottom tier is ready. Dick, are you ready? I'm ready. Jack Carter is ready, so we'll call for a response from Dottie Berg now. I, uh, Frank said, I'm sick and tired of that dog blanking on my favorite chair. What do you say, Dottie? I'll be tame and say sitting. Sitting on my favorite chair. That's her answer. What do you say, Dick Gautier? She's well, looking for the well, word Well, I sitting. said shedding. Shedding. I, very clearly, I said shedding. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. Sick and tired of that dog sitting on my favorite chair is her answer. Barbara Stewart, what's yours? Gotcha. Shelly's staring at me. Well, I dressed it up a lot. I said urinating. You said that. I didn't hear did. anything. Just did. All right, Jack Carter. Uh, Blake look, that out. Looking for uh, the uh, Listen, I just found out I'm on the wrong game. I better leave. <laughs> it's called the Weird Couple Show, right? <laughs> well, uh, I never found a dog that ever sits up. Yeah. Mine usually is sleeping. Laying sleeping. And snoring as well. Sick and tired of the dog sleeping on my favorite chair. Okay, no match yet. Sitting is the word. What do you say? I have a spoiled dog, and she's always sitting in the chair. Sitting! So you score, Dottie. There's one match for you. Now let's go to the sage himself. I think we should all be grateful that Joanne can spell correctly. We could have all been in trouble. I also said sitting. Sitting! There's another one. Now you're beginning to go, and let's see if you get one from Shelley Winters. I had shedding. 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 Okay. No more drinks. All right. So you've scored twice there. And now let's go to Jeff Nichols' half of the round with this everyone participates one caveman asked another can I borrow your blank one caveman asked another Jeff can I borrow your blank all right are you still thinking I'm thinking well you better start writing soon because the time is going to expire <laughs> So is Miss Winter. 
Did you get an answer, Jack? Got one. You got one. All right, let's get one from Jeff Nichols, our champ. One caveman asked another, can I borrow your... Wife. Wife. <laughs> Where do you live, in the valley? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Let's. Uh, the word is wife from Jeff Nichols. One caveman asked another, "Can I borrow your wife?" Let's find out what you said, Dick. Borrow your club. Your club. Then I get your wife. Yeah, then you get the wife. All right. Wife is what he wants. Barbara, what do you want? Well, I thought of wife, but I thought of my caveman too, and I said club. Well, love it is from well, Barbara Stewart. <laughs> All right, Jack. I, I think I'm becoming their offspring. You know, I also joined their club. <laughs> Yeah, then you Everybody club your mate, then you get a wife. Club, and she's looking for wife. Joanne? <laughs> he. He. I beg your pardon. He. <laughs> yes. Wife? I put club. <laughs> well, we've got four clubs yeah, in a row so far. Now, let's uh, go to Richard Dawson and see well, what he has to say about this. Well, I would have suggested instead of a club, a nine iron, but I did put club. <laughs> Well, there's five clubs in there's a row. Here, let's obviously. see. Wife what? from Shelly oh, Winner. You get a wife from Shelly Winners, and there's there one map. And we'll go to round two right after this. Dottie Berg, the challenger, is ahead at the end of round one. Two to one. So now let's go to round two and ask her to make a selection. I think I'll go for B again. You'll go for B again. This is it. Now, you've matched two of our celebrities, Richard Dawson and Joanne Flug, so now you'll be trying to match the others. Are you ready, others? Certainly, yes. 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 John decided to get the blank taken off his chest. John decided to get the blank taken off his chest. <laughs> Why, it's easy, Shelly. What kind of fellow is this guy? <laughs> I can give you no further information. <laughs> Shelly, John decided to get the blank taken off his chest. All ready now. All right, Dottie, may we have your response? Tattoo? Tattoo is her answer. Sounds like a good one to me. Let's see what it sounds like to you up there. I was gonna I was gonna say hair, but that's George Maharis did that. No, this is tattoo, tattoo. is what I said. One match for Dottie in this round. Tattoo is her word. What is yours, Barbara? I guess I was thinking of George Maharis. Yeah, hair. <laughs> hair is there. All right, Jack, we're looking well, for I tattoo. Well, got, I got the same problem. I don't have mohair. I have me hair. I see. And uh, so I went for the uh, hair. But there's no All tattoos right. on chest. Okay, now we'll go to Shelly Winters. Tattoo is what she's looking for. Maybe we see yours. Hair. Hair. All right, you picked up one there. Now we'll go to the it too painful. second half of this round. Jeff, I point out to you, you must match two celebrities to stay in the game. Three, however, will win the game for you. Here we go. Arthur, Arthur was so blank, he couldn't get into Fanny's car. Arthur was so blank, he couldn't get into Fanny's car. These questions. <laughs> Three in the back room. Now, last time you matched uh, Shelly, so this time uh, everyone will participate except Shelly. Jackie, ready up there? Yes. Okay, sir. A little trouble separating the cards. All right. Now we'll call on Jeff for his response. Arthur was so blank he couldn't get into Fanny's car. What do you say? Drunk. Drunk is his word. He needs two to stay in the game. Three will win it. Dick. I almost went for drunk, but I finally went for fat. Fat. Because right. I know Fanny's car. <laughs> fat and drunk are all good answers. Now, fat. Barbara Stewart. Fat. 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 Uh-oh. Drunk is his word. Let's watch it here, Well, Jeff. I like to hear New Orleans people scream a lot, so I went for drunk. Drunk. All right. You got one. You need one more to stay in the game. Okay, here we go with Joanne's answer. Drunk is what the word we're looking for. Well, Jeff and I are Southerners, and we think alike, so I said... <laughs> All right, you got one more chance to win the game. You are in it, however, now. Let's call on Richard Dawson. He's not home. Uh, actually, I put fat because he was with child. I'm sorry to say. So, we've 
got a tie here, and that means we're going to have to go to a tiebreaker. And what we do here is we wipe the score clean and uh, start all over. We're going to give you one question, and the person who has scored the greatest number of matches with our celebrities will be the winner. All right, Dottie Berg, would you make a selection? B. B. All right, everyone plays in this tiebreaker. Everyone, here we go. Name a TV news commentator. Name a TV news commentator. Both names? Well, just uh, so we can, just so we can identify them, shall we? Have you thought of yours? Okay, we'll call on you in a moment. Bottom tier is ready, and the top tier is ready. Now, Dottie, we ask you to name a TV news commentator. George Putnam. George Putnam is what she says. He does the news out here. Let's find out if that score is up here, Dick. I don't know you're talking about actors. I went for a... <laughs> I went for Cronkite, Local Walter show. Cronkite. Walter Cronkite. Jerry Dunphy, another... Yeah, uh, I'm a Jerry Dunphy. Jerry Dunphy. I guess those people are in Los Angeles, yeah. aren't they? All right, now let's go down to uh, Joanne Flug. We're looking for George Putnam. Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite the and reason Richard... Putnam moved from Channel 11 to Channel 5 was they had a larger flag. I put Cronkite. All right, and... Brinkley. Shelley says Mr. Brinkley. So you did not score with that. Let's go to Jeff's half of the round and see what happens with this. Name a TV detective. Name a TV detective. We're getting close to the end, so do it as quickly as possible, if you please. TV detective. All right, everybody ready? Put it in the slot there, quickly. Okay, here we go. The character now, hold it. plays Let's, hold, his name. Hold. Jeff, may we have your answer, please? Name Mannix. It. Mannix is what he says. One match will win the game. Dick Godier. I said cannon because my wife's doing the show next week. <laughs> All right. Barbara, Mannix is what we're looking for. for well, wins. how about a Mannix? Mannix wins the game. <laughs> there you go. Congratulations. All right. We'll get back in just one moment. But first, we've got this for you. We just got time to say goodbye and thanks to Dottie Berg and to you. Join us next time. And to you, you beautiful celebrities, we'll see you next time. Jeff, congratulations. Gene Rayburn for Match Game 73. Today's consolation prizes are Charm Glow F, the completely portable gas grill that goes anywhere. Instant flame without starter fluid or charcoal, Charm Glow products of Antioch, Illinois. And an assortment of fine Clairol products featuring Born Blonde, Lightner, and Toner. Toner with no peroxide. Born Blonde is real blonde. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 73, a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Get ready to match the stars. Dick Gautier. Shelly Winters. Jack Carter. Joanne Flute. Richard Dawson. And Barbara Stewart as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 73. And here's the host of Match Game 73, Gene Rayburn. Oh, all right, all right. Okay. Hello, oh, Jeff. I greet you. Thank you. With love in my heart. Oh. Uh, isn't that, that's what this says. Is that what it is? My home, my home, my home, my Thank you very much for that. Did I get Listen, Jack, you? I haven't seen you in ages. What are you up it, to? Just been aging, that's all. No, you haven't. I've been in Las Vegas so long, I feel like an old crap dealer, I swear. <laughs>
And, and I'm, I'm going back there again to visit my money, as the expression goes. And you play there? I play there. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's nice to have you playing here. Why not? Now, those are our stars, folks. Now, let's say hello to our current champ. Here is Jeff Nichols. <laughs> Jeff? You know how much money you've won? It's over 3000 he doesn't even know the exact amount. It's $3,650. It's an exciting time for you, isn't it? Beautiful. <laughs> All right. Well, you're going to meet another contender in a moment or so and see if you can uh, continue. No, you're not going to. You're going to come out here in a moment or so and, and have another go at the super match where you could win over $5,000. That'll happen after this happens. Here we are with Jeff Nichols here, who's our current champ. How many games have you won? Four. Four. All right, now you have a good, another go at the super match here, and you know how that goes. Just for those of you who might be tuning in for the first time, let me explain briefly. We polled a previous studio audience, and we got their best response to this. <laughs> Monkey blank. Now, the answer given most often by that studio audience, if you can match it, is worth $500. <laughs> the second most frequent response, $250, and the third, $100. The celebrities are going to give you a hand here. You'll choose three, get their responses, and then use one of theirs or one of your own. And whatever you win up here is yours to keep, and that uh, means you could then go on to win ten times that amount. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Start picking celebrities. Jeff Nichols. Joanne Flug. <laughs> All right. Joanne, how do you do that? Monkey blank. Monkey business. Monkey business is what she says. Another celebrity, Jeff? Barbara. How about Monkey Wrench? Monkey Wrench? Yeah. Okay. Now you got two now, Jeff. You need one more. Dick Gaudier. Monkey Shines. Monkey Shines. Yeah. All right. So your celebrities have given you monkey Don't business. Don't look at me like that. Monkey Shines is good, Dick. What's wrong with bad. Monkey Shines? Not a bad answer. Who didn't like that answer there? It's okay. You got monkey business, monkey wrench, monkey shines. Now remember, you can choose one of those or pick one of your own. But right now, we have to call for your response. I'll go with Monkey Shines. Monkey Shines. That was your first thought? My first thought. All right. That's the one that Dick Godier gave you. Let's find out if it is up there. We are looking for Monkey Shines. May we see the $100 response? Monkey Wrench. That's up there. Barbara gave you that. Yeah, that was yours, Barbara. Okay. Still looking for Monkey Shines. May we see the $250 response? Monkey see, monkey do. No. All right, nobody gave you that. That's a whole essay. That is. It's got to be busy. Jeff, here is your third and last chance. Looking for Monkey Shines, the $500 response. Monkey business. Hey, Joanne gave you a little you yeah. got to stick with Joanne. I should have stood with her. Yeah. She's helped me all the way through. I'm sorry. You should have stood with her. That's right. For more reasons you than that, should there. Be. Right. Well, it's anyway. Your money, Jeff. So you uh, you didn't uh, win up there, but you've got your previous winning still to your credit, three thousand six hundred fifty dollars, and that's pretty good. And now you're going to meet a new player. Here we go. Say hello to Debbie Homer. Hi, Debbie. How are you, Deb? Oh, just terribly fine. <laughs> okay. I can't believe how good I am. <laughs> well, tell us a little more about yourself than oh, the state of your being. Besides being so calm. Yeah. I have been a stewardess for 12 years. I've been married for three years. And that's about it. <laughs> All right, you're a steward. Aren't you impressed? Okay. Well, now listen, take a deep breath and we'll have a go at it. What you're going to do here is you and Jeff will be answering questions and attempting to match our six celebrities. And you'll have two chances. The one who does that the most at the end of the second round wins, gets $100, and a chance to go on to the super match where you can win over $5,000. All right, let's uh, push the button down here and go to round one and ask our challenger, Debbie Homer, to make a selection, if you please. I'll go with B. B is her selection. New game here, folks, so everybody plays. Here, we, here it is. Okay. Tom and Sally. <laughs> I, I remember them. You remember them? From the last question. Well, what did you hear? Tom and Sally like to blank in front of the fire. <laughs> Tom and Sally like to blank in front of the fire. Do they have X-rated television shows? Uh. 
All right, these people are ready down here. <laughs> and would you put your card in the slot up there so that I know you're finished? And Shelly, you will do likewise. And I thank you. All right, Debbie Homer, Tom and Sally like to... I'm a preacher's kid, so I'm going to say sit. Tom and Sally like to sit in front of the fire. That's, That's her. it, huh? just sit in front Answer. of the fire. Sit in front of the fire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Dick. She's looking for the word sit in front of the fire. Well, you're not going to get it from me, Debbie. Uh, I'm sorry. Snuggle. you got to do something in front snuggle. of the fire. That's snuggle. That's with me. <laughs> ah, I see. Okay. Shut up, so Sheena. No match there. <laughs> Tom and Sally like to what in front of the fire, Shelley? Roast chestnuts. Uh, Roast chestnuts. <laughs> in front of the fire. I always put them in the fire and not in front and they <laughs> get a little hotter that way. What do you say, I used Jack? to tell an audience to sit in front of the f television and I'd watch them through the set. But I figured they would cuddle. They would cuddle in front of the fire. Debbie's answer is sure. sit, Joanne. What is yours? I'm a very proper young lady. Yes, you are. I said sit. Uh, sit in front of the fire. There you go. You score once. Now, this uh, proper young gentleman here. I knew that Joanne did sit in front of the fire. She's got all little brown marks down the front of her leg. Kiss in front kiss of the fire. Kiss in front of the fire. Or kiss the fire, whichever should come soon. All right. <laughs> well, all right, Barbara. I'm not a very proper young lady. Oh. Don't worry. I said sit. Oh, sit in front of the fire. So you got two matches out of that. You did pretty well. Okay. Oh, now let's go to Jeff Nichols' half of this round. You ready, Jeff? Yes, sir. Everybody plays? Yes. Superman said... <laughs> My tights hurt. Super <laughs> Buy me Super a phone book. <laughs> Superman I said, I'm glad I have x-ray vision because I can see through blank. <laughs> Superman said, I'm glad I have x-ray vision because I can see through blank. Okay? Okay. Now, Jeff Nichols, Superman said, I'm glad I have x-ray vision because I can see through walls. Walls is his answer, and that would be the traditional thing if you've ever watched the comic strip or any of that. Walls is what we're looking for. Dick, what do you have? Um, I just wish that he had been working for the Watergate people. Uh, walls. Walls it is, so you score once with that, Jeff. And now we go to Shelley Winters. Rose chest. Uh, walls! Walls it is! <laughs> So uh, looks like you're off to a great start with this one, Jeff. I, you, I think I'm going to move to New Orleans with his family because i got to join him with Walls. Yeah, Walls, too. All right. Three so far. Perfect round. Joanne. Four is a charm. Four it is. Walls all the way. And Richard. Well, I happen to know Superman's a prefert, so I put dresses. Dresses! <laughs> <laughs> and he's sick about it. <laughs> you don't have to anymore. Okay. What do you say, Barbara Stewart? I started to say Lois Lane, but I, I said, this, this should count, buildings. Buildings. Not here. That's yeah, walls. I'll just write them down. No, it doesn't it, count. I'm sorry. It that doesn't it, The count? whole building is, you know, different from the wall. But you still did pretty well with it, Jeff. You uh, uh, matched four celebrities, and at the end of round one, you are leading four to two. And we'll go to round two, our final round, right after this. At the end of round one, our champion is ahead four to two. And now we will go to round two. And I point out to our challenger, Debbie Homer, you must match two celebrities to stay in the game. Please yes. make a selection. I'll go with B again. B it is. Mm -hmm. Last time out, you matched Barbara Stewart and Joanne Flug. Now you'll be trying to match the others. This is it, others. Okay. As a traveling salesman, Ira picks up a lot of blanks. As a traveling salesman, Ira picks up a lot of blanks. I know, but I can write what Ira? you see. <laughs> well, it's... Uh... Ira? Ira, the traveling salesman, picks up a lot of blanks. Easy, isn't it? Certainly is. I think it's an easy one. No, you can't write oh, that. Oh, well, I shouldn't do that. No, wait. I, no, 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 I didn't. 
<laughs> is your answer ready? It was, but it's destroyed now. Right, now you do whatever answer you well, think. I have it. Here it is. I'll, I'll have it. I'll have it here. Okay. Now you. Jerry. Well, one MC on a show, if you please, madam. <laughs> okay. I will turn your boat over again. Right. <laughs> now let's go to uh, Debbie Homer here and get her response. As a traveling salesman, Ira picks up a lot of blanks. Girls. Girls is her answer. All right. Oh. Now, you've matched uh, two celebrities previously, and let's uh, find out what the others have now. Dick. I said diseases. Diseases. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I agree with you on that one. All right, Shelley, what it's do you say? It's a new show called Girls, girls, girls. Girls, okay, Debbie, you match one there. Now, what do you say? I, I also have girls here. Yeah. Go ahead. But first you call them on the phone. You have to call these girls what about to get them on the phone. All right. What's the rule? Yeah, they are matching that. Okay, so there's. you're up to four now. The score is tied. You stay in the game. You've matched Joanne previously. We go to Richard Dawson. Girls is her answer. Ira does pick up a lot of girls. He also has a hernia, so I wrote oh, girls. Goodness. Girls! So you get another one, Debbie. All right. Five to four, the score. The challenger is ahead. Are you ready, champ? Let's try it. Here it is. Now, previously, you've matched four of our celebrities. This time, you'll be trying to match Richard and Barbara. The others lay out. Here we go. Oh, out. Boy, that is Mary was a blank dancer. Mary was a blank dancer. Who cares, Joey? Who cares? You're not playing, so just <laughs> <laughs> All right, did you put it in a little slot? Okay, now, Jeff, <laughs> we call on you. I point out to you, you must match one celebrity to stay in the game. Two, however, will win it for you. Mary was a good dancer. Mary was a good dancer is what he says. All right, let's call on Richard Dawson. Good is his word. Is what is yours? He's a southern gentleman. She was good. She was belly good. Mother. Mary was a... Belly dancer. All right. Belly dancer. Now you must match Barbara to stay in the game. If you don't match Barbara, we'll have a new champion in the person of Debbie Homer. Barbara, may we see your card? Good is what we're looking for. Well, well great work. I great mean, that's and good. the same thing. That yeah. is a match of score yeah. tied. It is score is tied. All right. Now that means we've got to go to a tiebreaker, and what we do is tie wipe the slate color. clean. Shazam! The slate has been wiped clean, <laughs> and I will push this button, and there is the tiebreaker. Each of you will get one chance. The one who has matched the most will be the winner. All right, challenger, make a selection. I'm going to stick with B. I've tied with it. B <laughs> it is. We're in a tiebreaker, so that means everyone plays. Are you ready? Yeah. Name a rich man. Name a rich man. Okay. As soon as you've done it. Put it in the slot, Shelley, so that I know you are all finished and everybody's all ready. So, we call on Debbie Homer. Name a rich man, Debbie. Rockefeller. I Rockefeller hope. is her answer. Okay, Dick, what do you say? I said Howard Hughes. Yeah. Howard Hughes is a rich man. Yeah. All right, Shelley. You fly like that? Rockefeller. Getty. J. Paul Getty is her answer. What's yours, J. Jack? Paul Getty. J. Paul Getty, another rich man. And Joanne. J. Paul Getty. That's her answer. She's looking for Rockefeller. Richard. Spag Getty. J.P. and Barbara. J.P. Getty. I'm oh, wow. I'm sorry. Yeah. I am, too. All right, let's go to the second half of the round. You need one celebrity match to win the game, Jeff. Here we go. One match wins the game for Jeff. This is it. Okay. Name a school subject most kids find difficult. Name a school subject most kids find difficult. Do it as quickly as you can because we're getting close to the end here and we want to see if we can finish this. All right, Jack? Gotcha. Okay, Jeff Nichols, name a school subject most kids find difficult. Being a teacher, <laughs> math. Math is what he says. One match wins the game. Dick, may we see it? I said math. Math it is. Again, 
and Jeff. We'll get back to you in a moment. Now let's say goodbye to this nice lady, Debbie Homer. We've got a gift for you backstage. Thank you for being with us in Match Game 73. Okay. We'll uh, talk to this uh, cool, calm, collected fellow after these people talk with you. Now, this fellow has a total amount of $3,750 to his credit. And, and stick him up. Gonna have, <laughs> uh, he's gonna stick up, says Dick Lodier. And he's gonna have another go at the super match here and see if he can increase his earnings. You ready, Jeff? Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Jeff Nichols, all right. We polled a previous studio audience and we got their best response to this. Seven blank. Answer given most often pays $500 if you can match it and two fifty and a hundred dollars and uh... you know they're gonna help you over here and uh, so let's just get to it and start picking some celebrities shall we do that joanne a little love affair going with joanne i see well, I've, I've got two popping in my head so i guess i should go with the very first one that popped in oh i was gonna write it. 7 eleven seven eleven is what she said there is one okay jeff richard dawson seven up Seven up is what he says. He Not for me. You, two. you need one more. Jack Carter. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, it's like all of us against Jeff Nichols. Seven dwarfs, I thought of. Seven dwarfs is seven what dwarfs. thought of. Okay, so the celebrities have given you 7-Eleven, seven up, and seven dwarfs. You may choose one of those or one of your own if you wish. May we have your answer? Joanna, forgive me. I'm going to try seven up. All right, do you forgive him? No, that was my second choice. I... Oh, I see. All right. That's a chase. Seven Up is the one Richard Dawson gave you, and that's the one you're going to be looking for now as we come to the unveiling. We are looking for Seven Up. May we see the $100 response? Seven Cs. Oh. There it is. Who made the seven? can do without that. <laughs> Still looking for Seven Up. May we see the $250 response? 7-Eleven is up there, Joanne. Uh oh, you, so, you were not true uh, to Joanne, and this thing is going to. I don't know. Who knows? You never can tell. Third and last chance, Jeff, looking for Seven Up. The $500 response. <laughs> there it is. Seven Up it is. Okay. Well. Here we go again. <laughs> now, the $500 is yours to keep, and that means you plays for 10 times that amount, $5,000. Are you all set for that now? Oh. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder if I'll ever be set for it. <laughs> let's go. All right, let's go. Now, you must match one celebrity on a head-to-head -head basis, so let's have you choose a celebrity right now. I've got to go back to Joanne. She did so much for me before. Okay, oh. Joanne, <laughs> you get ready to write. You you like face me, Jeff, and I'll get the question, which is right here in this slot. All right, Joanne, you please write down your answer to this. Safety blank. Safety blank. Okay, Jeff, Joanne has finished writing. Now we ask for your response to this. Safety blank. Safety first. All right. For $5,000, Joanne Flug, may we see your response? that for a $5,000 souvenir. I tell you, the way that whole family of yours applauding in the first row, it looks like they've spent the money already. We'll get back here in a moment or so, uh, but first we've got this for you. Well, we just have time to congratulate uh, our champ here, Jeff Nichols. And ask him, you will come back uh, next time, right? Oh, believe me, What do you I'll got written on the card there? 
It says hurrah for Joanne Flew. <laughs> She's the one who gave me the winning match answer. And okay, Jeff, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. And I want to thank all of you. I hope you had a good time. We had a great time uh, playing games with you today. And join us tomorrow. Gene Rayburn saying so long for Match Game 73. Today's consolation prizes are Charm Glow Wet, the completely portable gas grill that goes anywhere. Instant flame without starter fluids or charcoal, Charm Glow products, and the Illinois. And a supply of delicious fill and eat ready crust. Your dessert will seem like a painting from the pastry chef. Ready crust, a special treat. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 73, a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Get ready to match the stars. Robert Culp. Beth Summers. Jack Klugman. Joanne Flood. Richard Dawson. And Pat Carroll. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 73. And here's the host of Match Game 73. <laughs> what did you do, invite the soft vaccine? What's that? What hand they gave you? Well, they're just a lively bunch of people out there. And we thank you for being here with us, and we thank you for joining us in person, wherever you are in America. Listen, you're okay. I don't care what they say, you're okay, the whole <laughs> bunch of you. You all ready? Yeah. You're very, very, hang, very right? smart. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Hang. Go ahead. Lift you up much. right there. <laughs> you ready, Bob? What are we going to do now? What should we do now? No, well, I'll tell you what to do. All right, just I'll watch you carefully. First, tell a brisk us. round of applause for our two brisk, players, brisk round. Kathy Bruce and Barbara Slick. Okay. This lady is our current champion. She's won $600, one game, and she's being challenged by Kathy. We started the game last time out, finished round one, and now we're going to go to round two. But first... <laughs> now let's carry on with match game 73 as we go to round two, ladies. I push the button and reveal the two uh, questions and ask our challenger to make a selection. B. B is what she wants. Last time out you didn't match anyone, so everyone plays. Are you ready, sir? Yeah. And Boys. madam, whatever the case may be. Kathy said... Yeah. Every girl that went to Larry's New Year's Eve party uh, got blank. No. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. Oh, you guys were there. I mean, they were there. I wasn't there. Oh, you, you were at the party. Is oh, that a, I see. Is there an ED on the end of that? Mm -hmm. uh, no. No. I'm very disappointed in I am I'm disappointed in the whole audience. Was this Christmas okay. Eve or New Year's Eve? Uh, New Year's Eve. <laughs> What's the difference? Well, there was a difference for the people who were there. That's right. <laughs> they were all there. I was there. New Year's and Christmas was the same thing. All the girls gone. <laughs> yes, but not by him. <laughs> That straight line. Oh, honey, I'm here. Oh, Look, easy aces okay. on again. Just want to make that sure that all answers are in. No, I'm changing mine. For, oh, you haven't. Are you changing yours? Well, it's much more fun this way. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're gonna change. You're gonna throw that out and put that in. Uh huh. Let's okay. throw her out. <laughs> Everybody's finished. We'll get Kathy's response to <laughs> Kathy. That's your name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself, Just Kathy. The whole world will know. <laughs> Every girl that went to Larry's New Year's Eve party got... Drunk? Drunk. She says drunk. Now we call on the celebrities with Robert Culp. So you beginning. do. I'm glad about that. Drunk it I is. <laughs> okay. Yep. I know you're nervous about my answer, Jim, yes, but I you am. don't have to be. Right. Bombed, which is like drunk. That is indeed. <laughs> 
answer her. Drunk is the answer, Jack. She got bombed as a drunk as Riley. Drunk as another man. Oh, that was an easy. You're really rolling here, Kathy. Ooh, you must whoa. know Larry very well. Yeah. I went with Larry. <laughs> I went with Larry. You went with Larry? No kidding. Problem was, he never you recognized you when else. you were sober, Kathy. <laughs> All right, Joanne. Yeah. Because it says promise or anything, but give her our page. And I had them give her a bottle of our page. Everybody went to Larry's New Year's Eve party, got a bottle of our page. Ah, oh, there goes. Page, folks. All right, what do you say? Well, all the ladies did get drunk, and then unfortunately, I'm oh. sorry to say they got preggy. Boy, that was some party. I wasn't there, I you just heard there. about it. Oh, yeah, you heard about it, though. Okay. Are you going to tell me that's the same one that Jack Klugman yeah. was at? Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know, but let's okay. call on uh, Pat Carroll here. I feel like the together. senior citizen. Everybody else is getting drunk and I'm getting kissed. I don't <laughs> <laughs> You can't have everything in life. Okay. Now we've got this for you, Barbie. Are you ready? Okay, champ, here it is. Everybody plays. While the surgeon was operating, he scratched his nose with his blank. <laughs> While the surgeon was operating, he scratched his nose with his blank. There's Joanne Flug, Miss Snappy Peppy. <laughs> <laughs> She's a Look, she did it. She's only 47. <laughs> All right, let's turn to Barbara here, our current champion, and find out how she handles this assignment. While the surgeon was operating, he scratched his nose with his... Scalpel. Scalpel. Okay. You think that's good? Do you think that's good? Why did you hear these answers here? Scalpel was hers. And uh, you need what? You need three to stay in the game, four to win the game. Here we go. Bob. Stop shaking your head, son, and speak up. It was, it was a terrible, terrible tragedy at the time. Scalpel. Oh, Poor man's yeah. nose just went yeah. west. Hmm. All right, Brett. Da 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 da. Instruments. Instruments. I cannot imagine, because it could be another. Who did that buzzer? <laughs> That's uh, old Ira. Yeah, Ira. Ira. Okay, Ira. Okay, Jack. I got you to Forget become a Forget what I said earlier. <laughs> Scalpel is a man. Okay. <laughs> what did he scratch his when nose with, with Joanne? Come on, Miss Snappy. Now, wait a minute. I have been a nurse and a doctor and a lot machine. of parts. I will not. That's just tacky. Now, I happen to have done this in the movie Bash this. to Look Donald Sutherland's up. nose, and I couldn't think of the proper word, but this does count. But That's not unusual. Thing. It's called a knife, and it's the same thing as a scalpel. Yes, it is. Yes, it Indeed, is. that is a man. Right. Well, the score is tied. Now you got Richard and Pat to go here, Barbara. If one of them matches your answer, you will win the game. All right, Richard. You forgot that she did. You did that in mash. Didn't I did. You? I scratched his nose. Oh, she also right. said to the doctor, "Suit yourself." Uh, <laughs> now, Paul. Double wins the game. Congratulations. I did get it, didn't I? Can you come around, please. Okay, there's another hundred dollars added to your previous winnings, and we thank Kathy Bruce for being with us here. We've got a gift for you backstage. Way. Together with our thanks for being on Match Game 73, Kathy Bruce. All right, there she goes. Barbara, are you going to have another shot at the big money here in the super match? Are you ready for that? Yes. Okay, you collect yourself, and we'll collect this, and then we'll be right back. Okay, here we go with uh, Barbara Schlecht, who has a total of $700 to her credit, and she's going to have a go at the big money. Are you ready, Barbara? Right. Okay. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank Hall. And the answer given most often by that studio audience is worth $500 if you can match it. The second most frequent response, $250. And the third, $100. Oh. Now, you're allowed to get the help of three celebrities, so would you choose them one at a time, if you please? Hey, Richard. Monty Hall. <laughs> one of my favorites. I thought that one, too. Okay, another one? Uh, Pat. Carnegie. All right, Carnegie Hall, old Andrew. 
And one more. Jack. Dance hall. Dance hall. So you've got Monty Hall, Carnegie Hall, and Dance Hall. You may choose one of those or give us one of your own, Barbara. What do you think? I'll take Monty Hall. You'll take Monty Hall. We must have him back by Thursday. Do <laughs> you really want to mention that name on CBS? It's all right, no, that's your answer. Monty Hall. That's the name, Monty Hall. We're looking for that. Let's see if it's under the $100 response. Carnegie Hall is there. That's the one that Pat gave you. Okay, we're looking for Monty Hall. May we see the $250 response? There's a dance hall. That's the one that Jack gave you. Here's your third and last chance, Barbara. Monty Hall, the $500 response. Yeah! Monty Hall! I see your motor is running. Okay, you got the $500. That means you're going to play for 10 times that amount now, uh, or $5,000. However, to collect that amount, you must match one celebrity on a head-to-head -head basis, and it must be an exact match. So please choose a celebrity now. Richard. Richard Dawson. All right, you get ready to write, and you're going to face me. Here is the $5,000 question. Write your answer to this, if you would, please, sir. Orange blank. Orange blank. Okay, he has finished. How do you fill in that blank? Orange? Juice. Juice is what she said. Okay, Richard, for $5,000, may we see your answer? Well, I hope you're going to forgive me because I'm English, so I put orange juice. Oh, wow. shaking a little bit, but I guess she'll stop shaking in a moment or so. What did you just say? I'm moving to Las Vegas in two weeks. <laughs> no, You're going to lose it all? No, no. Oh, you better not. No. You're up to $6,200. You're still a champ. You're going to meet another player. So let's say hello to Sue Raglan. you step up there? I guess you ladies know each other. Now, Sue, we welcome you to Match Game 73. We thank you for joining us and ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm nervous. <laughs> you are nervous? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm I'll a hold your hand while, while you're talking. Just oh. hold my hand. Go ahead, keep talking. I'm a housewife. You're a housewife. I have a three-and-a-half-month-old daughter. A three-and-a-half-month-old daughter. And that's all there is to tell about There me. is? <laughs> you're sure there's not something else you'd like to tell me? in my office here. Well, okay. All right, Sue, good luck to you. You know that you and Barbara will be answering questions trying to match our six celebrities. The one who does that most often at the end of the second round will be the winner and has a go at the big money in the super match. Here we go with round one. And Sue, we ask you to make a selection. Oh, boy. I'll try A. A is what she wants. New game, folks. Here it is. First assignment. Once a year, turtles come out of their shells to blank. <laughs> Once a year, turtles come out of their shells to blank. So does Jack Lug. <laughs> I'd say once every other year, actually. <laughs> That's enough. No violence on this. No, no, I have no. That's a love tap. <laughs> oh, I see. To the moon, Alice. My name isn't Alice. I wish it was. Okay, we're all set now. Let's call on Sue. Once a year, turtles come on other shells to... Mate. To mate. She says the turtles come out of their shells once a year to mate, whether they need to or not. Robert, what do you say? Is that like a bath on Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Actually, this was a much more uncommitted... Uh, or, but more specific reply before. Oh, heavens, I... You, you interpret it your way. What did he say? <laughs> no, I leave it up to you. This is your problem. Be careful, I have false eyeglasses on. Yep. All right. 
I didn't hear I a buzzer. Guess, once a year, turtles come out of their shells There's and, no buzzer and, and they dig their hole in the sand, ah, and there it is. I heard the buzzer. And and the they lay their eggs or do whatever they're going to do in the sand there. All right, Brett, what do you say? Could I ask the cameraman if Jack Klugman ruined my false eyelashes? Yes, no, let me see. Oh. No, you're okay, Brett. Okay. Yeah. They come out of their shells to make. So there's the match for you, Sue. Okay, Jack, what did you say? If the turtle is married to Brett, comes out the shed. The shed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit him. Don't hit him. He's okay. All right, Joanne. I put at the top in small letters upside down, breed, but in big letters I put right side up, mate. So there's another match, Sue. You're up to two now. Here is Richard Dawson. Of course, it's the only thing they do. It's called the old shell game. The old shell game. Not to, to make, make love, love and then or make uh, Almeida. Okay, there's another match. Pat, what do you say? Being what very maternal, I said lay eggs. <laughs> lay eggs. Okay. I didn't All even right. read Valley of the Dolls. What do I know? All right. <laughs> she was too busy okay. with her catechism. Well, in the middle of round one, uh, we finished Sue's question. She scored three times. We'll get to you in a moment or so. But first, we've got to get to this, and then you hurry right on back here. In Sue's half of round one, she scored three times. Now we go to Barbara's half, and this is it. Everyone plays, and the astronaut said, you got to believe me, the girls on Mars are all blank. That's what the astronaut said. The girls on Mars are all blank. Think about that. You've been to Mars, have you, madam? OK. Oh, dear. And that may be true also. <laughs> well, I'm writing with my left hand. Are you a natural southpaw? Okay, here we go. Now, Barbara, we asked for your response. The astronaut said, you got to believe me, the girls on Mars are all... Nymphomaniacs. This is a living Rorschach test. <laughs> She said nymphomaniac. I heard what she you said. Heard, I thought I heard that. I don't even know what that means. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she remembers. Oh, okay. oh. Hey, we see your answer. You ask me those kind of questions, I'm going to give you these kind of answers. You got to believe the girls of Mars are all in the canals. In the, in the canals. canals. In the, in the canals. canals. That's right. It's like Venice. In the canals. In the canals. No, but those are boys. No, it's all okay. Right. All right. What do you say, Brett? Well, I certainly didn't say nymphomaniacs, and I didn't understand his answer at all. <laughs> I said green. Green. She needs to be the audience's no, answer. No, but I was right. What do you say, Jack Klugman? <laughs> now, I'm going to the judges, because this is a real thing. Easy. <laughs> That's right. That's Easy. right. Is that a match? That's the way I meant it, but I didn't want to get a little... Okay. He couldn't spell nymphomaniacs. That's the truth. <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go, Joanne. What do you say? Well, I figured that they just must be gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> All right, they are. Mr. Dawson. Get together, Joanne, if it's the last thing you ever do. Better green. <laughs> Barbara, I... Wait a minute, it's Richard Dawson's I turn. honestly don't know, because I knew they weren't around here. They're obviously up there. I said they were all virgins. All virgins. <laughs> the children are made by Mattel. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> Okay, Pat. And nothing, knowing nothing absolutely about Mars, but I thought it would be interesting. They were all boys. The girls on Mars are all boys. Yeah, it changes the whole Okay, so we've done round yes, one, yeah. and at the end of round one, it's three to one in favor of our challenger. And here we go with round two. If you would make a selection, please, Sue. I'll stick with A. A is what she wants. And last time out, you matched three celebrities, Brett, Joanne, and Richard. Now you'll be trying to match the other three. Wilma said to the invisible man, I know you're there. I can tell by your blank. <laughs> Wilma is speaking to the invisible man. I know you're there. I can tell by your blank. I know. I don't want to see it. Not too much thinking, I'm Pat. Picking on me again. Well, no, I'm picking on her. No, he was. Oh, he's picking. Don't pick on me. Well, I like to guess the answers when I don't have to write them down. Oh, I see. That's very interesting. All right, here we go. Sue, would you give us your response? I, don't know. I know you're there. I can tell by your... Odor. Odor. Okay. She said odor. What do you say, Robert? Sorry. Breathing. Breathing. 
Jack, what do you say? I hope Brett gets the hint. Body odor, say. Body yeah. odor is yeah. there. And uh, Pat. Well, I could only, because they wouldn't have known each other were there unless they spoke, so I said voice. Voice. No match there, so you're up to four. And we've got to pause here for a moment, but don't go away because the score is four to one. We'll see what happens right after this. Where are we? There we are. Listen, ladies, the time is up. So we're going to have to hold everything just as it is in the middle of round two. The challenger is leading at this moment four to one, and we'll see you next time. And next time we get together, you're going to have to match three celebrities to achieve a tie and stay in the game. Look forward to seeing you, and look forward to seeing all of you. And you I are look just... forward to seeing you. You sweetheart. Not me. You are peachy. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing me. Right? Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you. And try and keep your hands off me, because everybody out here is yelling at me. He's wearing CBS. Listen, are you making a movie? Or what? No, you just did the Burt Reynolds show. He's, yes. Why don't we get Burt Reynolds for this show? Can we do that? Wouldn't you be good? I'd like to just get yeah, Burt Reynolds. Yeah, terrific. <laughs> Did, have you done it already? Yes, with... we did, I did a special with Yeah, him. and what else are you doing? I'll be on a Jonathan Winters show. Jonathan He's Winters and I used to be neighbors. Oh, How is old John? Crazy as loon. He is crazy as a loon. Yeah, it's good. All right. Can we hurry okay. this up? I want to watch Beat the Clock. <laughs> Okay. For Richard Dawson's benefit, we're going to sign off now and hope you'll be able to join us next time. Gene Rayburn saying so long for Match Game 73. Bye. Today's consolation prizes are Charm Rowett, the completely portable gas grill that goes anywhere. Instant flame without starter fluids or charcoal, Charm Go products of Antioch, Illinois. And Snowy Bleach, the exclusive blended formula with extra washers per box, safer whites and colors, Snowy Bleach. And rice aroni, the big flavor side dish is so quick, so easy, saute and simmer to flavor perfection. Rice aroni, the San Francisco treat. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 73. A Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Get ready to match the stars at Harrington, Brett Somers, Charles Nelson Riley, Joanne Flew, Richard Dawson, and Betty White as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 73. And now here's the host of Match Game 73, Gene Rayburn. Thank you. Hello there. How'd you do? How'd you do? How'd you do? I'm fine. How do you? I see uh, you had a camel yesterday, and today you have a bird on your. I'm navy today. You're navy today. Yes. Go right. along with the chaplain. Oh well, it's splendid, my dear. Splendid. Listen, would you do something for? Oh, it's too late. What? Well, I see you holding up these little cards, and if you'd just hold them up quickly, I'd like to get in on the fun there. Did you throw them away? I wrote, that's what I call a real naval base, when I look at it. I see. Is that what you wrote? All right. That's enough. Okay. <laughs> Let's say hello to our players, Joanne Breen and Chaplain Tom Schultz. Yes, sir. Thank you. Tom Schultz is our current champ. He's won in one game. He's got $600 to his credit. And we had started this game yesterday, hadn't we? And we had finished your end of round one, and you didn't score. And now we're going to go to your end of round one. But first, we have this message. Take it away. Yeah. Here we go. Let's carry on with match game 73 and finish the second half of round one. Chaplain, this is for you. Everybody plays. Okay. Rin Tin Tin is so rich, he has his own blink in his dressing room. Rin Tin Tin. You young people, you remember who Rin Tin Tin was? I remember Rin Tin Tin. Well, I don't know if it was a friend of Lassie's, but he was a famous one. Rin Tin Tin is so rich he has his own blank in his dressing room. You remember Rin Tin Tin? Good. Of course they remember Rin Tin Tin. Oh, right. And anybody who says they don't lie. 
Are you ready here? Printed. Ready up there? Yes, ready. Oh, okay, put it in the slot, Pat. Right, we'll, uh, right in the that'll slot. signify you're ready. Right. Now, Chaplin, how do you respond to this? You remember Rin Tin Tin. So Richie had his own blank in he has his own blank in his dressing room. Bathroom? Had his own bathroom in his dressing room. Get That's more than we have. All right. Have his hearing bathroom is what he said. No. That's the answer. Oh, yes. So, Pat, may we see your response? Yes, I didn't quite agree with him. I said he had his own bone. Had his own bone. Okay, no match there. Let's see if Brett matches. I'm deeply surprised at the chaplain. Why? Never mind. <laughs> so he had his own side of beef. Side of beef. Oh, well, that is rich indeed. Charles. Well, I think the psychiatrist and the board of judges will have to get together on this answer because I think it probably could be a match. He had his own hydrant. Hydrant. Oh, that's How do you undo that? Yes or no? <laughs> no, they say no. I just looked over at the judge oh. and he gave you the buzz. Well, we tried. Neil, Neil. Hold on. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> In case of fire? Well, I don't know. <laughs> no. No. All right, babe. Joanne, what do you say? Pat so Richie has his own blank in his dressing room. Rin Tin Tin. Pat said yesterday that he lost every third case, but I just wanted him to know that he scored with me because I said dog bone too. Dog bone? Right. Yeah, that's what he didn't say no. dog bone. Chaplin he is said looking bone. for bathroom. What do you say, beef. Richard? Bone. I say, why don't we get out of here and go to a bar? <laughs> <laughs> No, he was so wealthy, he had his own tree in his dressing room. Tree, well, that's kind of the same idea, Chapman, but we can't match that. Betty. Oh, yes, we can. I think that I shall never... Oh, there it is. Oh, another tree, another bathroom, but no match there. Let's go to round two and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Joanne, would you make a selection? A, please. Joanne wants A, everybody will play. Okay. Jill, Jill said to Jim, if you're not drunk, how come you're sleeping in the blank? <laughs> Jill said to Jim, if you're not drunk, how come you're sleeping in the blank? Am I supposed to know who Jill and Jim is? <laughs> oh, you, uh, Does Jack know about that? Jack and Jill, yes. That should be yeah. You're no. not drunk, how come you're Jill sleeping? said to Jim, if you're not drunk, how come you're sleeping in the blank? Should okay. Be, uh, All right, go. Jill said to Jack. No, this is... This is Nobody asked you, Pat. We write the questions, Pat, you write the answers. All right. You're now, let's partner. call on Joanne Green and see how she responds to this. If you're not drunk, how come you're sleeping in the... Nude? In the nude. Okay. I had a different answer in mind. What did you have in mind there? She well, says, uh, he's going to be sleeping in some odd places, obviously. Yeah. Right? So I'm going to start out with the fireplace. Fireplace. Yeah, that's not a bad answer at all. The guy's got to be awfully drunk to sleep in the park. That's right. Okay, Brett. How do you know? Well, I slept in the fireplace a couple of nights. <laughs> well, I slept in the nude last night, and I was sober as a judge, unfortunately, because I woke up with a stiff neck. A front yard. Front That's yard. where Jack Klugman always sleeps, what drunk or uh, sober. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Charles? I said a bathtub. Bathtub. Oh. Yeah. It's a good answer. I'm Jill always Ann. the popular favorite. Yes, you are. <laughs> 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 Joanne, we're ready for you. Are you ready for us? Well, I don't believe so. <laughs> well, I must show it anyway. Well, I always see this in movies. Yes. When they're drunk, they always are asleep in the car. In the car. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a pretty good answer. Yeah, I thought so. Didn't <laughs> score, though. There. All right, looking for the nude. We're looking for a nude here. I've been looking for a nude for... <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, first one to find one. Well, uh, no, no, said, why are you sleeping in the closet? Closet. And he I said, everybody's got to be someplace. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Betty, what do you say? My mother always told me to play hard, but play clean in the bathtub. Right. Bathtub. Right. That seems to have been the answer, yeah. the bathtub. So we have no match there. Now, Chaplin, you're in a good spot here. One match, you win the game, and it's all over. Let's see if it happens. Are you ready? We oh, are yes. ready, sir. Look at me, I'm ready. <laughs> One turtle said to the other, you know, for a turtle, you're really very blank. <laughs> Got a dirty old man laughing out there. One turtle said to the other, you know, for a turtle, you're really very blank. One, two, three, ready here. 
Oh, Pat, Brett, and Charles were. Oh, waiting. no, that's wrong. You wrong? see, because it's a turtle speaking to a turtle. What right. is? Two you, turtles are talking. Two turtles. What's a turtle here? Your lips are moving again. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not writing. Ah, uh, no, no, no okay. I'm writing. All right, let's get a response from Chaplain Tom Schultz. Think carefully. What answer you think might match at least one celebrity and win another game for you? One turtle said to the other, you know, for a turtle, you're really very fast. Fast. You like that? Yeah. Oh. The audience thinks you're going to win with that, Chaplain. Let's see if he wins with that. Fast. No, not with me. I took a long shot on the, qual on the material that the shells are made out of. Oh. And I said, horny. A very horny, hard right. turtle. Right. Okay. 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 Brett, may we see your answer? Okay. May we see your answer? Do I have please? to say after the show? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I said... Fast is his answer. Well, I didn't say anything worthwhile. Well, we got to see it. I said cute. Oh, there's a... Uh, yeah, one turtle could think another turtle is cute. No longer the popular favorite. I also <laughs> put cute. Cute, yeah. I'm sorry. For a turtle, you're very cute. All right, Joanne. I wasn't Fame ever comes the and favorite. Goes. I couldn't think of anything. And I just was rather insipid. I put pretty. Pretty. Whatever turned you on, Joanne. One match will win the game, Chaplin. Let's see if it comes up here with Richard Dawson. Well, obviously, I will now become the popular favorite. Fast. Fast wins the game! And she's got fast. Congratulations. Will you step down, please? Ho, ho, ho! All right, there's another $100 for you, Chaplin. And uh, we've got to say goodbye to Joanne Breen. She'll take her $600 and go. And accept our thanks for being on Match Game 73. Bye. Joanne Breen. Bye. Come back for the big super match with Chaplain Tom Schultz right after this. Chaplain Tom Schultz has been here before. You know how this goes? Yes, sir. Well, then let's get right to it. We polled a recent studio audience. We got their best response to this. Cotton blank. The answer given most often by that audience, as you know, is worth $500 if you can match it. Second most frequent response, $250. And the third, $100. Now, Chaplain, which three celebrities would you like to get a little assist from here? Uh, Betty, please. Oh, Betty White. Oh, boy. Cotton... Cotton candy. Cotton candy, she says. One more. Charles. Charles. Cotton tail. Cotton tail. Okay. All right, you got one more celebrity. Uh, Richard, please. Richard. I think he just went out. Uh, oh. Uh, cotton reel. Cotton. cotton yeah, that's what you put your thread on. Now, don't get hostile. Folks, I'm English. I'll just give you the best answer. I don't think you're no longer the popular favorite. <laughs> I'm going to stick with that answer. That's sure. it, Dave. Cotton well, reel. I, I okay. Will not say gin to You've got cotton candy, cotton tail, and cotton reel. A real uh, winner of an uh, answer there. Well, in England, you'd win with that, believe you me. Would. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. There so now. Well, you're in, in 20 minutes. Germany now. So Quiet there. I'm sorry. Now, you may choose one of them. <laughs> you may choose one of those or give us one of your own, Chaplain. What would you like to do? Uh, did Betty say cotton candy? Betty said cotton candy. Notice how they are so open. You go with Betty. Yes, sir. All right, cotton candy is They are so obvious with there. their relationship. <laughs> <laughs> the whole week it's like this. It's like a train wreck, it's so subtle. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, terrible. Okay, Chaplain Tom Schultz is Jeez. looking for cotton candy. Let's find out if it's under the $100 response. Cotton gin. Wait, a very good answer, now that I see it oh, up there in We're bold print. <laughs> All right, looking for cotton candy. Here is the $250 response. Oh. Cotton candy it is. So you were right, Betty. Uh, Look at very this. Well done. Oh, oh, oh. Charles. No, you know what's unbelievable? Before the show, she learned two new prayers. I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, before we go on, Tom, let's find real, out what's under the $500 response. It's cotton reel. Cotton ball. Aren't you, said I, aren't you glad I said cotton reel? I thought okay. you were. Okay. <laughs> now, you've got $250. You are going to play for cotton <laughs> 10 times. <laughs> All those laughing, get out. 
or two thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive him, Father. He has sinned. Now it's going to have to be an exact match over here. Over if he goes head to head with Betty White, I want the lights. It'll have started. to be a head-to-head -head match with one celebrity to collect that amount of money. Which one will it be? Uh, Betty White. Oh, is it obvious? Okay. Well, that's great. That's it. Tell the world. Okay. This Betty, is shocking. You get ready to write, if you would, please. <laughs> Remember <laughs> Ezekiel 3, 7. <laughs> okay, here it is now for $2,500. <laughs> Yankee blank. Yankee blank. Y-A-N-K-E-E -E blank. All right, she very quickly came up with an answer to that, Tom. Now you give us your response. How do you fill in the blank? Yankee Doodle. Hey. Yankee Doodle. Well, you've got the audience on your side. Now, Betty, Betty. for $2,500, may we see your answer, please? Betty. Yankee Doodle. Betty. Doodle. Two sons or three sons? Well, I've got three, but the one that blue. I see. All right. Well, we're very happy for you, and your, hap your family is very happy. And we'll carry on with another game here, Tom, right after we carry on with these messages. Listen, I made one of my rare mistakes a little while ago, and I didn't correct it. <laughs> Once in a while, you know, no sure. one's perfect, and I'm certainly not perfect. I said uh, a lady won $600, and she didn't win anything. We do have a lovely gift for her, and uh, I'm sorry I made that mistake and got her hopes up, but we have a <laughs> gift for her. Sorry, right. it'll save her a mugging in the parking lot. That's right. <laughs> now let's welcome a new challenger. Here is Sonny Coleman. <laughs> Hi, Sonny. Very nervous. Are you nervous? Uh -huh. All right, hold my hand if you're nervous while you tell us a little bit about yourself. That'll calm you down. Well, I work for an accounting firm, and in my spare time, I do year-round volunteer work for the Watts Summer Festival, and I play tennis. How's your tennis game? Good? Pretty good. You Not play a bad. lot? It's very good for you, you know. You can play all your life. I know. <laughs> Keep in shape that way. That's right. I like your shape. <laughs> good shape. Uh, All right. Both of you are ready. You know that you and uh, Tom Schultz will be answering questions, trying to match our six celebrities. The one who has done that most often at the end of the second round will be the winner. Gets $100 for that and then has a chance to go on to the super match where you can win $5,000. Here we go. Round one coming up. Sonny, please make a selection. It really doesn't matter. A, I guess. <laughs> a. All right. We ask you to do the selecting because some contestants find some questions harder than others. Uh -huh. Did you hear about the new presidential cuckoo clock? Mm -hmm. Watching. I'm glad you're asking me about it, because you haven't heard about it yet. No, we haven't. No, no, we haven't. Every hour on the hour, a little president comes out and blanks. <laughs> the question is, Sonny, did you hear about the new presidential cuckoo clock? Every hour on the hour, a little president comes out and blanks. This is giving you some difficulty, is it? Brett, well, you're the Look first one me, finished. Look at me, I'm the first one ready. It's the first no, time in the history of this game. No. I probably will never win. Okay, this tier is ready. Oh, wait a minute. You change your mind? You were yes. the last one finished. Oh, I wait, it'll only take me a minute. <laughs> uh, all right, now they're all ready. So, Sonny, would you give us your response to this? Did you hear about the new presidential cuckoo clock? Every hour on the hour, a little president comes out and... Listens. <laughs> and listens. That's your answer, Sonny. That's okay, it. she says listens, <laughs> folks. Yeah. All right, Pat, yeah. maybe see your answer. I Hers wish it listens. was true. Um... <laughs> comes out every hour, uh, once on the hour, and says... I don't know. I don't know. That's what he said. That's what he said. Okay, Brett, what does he say? He's usually wrong. As usual, he is wrong. He's wrong. <laughs> he does not. He comes out and he says, Not me, not me, not me. Not me. 
What do I know? This one comes out and using it as a verb, water gates. The water gates. <laughs> I see. Every hour on the hour, the president Every comes hour. out and water gates. Whatever that means. Joanne? I said he comes out every hour and lies, lies, lies. And lies. <laughs> and lies. Okay. Richard, what did you say on that one? I said he comes out on the hour and tapes your conversation. <laughs> tapes your conversation. Okay. The answer she's looking for is listens. An unlikely possibility, but let's see if it matches Betty White. I say he comes out every hour and cries, cries, cries. And he cries. <laughs> Okay, now let's go to the other half of the round. Tom, we've got this for you and for all of you. When Bruce joined the nudist colony, he was so shy that he carried a blank in front of him all the time. <laughs> I know Bruce. You do? Yes, I know Bruce too. When Bruce joined the nudist colony, he was so shy that he carried a blank in front of him all the time. Are you thinking about that? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you know anything about nudist colonies? Uh, no, sir, I, no, I don't. I wouldn't expect to know anything about nudist colonies, chaplain. Are okay. you ready over there? Before the wedding. Right. 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 Listen carefully now to Tom Schultz's answer here and see how he responds. He was so shy that he carried a blank in front of him all the time. This is Bruce, you know. <laughs> yes, a towel. Towel. Yes. Not a bad answer, right? We'll see how it scores here, Pat. I know Bruce, and he has very good reason to be shy. No, he carried an arrow. An arrow? An arrow? <laughs> as soon as this show is over, I want that answer explained. <laughs> After the show. After the show. Later. Okay. okay. Brad? All right. Bruce just was not good. It wasn't obvious that he didn't carry a towel at all. What did he, he carry? He carried a simple magazine. Well, magazine. Okay. I'm surprised, but he really carried a chaplain's edition of the Bible. A Bible. Okay. What do you say, Joanne? I've never been to a nudist colony, so I didn't know what they carried around. So I ha. put... A book. A book. Carried a book. Okay. Still looking for that towel, chaplain. I think you gave a pretty logical answer. What do you say? Well, I was going to say a magazine, and I thought if the magazine turned out to be look, I'd be so <laughs> A briefcase. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, Betty, towel is the answer. You mustn't ever think about your answers too long because I said newspaper and it could be the free press. I'm right. Okay. So, no score there at all. And now, we're uh, ready for round two, but first we have to pass along this message. Let me come right back. Will you do that now? Hello there. Time to go. So I gotta say goodbye. We finished round one, no score, so you'll both be starting even next time with round two. Uh, how do you feel now, Sonny? Well, I feel more relaxed, but I Good. still feel nervous. Just cool, <laughs> you'll be all right. All right, I look forward to seeing both of you tomorrow. Anything I can do for anyone here? Is there anybody you have Kiss anything? me. Kiss you? <laughs> Look out, you're in trouble. <laughs> you know, I'll kiss you, I'll do anything you say. Okay, oh, goodbye, dear girl. I don't no. wanna be kissed. No, okay. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of romance, did you hear what Betty said to Brett coming down the stairs before the show? No, what? It's only our second day together, but the chaplain has already cured me of the fear of the sea. <laughs> yes, it is. I think that's a marvelous closing note. Ah, and we look forward to seeing all of you next time. Gene Rayburn saying so long for Match Game 73. Today's consolation prizes are Charm Glow F, a completely portable gas grill that goes anywhere, instant flame without starter fluids or charcoal, Charm Glow products, Antioch, Illinois. And Miro Electric Housewares, including the Cup of Minute Percolator and the Miromatic Manhattan Speed Cooker, the modern way to prepare meals in minutes instead of hours. And from the Chapstick people, Chap Hands Lotion, the rich non BC lotion for problem skin, and Chap Hands Cream for rough dry hands. <laughs> Mr. B, and here we go with Match Game 74, production number 0146, air date to be announced, BT Yard 126 of 74, take one. Get ready to match the stars, Larry Hovitz, Brett Summers, 
Rip Taylor, Joanne Fu, Richard Dawson, and Peggy Cash as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Rivers. Thank you very much for the warmth of your welcome and for joining us here on Match Game 74. We'd like to welcome Larry back. Nice Thank to have you. you back again. And Joanne, nice Thank to have you. you back again. And our regulars, of course. And the two new kids on Match Game 74, Rip and Peg. Nice to have you two with us. Thank you. Peggy, of course, is well known to all of you. Peggy and I have worked together a great deal. Yes, indeed. This is the first, uh, and I see she's thrilled about it. <laughs> this is the first time Rip and I have worked together. Yes, first time. And Peggy's from Massachusetts, and you're working in Massachusetts. I'm working in Holden, uh, Massachusetts. Where is that? It's for, uh, 10 miles from Worcester. Where is oh Worcester? Oh, my Lord. Worcester. Worcester. Holy Cross is in Worcester. Holy Cross is in Worcester. Holy Cross is in Worcester. I'm working at Holy Cross. That's right. You're working at Holy Cross. Yes. <laughs> Holden Country Club. What, what are you doing there? The Holden Country Club? Yes. My oh, he's taking my orders. Night club. Night club. <laughs> <laughs> I see they're all ready, so let's say hello to our current champ. Here is Virginia Shook. Hi, Virginia. You all right? I'm just fine. Good. Virginia's won three games. She's done very well here. She's got $6,800 to her credit. And uh, as we finished last time, she had won another game, and she was about to have a go uh, in the super match, uh, going for the $5,000, right? You're yes, going to match, try and match one celebrity on a head-to-head -head basis. Um, Are you ready for that? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to sure try. We're going to find out in a minute or so after this message. Okay, now here we go with Virginia Shook. She uh, won the first part of the uh, super match here. She won the $500. That means she's now be playing for 10 times that amount or $5,000. You know that by heart already, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> now, you know, to win the $5,000, you've got to match one celebrity. It must be an exact match, and it's a head-to-head -head contest. Which one do you choose? My Prince Charming, Dick Who's... Dawson. You're a Prince Charming? <laughs> Last year I was <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dick, you get ready to write. And Virginia, you know you have to face me. And here is the $5,000 question. Green blank. Green blank. All right, Virginia. He has finished. Now we need an answer from you. How do you fill in that blank to match his answer? Green... Thumb. Green thumb, you say? You say green thumb. Okay, that's her answer. Richard, for $5,000, may we see your answer? I have a terrible feeling I'm gonna get a green finger. <laughs> I said green goddess. Green goddess. Okay. So... <laughs> We get a groan from the audience. And what would you have said? Green grass, they would have said. That's not a bad answer either. All right, Virginia, you've added a little bit to your winnings here. As I said, you're up to $6,800. You're the champ. You're going to meet another player and play another game. So let's say hello to Jillian Fager. We welcome you, Jill Ann, and ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I have a daughter in high school, and I'm married to a man in women's underwear. <laughs> he what? He what? What is your husband? He, he's in women's underwear. He's in women's underwear. <laughs> Aren't we all occasionally? <laughs> You know, I'm standing very close to you, Jill Ann, and you don't have a wrinkle on your face. How could you have a daughter in high school? You're a very youthful-looking lady. Don't tell us your age. I'm not going to. Okay. <laughs> Good luck to both ladies. I'll push the button and reveal the two questions in round one and ask the challenger to make a selection. I'll take B, please. B is what she wants. Everybody plays. Here we go. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> now, don't touch me because I'm very nervous today. <laughs> one turtle said to the other... 
No comment. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. One turtle said to the other, I wish that chicken would stop blanking on my shell. <laughs> Two turtles are talking, you see there. And one said to the other. Oh, you got it. Okay. Did you hear that, Jillian? I wish that chicken would stop blanking on my shell. Everybody ready? Yes. Well, that was very quick, celebrities. Jillian, how do you fill in that blank? I wish that chicken would stop... Pecking. Pecking on my shell. You like that answer? I think that's a good answer, too. That may score some matches for her. Let's find out. Larry, what did you say? What are these two... Well, what's this oh, turtle? I was just thinking about her husband. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is he free? <laughs> <laughs> I said sitting. Sitting on my shell. Okay, no match there. Let's see if you score a match with Brett. What do you say? Isn't there a name for what her husband is in yeah, women's underwear? A lingerie the salesman. Majority, yes, <laughs> <laughs> the majority. I said, what did she say? She said pecking. I didn't my... say pecking. What did you I say? I said laying eggs. Laying eggs on my shell. Ah. Uh... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Okay. Oh, Rip. Well, it's not a good beginning, but I mean, it's just uh, laying is what I put too. I yeah, know. laying eggs on my shell. Well, yeah. I, I think pecking would be more annoying than laying an egg on a shell. What say you to that? I agree. I said L pecking. Pecking. So there is one good to take. Take. Yep. All right, Richard. Well, I'm really rolling along here, folks. If you loved green thumb, <laughs> you <you're> love sitting. <laughs> oh, How'd you like a black eye? Yeah. Now, Peggy, here's your first shot at it. What do you say? <laughs> Pecking. Pecking. Very good. So you met Peggy. Well done, Peggy. All right, Jillian, you scored two there, and we'll see how Virginia does with her end of the round. But first, we've got a little message for you, and this is it. GSN presents... I went to the director before we started, and I said, listen, I've never done a TV show. He said, don't make any broad gestures, because your hands will go out of the frame. So I did the show. I said, and now, here's the singing chicken, and here's our baritone, who has a beautiful voice. Stay tuned for more of That 70s Hour on GSN. I, that's the way I did the show. I was a big hit. Now, we've completed uh, one half of round one with Jill Ann, and she scored two matches with our celebrities. Now, let's see how our current champion, Virginia, does with this. Everybody plays. The absent-minded professor put his wife in the freezer and went to bed with the blank. <laughs> yeah. The absent-minded professor put his wife in the freezer and went to bed with the blank. <laughs> Having a good time here? Don't mix me up with my first time. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. All right, let's let Rip think about this now. I got it. You got it. There He's got it. Good. All right. Lower tier is ready, and now the upper tier is ready. We'll call on Virginia. The absent-minded professor put his wife in the freezer and went to bed with the... With a student. <laughs> you couldn't think of anything. Student. Okay. Well... <laughs> May I say something? Yeah. yeah, no, you may not say anything. <laughs> I don't think he was very absent-minded. <laughs> <laughs> you have a question? Does the student have a friend? <laughs> no. <laughs> Larry... He's in women's underwear. <laughs> <laughs> he put his wife in the freezer and went to bed with, uh... That absent-minded, huh? <laughs> I said... Oh. <laughs> I said roast. With the roast, it's perfectly good answer. It's the roast or the turkey or the frozen lasagna or whatever. What did you say? I didn't say any of that stuff. You what didn't you say any of that, that stuff. But I'll tell you one thing. I didn't say student. No, what did you say? I said leg of lamb. Leg of lamb is another good answer. Very good answer. Uh, did you come up with a winner, too? Same line with the steaks. With the steaks. Okay. Yeah. Some cold, peachy well, answers. What is, she, mine was very obvious. What is yours? You know Baskin and Robbins. I put ice cream. Ice cream is another good answer. That's ice cream man. is good, actually, but you keep slipping out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> milk. Oh, that's milk. 
Frozen milk. Freeze. No, not frozen. Well, they put it in the freezer. It must have frozen. It's nicely chilled. I see. Okay. A little silk chocolate. It's okay. That's all right. That's like a glam on the pillow. Yeah. Stink near your foot. Yeah, that's right. The time just flies away. Shut up! Oh. He doesn't. Peggy, would you straighten us out, please? Oh. <laughs> Are you going to straighten us out? Yeah, he went to bed with the dog. Oh. See, the big dog. Well, I didn't know the student. Okay, so now it's uh, two to nothing in favor of the challenger. We go to round two and ask Jolanne to make a selection. I'm going to stick with B. B was lucky for you last time. You think it'll help you this time. <laughs> Peggy, you do not play. And I don't. And you don't play because you matched we're last time persons. around. <laughs> you are. The Godfather said, Frankie, I know you want to be in show business. But you shouldn't tap dance at a blank. <laughs> Are you taking tap? Yes, good news. Is it fun? Oh, it's fantastic. Fun. Have you never done it before? Only when I was about that big. Yeah. Would you like to show us what <laughs> you can learn? Like? Come over here. I'll show you the good news yeah. step. Yeah, sure. Let's see the good news step. Yes, let's see the good news step. That's the good news step. She's taking tap now. Isn't that terrific? Can you do a time step? Oh, no, I'm flexing. I'm all right. Okay, bring your shoes next okay. time. All right, they're all set over there, so we'll call on Jillian for a response. The Godfather said, Frankie, I know you want to be in show business, but you shouldn't tap dance at a... Funeral. Funeral, she said. <laughs> Audience seems to think she's got a winner with that answer. Larry, how about you? Does Joanne know on the good ship Lollipop? Yeah. <laughs> <That's my favorite. laughs> I said funeral. Funeral is a match for you, Joanne. Funeral's the answer, Brett. What have you got? I wouldn't have minded, but Joanne did not even have the good grace to blush when she was an embarrassment to herself. <laughs> good news! Oh, and the original production. <laughs> uh, funeral. Funeral. There's another one. Okay, we're up to four. Now, Rip, what have you got well, to Well, I offer? thought you said tap dance in a, so I put in a towel. And you said <laughs> towel. Funeral, so I, towel. I, I wrapped meant around funeral. his head. <laughs> I mean, I around, yes. Yeah, okay. Now, we need one more response. It's going to come from Richard Dawson. Yeah, I think you are allowed to tap dance at a funeral. You if are? If they're bringing someone up. <laughs> I put funeral. Funeral, oh. okay. She's up to five, you know that. And that means you've got to get five to stay in the game. Six, however, will win another game for you, Virginia. Everybody listen carefully, this is it. Count Dracula got a birthday card that read, Happy birthday, you old blank. <laughs> Count Dracula got a birthday card. Happy you old, Happy birthday, you old blank. It was your acting. <laughs> it was my acting. Did that yes, help you, Rip? That's what helped. Splendid. That I can. Is that a is, is that a rose you're wearing in your lapel? Yes, it's from Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. That's that from... beautiful. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, I. Oh. The lower tier is ready. You ready, Brett? No, I can't think of Brett, will you pay I'm attention? Sorry, I'm so embarrassed. I'm just no, talking to him to kill time to give you a chance to write, and you're listening to us. I'm sorry, but that was wrong. Okay. Now, Virginia. Count Dracula got a birthday card that read, Happy birthday, you old... Bat. Bat, she said. That's a good answer, and she oh, gave us a touch dear. of humor, too. Let's see if it works for her. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Larry? Nothing, not a thing. Nothing? No. You old I said bloodsucker. You old bloodsucker. <laughs> okay. Oh. Now, <laughs> you need, you have got to match all the remaining celebrities to stay in the game. Bat is the answer. Brett, what did you say? What was Count Dracula? That was the answer I was trying to vampire. think of. He was vampire. vampire. He was yes, a vampire. I couldn't think of vampire. So what did you put? So I put ghost. You all go. That does not match that. So, Joanne is the winner. Come on down, Joanne. Congratulations. What do you have here? Blood sucker. That the and what did you have? Okay, anyway. Virginia, it's time for us to say goodbye to you, but we've enjoyed meeting you, and uh, you're going to go away. A kind of a rich lady here with $6,800.
for you. We'll get to you and a go at the big money super match here right after we get to these messages for all our friends in television land. Now, this pretty lady has won her first game. She's got $100 to her credit. She's going to have a go at over $5,000. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so am I. You know how this goes? We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank horse. Now, the answer they gave most often, Jill Ann, is worth $100, uh, $500 to you if you match it. Second most frequent response, $250. And the third, $100. Now, you're allowed to solicit a little help from our celebrities. One at a time. Name one. Peggy Cass. Peggy, how would you fill in that blank? blank? Hot. What's that? Hot horse. Hot, hot horse. horse. Hot horse Harry. Hot horse. Yeah, All right. Win. It's a There's hot horse. one answer. Uh, Richard. Richard, what did you say? Hot horse. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking of hot house. I'm not. I'm thinking Have of hot horse. Have you been putting horse. all your plants inside of a horse? Uh, I thought of quarter horse. Quarter horse. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a quarter for you. Quarter and a quarter for me. Yes. Half for you. Um. Larry. <laughs> Larry, how do you feel in that blank, blank horse? Wake up, dear. Hobby. Hobby horse. So, uh, Jillian, you've got a hobby horse, a quarter horse, and a hot horse. You can choose one of those or think up one of your own and give it to us, but now we have to call for an answer. What would you like to do? I think I'll go with race horse. <laughs> race horse. Race horse is the answer she is looking for. She hopes it's up there under the $500 spot. We wish her well. Let's find out if it is indeed up there and where. First, may we see the $100 response. Charlie horse is a good answer. You know what a Charlie horse is? And nobody thought of that, that or I don't know, nobody said it. All right, still looking for race horse. Here's the $250 response. Rocking horse is close to hobby horse, but not quite. Here is your last chance, Jill Ann. May we see the $500 response? Race horse! Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Very well done, my dear. You're up to $600 now. And uh, you've won the $500. That means you're going to be playing for 10 times that amount or... $5,000. Now, to collect, remember, you've got to match one celebrity head-to-head. -head. It has to be exact. Please choose one now. I'm going to go with Richard. Okay, Richard, you get ready to write. I did so well. You see, we're green goddess. <laughs> <laughs> and you will face me. And here is the $5,000 question. Little blank. Little blank. Okay, Richard is finished. And now, Jill Ann, we call for your response. How do you fill that blank in? Little... Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood. You know, it's a good thing I'm not playing because I recently saw a movie called Robin Hood and all I could think of was Little John and that blanked out everything else in my mind. We're going to find out whether Little Red Riding Hood is going to be a winner for you or not. I think that's a good answer. Uh, Richard's probably come up with a good answer, too, for $5,000. May we see it now? You certainly have a way with words. <laughs> little Orphan Annie. Oh, oh no. <laughs> not a match, but it's a good answer. Yeah. It's a little tough Orphan one. Annie I'm sorry. Little Orphan Annie is a dandy answer, and so is Little Red Riding Hood. Mine was rotten. I got it. Well, little John was a rotten answer. How's the well, listen, show? you're up to $600. You're still the champ, and you may be up here again. You're going to play another game, so let's bring on another player. Here's Carol Rathbun. How's Carol Rathbun? Just fine, thank Good. you. Good. You want to tell us a little more about yourself? Yes, I'm a veterinary assistant. My husband is a deputy sheriff paramedic, and we both enjoy scuba diving and hiking. Where do you do scuba diving? Oh, all over. All over. Okay, good luck to you. You know the challenger makes a selection, so we'll ask you to do that, Carol. I'll try B. B is what she wants, and everybody plays, and this is it. While cleaning up after the party, Rosalie said, Hey, look at this. Somebody left his teeth in this blank. <laughs> You understand? I understand. Oh, good. While cleaning up after the party, Rosalie said, hey, look at this. Somebody left his teeth in this. In and this? The, in this blank. 
Okay. Do not tarry, Larry. Oh, clever. <laughs> All right. So, Carol, we ask you to fill in the blank. Hey, look at this. Somebody left his teeth in this... Drink. In this drink. Okay. What finally came to your mind, Larry? Sandwich. In the sandwich. <laughs> What do you say? Do you know that Larry has a very short memory? He always puts his answer in and then he checks it. Before he takes it. Why do you do that? Because sometimes you're sneaky. You've taken two of mine today. <laughs> I said apple. Somebody left his teeth in this apple. No match there. Yeah. Drink of the answer she's looking for. They didn't, what leave, it, they didn't leave it in the towel. I left it in the cup this in time. In the cup. <laughs> left it in the cup there. How about you? Hmm. <laughs> Somebody left his teeth in the... In the old ashtray. In the ashtray. Drink, Carol's answer. Richard, you what's your... You leave your eye in the ashtray, you leave your teeth in a sandwich. That's right. Where do you leave the teeth, Peggy? Where you leave yours, in the glass. In the glass. Okay, so, uh... Drink and glass turned out to be a match there at the last moment, so that's one for you, Carol. And we'll come back to our two contestants right after this. Tune in, turn on, and blank out. Ladies, our time is up. We'll have to continue this contest next time. And we'll look forward to seeing both of you, as we will all of these beautiful, gracious, celebrated people. <laughs> <laughs> what about Why are you laughing? You're right. And the rest of you are... Now oh, listen, you're all terrific, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Gene Rayburn here for Match Game 74. Join us next time. Thank you. Today's consolation prizes are the Weekender by American Tourists, who designed to go everywhere by land, sea, or air, fiberglass reinforced construction, strong, lightweight luggage by American Tourists, and a supply of Tootsie Pops, hard candy with a chewy Tootsie Roll center, two candies in one for twice the fun, and new, thicker, richer than ever before, Dial Shampoo, the shampoo with special managing agents, leaves hair softer than natural looking shine, Dial Shampoo. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 74. A Mark Goodson, Bill Topman production. Stay tuned for Secret Storm next over most of these CBS stations. This would be Match Game 74, production number 0148, air date to be announced, BGR 12674, take one. Get ready to match the stars, Larry Hovis, Brett Summers, Rip Taylor, Joanne Flew, Richard Dawson. And Peggy Cass as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Rayburn. You love me in blue? What is a peplum? Like a little skirt there. But do soup, uh, dummy. <laughs> doesn't make me a bad person. No, certainly just not. Just because I've got a peplum. <laughs> what time do you get off, Gene? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more relaxed this show. <laughs> what is that you're wearing? It's a turtleneck. Oh. This is class. Yes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's turtle. That's, that'll be the end of that there. Someone answered. <laughs> Richard uh, Dawson, are you your usual dignified self here? Uh, who said that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm she fine, thank you. Splendid. I thank just you. wanted to inquire about your health. Just you all right? Fine. Yes, thank you. Good, good. <laughs> Here is our current champ, Paul Fisher, who's got uh, $350. All right, Paul. Just fine, thank you. Good. Paul, uh, as time expired last time, was just about to have a go at $2,500. Are you ready for that? As ready as I'm ever going to be. Okay, we're going to do that right after we pass along a message of interest for one and all. Okay, Paul Fisher, you won uh, uh, $250 here, and that means you're going to be playing now for 10 times that amount, or 
$2,500. Now, to collect that amount of money, you've got to match one celebrity. It has to be exact, and uh, it's time to choose one now. Which one? Joanne. Joanne Flute, you get ready to write, and Paul, you will face me if you would, please, and I'll get the $2,500 question. Joanne, you write your answer to this, if you would. Panama blank. Panama blank. No help, please, from the audience. We appreciate your enthusiasm, but your answer may be lousy. <laughs> okay, Joanne is finished. Now, Paul, we need a response from you. How do you fill in that blank? Panama... Canal. Canal. Well, the audience thinks that's going to be a match, according to their applause. Let's find out now from Joanne Flug for 2500 May we see your answer, if you please. I'm really sorry, Rock. Come on! to get in show business, Paul. <laughs> All right. Paul Fisher is uh, now up to $2,850, and he's a champ. He's going to meet another player. Let's do that now. Here comes Linda Wynn. <laughs> Linda Wynn. Linda, you know Paul? Yes, I do. Hi. Congratulations. Paul's kind of excited. He just won a lot of money, and I know he's happy about that, and we'd like to find out a little bit about Linda Wynn. I'm originally from Arizona, Phoenix, and I attended Arizona State University, and I'm presently living in Anaheim, California, and I'm a sixth grade teacher. And you have a beautiful voice, my dear. Thank you. It's so well modulated. <laughs> I think I'm in love with you. <laughs> Linda, you know how to play our game? Yes. And you know that I push this button and reveal two questions here, and ask you, the challenger, to make a selection. Uh, my student said B. Your students said B. Yes. Really? Yes. Do they know you're watching. here? Oh, yes. They're watching today. Oh, good. Renee. All right. She's got a whole bunch of, what is it, sixth graders rooting yes. for her? All right. Here we go. Brand new game. The exotic dancer said, Ooh. listen, honey, I don't need no lights for my act because my blank glows in the dark. <laughs> exotic dancer went to college she said listen honey I don't need any lights for my act because my blank glows in the dark sixth graders are watching eh, Linda? Okay. Rip are you indecisive again no got it got, no, got it got it okay everybody ready so Linda we call on you the exotic dancer said listen honey I don't need any lights for my act because my blank glows in the dark my bust. Your bust, yes. Okay, that's her answer. That's her answer, Larry. What is yours? Will she hire out as a flashlight? <laughs> <laughs> I said her body glows. In her whole body dark. glows in the dark. Thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Bust and all. <laughs> Brett, what did you say? Rip tickled me with his mustache when he kissed me. Oh, really? Yes. Did it you was, like it? Yes, it was very nice. <laughs> but if he hurts me, he'll have to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> I said a uh, wiggle. My wiggle glows in the dark. Okay, no answer there. No, no One match. One of these days, I'm gonna beat you up in the parking lot so bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna get back at you. <laughs> Rick, what did you say? I said her, uh, her fan glows the in the fan. dark. The fan. She was a fan, fan dancer. Fan dancer. Yeah, fan. exotic yeah. fan dancer. Hello there, dancer. Yeah. There's a lady who's just started taking dancing lessons. What did you say, that dancer? That terrific tapping number you did earlier in the week, Joel. <laughs> Eat your heart out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Fiddly D. I put body. Body. Yes. All right. The answer Linda looking for is bust. What do you offer, Richard? <laughs> to put an offering on the bus that goes in the dark. <laughs> Count me for, I put body. Body yeah. seems to be the answer yeah, almost all the celebrities have. How about Miss Demure, soft-spoken Peggy Cass? Skin. Skin glows in the dark. Yeah, all right. No so yet. you didn't score with that one. And Paul, we've got this one for you coming up in a moment or so. But first, this has to be passed along to you.
GSN presents Behind the Blank. When Gene made an appearance on The Love Boat, was his wife played by Betty White, Fanny Flagg, Shelley Winters, or Adrian Barbeau? Stay tuned for the answer. Who played Gene's wife on The Love Boat? The correct answer is B, Fanny Flagg. Gene suggested the match game panelist for the part. Gene liked their ad libs and loved to show off his fanny. Stay tuned for more of that 70s hour on GSN. <laughs> okay, where are we here? We've got to finish round one. Linda did not score a match with a celebrity on her end of the round, and let's see how Paul Fisher does with his. Everybody plays, folks. Pay oh. attention. We were having a rendezvous. The tourist was thrown out of the White House because he looked just like blank. <laughs> Would you do that again, sweetheart? Yes, I will. Thank you. The tourist was thrown out of the White House because he looked just like blank. Oh! That's... There are a number of good choices. Well, all our questions are designed so that there are a couple of good responses. Is that so? That's so, I yes. I figured that out, yes. <laughs> and you used to be on the old match game a lot. I know. All right, Brett's the first one finished. I am? Yep. Oh, golly. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> up there. She's Shut the first one up there. Am I registering in a hotel? <laughs> Larry isn't finished There's yet. What are you doing, Larry? Are you Sorry, finished? I'm, I'm, you I'm sure, sure. Let me just see what you threw away. I won't show it to you. I'm glad you threw that away. <laughs> okay. Everybody else did. All right. Paul Fisher. The tourist was thrown out of the White House because he looked just like... Nixon. Like Nixon. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Larry, what do you say? I bypass. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. You gotta yeah, I know. Show I, uh, and tell time. I had a, a taste lapse myself. I said Agnew. Agnew, all right. Okay, Brett. He hasn't resigned or anything yet, has he? I mean, did I miss something along the way? Oh, you mean Larry? No. No, oh, no I mean Mr. He's the other fellow. No. I don't understand his answer. I said... Oh, I said John Dean. John Dean, okay. Well, Rip, not moaning grow like that. It makes a hell of a lot more sense than what he said. <laughs> right there. No, you keep bugging me, so I put Nixon for good. There it is. Oh, 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 oh. And a boy Rip. Forget it. Give us a little confetti In there because second, it was a winning, winning answer. All right, discuss. there we go. Now, what do you say, Joanne? I have to think about it. Because I went about... through Agnew, Nixon, and then I kind of got down to old John Dean. John Dean. All. all right, that's the second time that answer has come up. Let's see what comes up here in Richard's answer. I don't think it's the last we've heard of Mr. Dean. At least I hope not. John <laughs> Dean. John Dean. All right, Nixon the, is the answer he's looking for. Peggy, what do you offer? Well, I went for that old country boy, Sam Irvin. <laughs> Sam Irvin. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. One of his eyebrows married the McDonald arches, I heard. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so at the end of round one, it's one to nothing in favor of our champ, and we push the button and go to round two and ask Linda to make a selection. We're pretty B. dumb. What's that? B. The B. Her students say stick with B, and that's the way it's going to be. When Fred Flintstone parked his car illegally, the police dinosaur came along and blanked it. <laughs> Think about that now. Not too long, though. Fred Flintstone parked his car illegally. The police dinosaur came along and... Had a boy rip... Good, good. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. All right. Now we're all set. Linda, when Fred Flintstone parked his car illegally, the police dinosaur came along and... Loved him. And it. blanked it. Oh, blanked it. Could you please repeat the question? Yeah. When Fred Flintstone parked his car illegally, the police dinosaur came along and blanked it. Moved it. And moved it. Go back to clubbed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, moved it is her answer. Let's see how it works out for her. I Larry, I told you now. pink and orange went together. <laughs> I don't feel so bad at all. My wife. I said, ate it. Ate it is a good answer. See that? Now. Brett? Gene. Yes. 
Mine doesn't necessarily match, but I think it's sort of a cute answer. Well, well, let's, uh, we'll, we'll be the judge of that. And sweet? <laughs> yes. It's sort of Mary Pickford. It's so you, yes. Sort of Mary Pickford? Bombed? He bombed it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it out of the way. See, but I have... <laughs> the judge thinks your answer's for the birds. <laughs> Okay, uh, Rip, what do you say? Fred Flintstone, and I put that they stoned it. Stoned it is a good answer. Yeah, right. Don't let it Joanne, lay there. have you got a winner for us? Oh, of course I do. Now, I mean, if you see a little cart <laughs> yeah. along, right. and you see a big dinosaur, right. what is he going to do to it? Well, I'd say he's squash it or something like that. Absolutely right. Squash it. He squashed it. Very good. Okay. All that for squash? What do you say, Richard? <laughs> I say, what was Dinah Shaw doing with Fr Flintstone? Ah. <laughs> I said squash. Squash. Yeah. Okay, you got to match Peggy to stay in the game, Linda. Peggy, what do you say? Moved is the yeah. answer she's looking I for. I said mashed. Mashed and moved is not a match, so Paul wins another game. Congratulations. Have a hundred dollars, Paul. Good. Well, Linda, I'm sorry. I hope the sixth graders aren't going to holler at you too much there. Don't kill me. <laughs> We've got a gift for you backstage, together with our thanks for being with us on Match Game Set. Goodbye, Linda. Goodbye, Linda. Goodbye, Linda. Goodbye, Linda. Paul, you're up to $2,950. You got a chance to win over $5,000 here in the Big Money Super Match. And shall we begin? Absolutely. All right. We polled a recent studio audience. And we got their best response to this, square blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 to you if you can match it. The second, $250, and the third, $100. Whom do you choose over here for a little assist? About Richard. Richard Dawson. What you are when you do the waltz, square dance. Square dance. Okay, there's one answer. Uh, Joanne. Oh. Joanne, what do you say, square I had square dance. I can't think of another one. Square. Oh. And that's only number two, Joanne. Because I waited until three. Time is up. You know All right. Two. Peggy Cass. Peggy. Square root. Square root. <laughs> Peggy's going to school, and now it's a, it's a, 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 a college should. term there. <laughs> okay, so you got square dance and square root. You may choose one of those as the answer, or give us one of your own if you'd like, but we need an answer now. I've got to go with dance. Square dance is the answer that Richard gave you. And that's the one we're looking for. Let's find out if it's up there. May we see the $100 response? Square oh. deal is a good one, isn't it? Yeah, I got that. Okay, still looking for square dance. Here's the $250 response. Square root is the one that Piggy gave. I thought it was a good answer. Sure, you dope. You didn't even know what a square root was. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure myself. Either. Oh, square root. I was just going to say, Peggy Cass will now define square root, but I... 36 is 36, 6 is its square root. Right. Oh, that's exactly right. Got it, Peg. Okay, we are looking for square dance. Here is your last chance, Paul, for square dance, the $500 response. Square dance it is! Congratulations. How about Richard? Okay, Paul. You got the $500, that means you now play for 10 times that amount, or $5,000. That's a lot five of money. Ones. That's right, five big ones it is. To collect, you got to match one celebrity. Head-to-head -head has to be exact. Please choose one now. Well, not that I'm prejudiced, but i got to go with Joanne. Okay. Oh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> How do you That's think that makes an older person feel? <laughs> not being one, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Okay, Joanne's getting ready to write. You face me if you would, please. And here is the $5,000 question. Joanne, write your answer to this if you would. Blank, <clears throat> blank, knife. Blank knife. K-N-I-F-E, blank knife. Okay, Joanne is finished. Now, Paul, we need a response from you. How do you fill in the blank? Blank knife. Butcher knife. Butcher knife? I hear the audience is moaning. You think it's wrong? Yeah. Yeah. The 
audience is undecided about this. All right, Joanne, it's up to you now. For $5,000, may we see your response, please? Butcher knife is his answer. I'm really embarrassed to show you this. Oh, it's Congratulations to Paul Fisher, who's now up to $8,450. We'll get back to him in a moment. Now, this message. Our current champ is sitting here saying $8,000. $8,000. $8,000. What are you going to do with all that money, Paul? Well, I'm like everybody else. I got a few bills to pay. And, you do? Uh, yeah. Well, Join yeah. the club? Yeah. yeah. Do you going to have any leftover for fun and games? Or? Oh, absolutely. Good. <laughs> All right, if you're ready, Paul, we'll start another game. To do that, we have to welcome a new player. So let's say hello to Pat Raymond. Hi, Pat. How are you? Fine. Good. Nervous. Where are you from, Pat? What do you do? I'm from here in L.A., yeah. and I work for an insurance broker. What do you do there? Well, I'm an account assistant. Is that interesting work? Very interesting. I enjoy it. In Good. spare time, I horseback ride and play tennis. Well, those are great uh, extracurricular activities. We wish you the best of luck here. And let's begin, shall we? You, the challenger, Pat, will make a selection. That's the way it goes. There's a first round question. A. A is what she wants. New game, folks. Everybody plays. This is it. Poor Henry. He turned his big bedroom fan on reverse, and it sucked his blank right out the window. bedroom fan on reverse and it sucked his blank out the window. Poor Henry. Poor Henry. Henry's life wasn't easy. First, uh, the lower tier is better than the upper tier because they're finished. I finished. I finished. Okay, here we go. Pat, here it is. Poor Henry. He turned his big bedroom fan on reverse and it sucked his blank out the window. His bed. His bed. bed. His bed. <laughs> Hold that one right out the window. Larry, can you picture that? Oh, yes. <laughs> Suck the chrome off a trailer hitch. <laughs> um, I said pillow. Pillow. Oh, that's part of the bed. Sweet. She went for the whole bed. What do you say, Brett? She went for the whole what? The bed. Oh. The whole bed got sucked out the window. Well, I went for the whole person. The whole person got sucked out the window. Henry himself went. Well, I got personal and made a confession. Toupee. His toupee. <laughs> Yes. I don't want to discuss That's it right. any further. Just yes. pass on. Okay, you don't want to make any further comments. I don't want to hear it any further. You know how to hurt. And it grows on my lip anyway. <laughs> All right, yeah, Jack. You too. <laughs> Jack's what got his say? cross. <laughs> oh, I leaned yeah, against something, I know. didn't I? Then? It's a cheap paint they use on the set. <laughs> but, uh, what, what do you say there? That was me. I yeah. got a little carried away with that fan. I pictured a huge fan, yep. and it sucked his wife out the window. Sucked his wife out the window. Boring. There she goes, Henry's wife. They haven't spoken to each other since. Wife it is. There's another one. All right, Peggy, what have you got? Ben I is the answer. I only had a dollar fan. It sucked his toupee out the window. His toupee out the window. Mm. Peggy really, and I had the same thoughts. It wasn't a very thoughts. powerful fan, was it? Okay, That's we'll get to Paul's thing. question, but first we've got to get to this, and then you hurry back. Have to stop here in the middle of round one. I look forward to seeing both of you next time when we'll pick up this game where we left off, okay? All right, listen, you're all terrific, and I just want to point out to all of you who are in the vicinity that, Rip, you are playing in uh, Harris Nevada? And Reno. Harris? Harris in Reno. In Reno. For three weeks, yeah. Right now. <laughs> Thank and you. it won't be long until I come back. <laughs> and you're writing a book? Uh-huh. And what's it called? How to Raise Venus. Kangaroos. What? <laughs> Towering, towering Venuses? Right. What does that refer to? It's about women through history. Tall Sir. ladies? Yes, because you never know how tall <laughs> they are. <laughs> <laughs> Gene Redmond from Match Game 74. Join us next time. Thank you. Bye. Today's consolation prizes are the West Clock's Big Ben Futura, traditional Big Ben quality and craftsmanship, colorful, easy-to-read dials, adjustable alarm from West Clock's Italian Industries Company, and a supply of easy-off window cleaners for professional results at home, easy-off, cuts through tough grease and grime without streaking, and profile, with a special formula of cracked food and wheat germ, tastes so good everybody will enjoy it, delicious profile, a family affair. This 
is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 74, a Mark Goodson, Bill Trotman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales, the next over most of the CBS station. This is Match Game 74. Production number 0198. Here date to be announced, VTR 41574. Take one. Get ready to match the star. Ron Masak. Brett Sommer. Charles Nelson Riley. Joanne Flew. Richard Dawson. And Fanny Flagg. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. The match game 74, Gene Rayburn! <laughs> Everybody ready there? Yes. You all are full of vim and vigor and vitality, are you? Yes. <laughs> oh, really? No, we're full of something else, but we can't say it on the air. <laughs> Well, then I guess we better get underway. Shall we say hello Moving to our two right players, along. Donna Linnell and Terry Godat? Hello, ladies. <laughs> Donna is our current champion. She has won $6,200. She's got two games under her belt, and she's happy about that, and we're happy Very for happy. Donna. And she's being challenged by Terry. We finished round one, and at the end of round one, it's four to nothing in favor of the champ. And we're going to start round two, and you got to get on your horse and get I going know. there, Terry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, we'll see how round two goes right after we see how this message goes. Here we go. Ready, ladies? I'll push a button, reveal the two questions for our second and final round, ask Terry to make a selection. A? A it is. Now, remember, you've got to match four celebrities to stay in the game there. The scuba diver said to the psychiatrist, <laughs> you may think I'm crazy but I've fallen in love with the blank. <laughs> scuba diver said to the psychiatrist, you may think I'm crazy, but I fall in love with a blank. You know, I've gotten a frown right here since I've been on this show from all the thinking I've had to do. Really? It's a foreign uh, thing to me to think. You've done very well today so far. We haven't started today. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Oh, oh, I have it. Get out of my way. You got it. I'll clear the decks. <laughs> there we the go. Lights. They're a doctor. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on now, put it in the slot. Okay, here we go. Now, Terry, it's up to you to give us a response. A scuba diver said to the psychiatrist, you may think I'm crazy, but I've fallen in love with a blank. A what fish? You... A fish. She said a fish. Now, let's see if you are a little more specific. The audience seems to think that's a good response. What do you think of it, Ron? Uh, you were doing Ethel Mermaid over there? Was it? <laughs> a fish. A fish. Yeah. Right, one for you, Terry. Yeah. After nine solid months on this show, I thought I'd finally caught on. Mermaid. A mermaid. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you, my darlings. Charles. <laughs> There's a pair of them. A pair Two mermaids. mermaids. Uh-oh. <laughs> Got to match everybody down here to stay in the game. The scuba diver said to the psychiatrist, you may think I'm crazy, but I've fallen in love with a... <gasps> I'm sorry, Terry. I put mermaid or lady of the sea. Mermaid or lady, that's not a match. So Donna wins again. Congratulations. There's another $100 for you. Okay. Oh. Oh, there's the fish over there. Well, the fish turned up a little too little and too late, Terry. We thank you for being with us. We've got a gift for you. And uh, many thanks for being with us. Uh-oh, wrong way. Go back the other way. Can't get near me. How many times do I have to tell you? And stay out. Okay. Yes. Listen. Sober up. <laughs> now, Donna, you've won another game, and you're going to have a go at over $5,000 here in the Big Money Super Match. Now, you know how this goes. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Prisoner of blank. 
Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 to you if you match that one. If you match the middle one, it's $250. If you match the bottom one, you get $100. A little help from celebrities here. Whom do you choose? Joanne, a uh, prisoner of love. Prisoner of love, one of Perry Como's big hit songs. Uh, Richard. Yes. I as the prisoner of Zenda. Ah. How could Benita, you my darling. <laughs> yes, prisoner of Zenda. Charles. I know what he's going to Don't listen to the others. Prisoner, unfortunately, of war. Prisoner of war. So you've got Prisoner of Zenda, Prisoner of Love, and Prisoner of War. You may choose one of those or give us one of your own, but we call for an answer from you now. Prisoner of War. Prisoner of War. Okay, that's the ones you're looking for, Prisoner of War. Let's find out if it's up there, and if so, where. First, may we see the $100 response. Prisoner of Zenda is the one that Richard gave you. Ho, ho, ho. All right, that may be a good sign for you. Here we go, looking for Prisoner of War is the $250 response. Prisoner of Love. Well, you got two out of three so far. Let's find out where it is. Here is the $500 response. Whoa! And a boy, Charles! Okay. There's another 500 for you, but more important than that now, you've won the 500. That means you're playing for 10 times that amount, or... $5,000. Now, to collect, remember, you must match one celebrity head-to-head. -head. Which one will it be? Joanne. Joanne. All right. You face me if you would. Joanne, you get ready to write. Here is the $5,000 question. This will have to be an exact match. Whooping blank. That's W-H-O-O-P-I-N-G blank. Ow. What was it? Whooping? Whooping. Oh, whooping. Whooping. W-H-W-H-O-O-P-I. Whooping. I say whooping. As it's spelled. Okay. I'm going to put it in the slot. Thank you, Richard. I'm too nervous. Okay, Joanne, now it's up to you to give us a response you think will match, Joanne. Whooping. Cough. Cough. Just take two tablespoons of the medicine every day, audience, and you'll get over it in no time at all. All right, Joanne, for $5,000, may we see your response to whooping blank. And I was hoping I'd help you get a down payment for your house. I put whooping cough. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Just bounce around here for a little while. While you watch this message of interest. Well, there's your mom. Oh, how about that, mom? GSN presents... Gene Rayburn! That show could have run a lot longer than it did, but some dummy vice president at CBS got so excited at our high ratings that he put us in three different time slots in a year. Our ratings never came back, and then he canceled the show. Network vice presidents are brilliant men. Stay tuned for more of That 70s Hour on GSN. Brilliant. Now, uh, this lady has just won another bundle of money, and her total so far is getting uh, pretty good there. Huh? Now, you going to use that to buy that house? Definitely. You're really close to it now, aren't you? I know. She's got $11,800. Thank you. <laughs> what do you say, Michael? How are you doing? Now, we're going to start another game. To do that, we've got to introduce another player, and we're very happy to meet Mr. Michael Hadley. What do you say, Mike? Feel oh, yeah. very, very good. Feel lucky today. Where are you from? I'm from Pasadena. I'm you want to give us a story of your life in three sentences? Three sentences, okay. Uh, it's, I'm a second year medical student at uh, USC, and uh, my wife and, and my uh, mother are sitting in the audience, and they're wishing me luck. Uh, well, we wish you luck too. <laughs> okay. Nice to have all of you here with us. Yes. You ready? Ready. All right, I'll push the button here and reveal two questions. Ask you to make a selection, Mike. A. A for Michael Hadley. This is it. 
The jolly green giant is so big. I'm sick of him. No, now listen, I'm he's a good fella. The jolly he's green giant. No, he's not. Now he's a good, uh, lovable fella. The jolly no, green he... giant is so big, he uses the Statue of Liberty as a blank. <laughs> the jolly green giant. So big. Is so big. He uses this stash. No, 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 I have to do the whole show with a mustache on. I know, it looks cute. It, uh, toward the end of the show, you can draw a mustache on. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to watch. Johnny Green Giant is so big, he uses the Statue of Liberty as a blank. I hate hard questions. That's an easy question. Now, just think about it. Okay. The Jolly Green Giant is so big. He's big. Yes. He uses the Statue of Liberty as a... Blame. The implication is that he is bigger than the Statue of Liberty. You see. Right. Oh, boy. we got to spell it out to you, don't we? She's cute and she's my friend, so leave her alone. And she's a numbskull. Gee, you tell him, fat lady. <laughs> All right. Tell him. All set. Here we go. Michael, the Jolly Green Giant is so big, he used the Statue of Liberty as a blank. Well, he used the Statue of Liberty as a... as a girlfriend. So like a girl. As a girlfriend. Girlfriend. He used the Statue of Liberty as a girlfriend. Well, I guess, uh... Stone freak guy. Yeah, that's right. He's not as big as I thought he was. Ron, what do you say about the Statue of Liberty and the Jolly Green well, Giant? Are they I, going together? Well, I, well, I don't know. I, I use the Statue of Liberty as a hat rack, which is like a girlfriend. A hat rack. <laughs> I've been married so long, well, what do I know? Yeah. <laughs> From what I hear, you weren't too smart when you were single. <laughs> Brett, what did you say? He goes to USC. Yeah. I just said to him, USC, I said, that's where the smart kids, the dummies go to UCLA, right? <gasps> right. Oh. Uh. I don't need those booze. I'm independently wealthy. I'm an heiress. <laughs> uh, but I wouldn't want him you to take care of my kids. <laughs> yeah. I said girlfriend. Girlfriend. <laughs> so that one for you. Charles, can you follow that act? No. No. <laughs> the Rockettes would have trouble. <laughs> they, uh, I spelt it wrong, but I, I was thinking, and I said, a night light. A night light. That's cute. That's, cute, that's a very clever that's answer, because the Statue of Liberty you stands there, you see, with the torch in her <laughs> hand, and he said, night light there. Will you pay attention and show and tell here? No, 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 no. Yes, it's show and tell time. Well, you know the Statue of Liberty has a very fine point on the end of the light. And this is right. very tacky, because you only do it in the privacy of your boudoir. <laughs> Oh. Listen, I, I don't think we want to see this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, show it. It's just a toothpick. A toothpick. Oh, all right. All right. Richard? I just thought if uh, Jolly Green Giant used the Statue of Liberty as a girlfriend and attacked her, would that be... <laughs> statuary rape? <laughs> Because we have a very good lawyer here the, for the Green Giant. Well, anyway, I put nightlight. Nightlight. All right. Hello there, Fanny. Do you have any idea what it's like to be last? Yes. <laughs> All the good stuff is gone. Oh, yeah. I want you to remember everything she said, and I said toothpick. Toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we do, Fanny. So you got one match with that, Michael. We'll get to your question, but first we've got to get to this, and then you hurry right back now. Today's consolation prizes are Tastemaker's elegant double sheets, pillowcases, and towels in their fashionable Sheraton pattern, Tastemaker. Quality and design for the American home. And four gallons of True Test Supreme interior latex paint, lasting beauty in house and garden decorator colors, exclusively from True Value Hardware Stores. And a great taste treat, Fifth Avenue Candy Bars, luscious milk, chocolate, and almonds. Fifth Avenue, one of America's favorite butter bars. Sure as my name is Mike Blank, Match Game 74, I'll be back in a minute. One to nothing in the middle of round one. Let's finish the round and see how it ends up. Ready, Donna? Ready. Have you cooled down a little bit? Uh, a little bit. Okay, I here have. we go. You haven't cooled no. down? All right, I'll stand a little closer to you. That'll cool her down in a hurry, honey. <laughs> Larry got so hungry, he ran his blank through the meat grinder and made a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Don't think too hard, Ron. Larry got so hungry, he ran his blank through the meat grinder and made a hamburger. All right. Remember, at the end of the show, I get to draw a mustache on you. Right. She'll do anything for a job, won't she? Right. Well, not anything. Now, John, it's up to you. Larry got so hungry, he ran his blank through the meat grinder and made a hamburger. His hand. His hand. That must have smarted a little. Ron, what'd you say? Well, that wouldn't be a hamburger, that'd be a handburger. <laughs> and I figured I was going for real lunch meats and things, and his tongue. His Ooh. tongue. Oh, oh that well, must have hurt even more. Do you have a tongue more. sandwich? Yeah. Yeah. wrong. T-O-U-N-G-E? T-O-N-U. Yeah. Well, T-O-N-U, too. Yeah. You're both yeah. wrong, you dummy. <laughs> Come on, Brett, show us your car. Oh, sweetheart, he ran his arm all the way up to his shoulder. Oh, <laughs> hands and arm do not match, so Charles... Bust, bust his you. tie. Ooh. His tie. <laughs> Made hamburger out of his tie. I can see how that can happen. What did you say? Well, he was so mad. He yep. took his hand and he made it into a fist. Yep. And the fist went through and I put or hand. Fist or hand. Is that okay? There is amen. Right. Score is tied one to one. <laughs> Larry got so hungry, he ran his blank through the meat grinder and made a hamburger. What do you say to that? She's such a schmarmy chick. Schmarmy? Looks, looks at the director and said, I, I put fist her hand. Is that all right, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go start. <laughs> hand. Hand. There's another one for you. Is that all right? Yeah, hand is okay. What do you say, Fanny? This is the cruelest, bloodiest. Oh, that's true. Yeah. No, that's a hands, mean bunch. Tongues. I, the obvious thing is dog. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm calling Betty White. That's and too Barbie bad. Bitch. Yeah. I love that. that. I'm calling Betty in the morning. No. <laughs> okay. Now, we'll push a button, go to round two, and ask uh, Michael to make a choice. It's two to one in favor of the champ, Michael. Go. I'll stick with A. A is what he wants. Last time you matched Brett, so Brett, you do not participate. Oh, I'm mad. I wanted to get, to get on the side of my new best friend. <laughs> when the Godfather goes skin diving, he doesn't fill his scuba tanks with air. He fills them with blank. <laughs> when the Godfather goes skin diving, he doesn't fill his scuba tanks with air. He fills them with blank. Oh, boy, I'm glad I don't have to answer that one. Well, this is an easy one, I That's think. That's what you said about the last one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's one. He's finished. Charles is finished. All set. <laughs> oh, you're changing it, Charles. <laughs> show is over, I'm going to look like Cass Elliot. <laughs> You're eating again. Okay. Ready, Charles? Make up your mind now, Charles. Make a decision. Okay. Now, Michael, when the Godfather goes skin diving, he doesn't fill his scuba tanks with air, he fills them with... How about... Money. With what? With money. With money? Oh, yeah. you like money? They're owing you, Michael. I don't think you're gonna get any money out of these kooks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we get out of these kooks. Ron? You know, Michael, after all these years, you come to me and, uh, <laughs> and you say, Godfather, you wind up in cement. That's <laughs> it. Cement. That's it. Money. Yeah. No. What do you say, Charles? <laughs> you know how many listeners we still have? <laughs> <laughs> I said sangue, which means blood in Italian. Okay. All right. Does it make a bit of blood sandwich? Okay. What oh. did you think of? Well, what did I think of? The obvious. What? If he's Italiano. Italiano. You mean wine. Vino. In vino veritas. What do you say? She showed off like she matched him. Excuse me a second. Did you? I'm sorry, Michael. Huckleberry Dillinger's let loose again. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Good Lord, you should be back in the tank. Uh, he doesn't fill his scuba tanks with air, he fills them with... Spaghetti sauce. Spaghetti sauce. All right, now you've got to match Fanny to stay in the game, Michael. Fanny, may we see you? Money is what he's looking for. What is he looking for? Money. 
I put spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti. Donna wins again. Come on down, Donna. a short meeting. You're a splendid fellow. We've got a gift for you. Many thanks for being with us here on well, Match Game you. 74. Michael Hadley, good luck in your medical career. Now, Donna, you've been here before. You know how this goes very well, don't you? Right. Yeah. Now, you know you're up to 11,900. You got a chance at an over 5,000 here again. And shall we begin? Okay. <coughs> we polled a recent studio audience and we got their best response to this. <laughs> Tight blank. Now, you know how the answers go. 500, 250, and 100. Which celebrities you want a little help from? Joanne. Tightwad. Tightwad. There's one. Richard. Uh, Tightrope. Tightrope. Charles. Tight collar. <laughs> Tight collar. <laughs> I'll buy that, honey. <laughs> Tight collar. So you've got tight collar, tight wad, and tight rope. You may choose one of those or give us one of your own. What do you want to do? Tight rope. Tight rope it is. That's what we're looking for. Let's find out if it is up there. First, may we see the $100 response? Tight pants. I didn't even know you were on the show that day, Joanne. Okay. Still looking for tight rope. May we see the $250 response? Tight rope. Congratulations. All right. Okay, so that's $250 you've got, and I guess we've got to stop right here and now, don't we, for this message. So you stand by. What? Oh, you want to see what's under the 500? No, oh, I thought you wanted to save that for after the commercial. Well, I want to save it for after the commercial. You want to see it now? Oh, all right. Well, let's show it now. Here's the $500 tight collar. Is that what it is? No. Tight collar. Okay, now uh, we've got to go to this message and then you come back. Now. Tune in, turn on, and blank out. You were all splendid, and I thank you from the you, bottom of my heart. You were just grand. You, oh, you forgot to do it, though. You can do the mustache. mustache. Gene Rayburn from Match Game 74 asked me to join us. Next time, we have a good This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 74, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales next. This is Match Game 74, production number 0199. Hmm. Air date to be announced, VTR at 41574, take one. Get ready to match the stars. Ron Masak, Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley, Joanne Flood, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Fly as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Rayburn. Thank you for joining us here, one and all. Nice to have you with us. Everybody okay? Richard, yeah. fine. You've got Thank a mustache. You. The, you paint, does she paint that on you? Yeah. Mm. Mm. She did one to me yesterday. <laughs> Boy, it sure was hard getting off. Was it hard to get off? There, hurt smartly. We tried uh, lighter fluid and all kinds of acetone. Uh, that's, that's shaved. This is indelible. <laughs> you realize this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all is forgiven. Let's say hello to our champ, Donna Linnell. I want to point out to all assembled and to Donna especially that uh, she's ready to have a go at the head to head. She'll be playing for $2,500. And if she is successful in that, uh, she will be the new all-time money winner wow. here on Match Game 74 by over $50. You'll be $50 over the previous high money it. winner. So, good luck to you, Donna. We'll begin that head-to-head -head match right after we pass along this message of interest. Okay, are you ready? 
Ready. All right, here we go. You won the $250. That means you are now playing for 10 times that amount or $2,500. Remember, you've got to match one celebrity head to head and it's time to choose one. Joanne. Okay, Joanne, you get ready to write and Donna will face me. Here's the $2,500 question. Blank stop, S-T-O-P. <laughs> Okay, she's finished. Now, what do you put in that blank in order to match Joanne? Blank stop. Pit stop. Pit stop. You like that answer? A lot of people in the audience like that answer. Let's find out now. For $2,500, Joanne, may we see your response? Oh, my. The only time to stop that I know is a bus stop. Bus stop. That's a very I'm good sorry, answer. Donna. Do you uh, know of anybody who drives racing cars? No. Pit stop is a racing car yeah, driver's yeah. term, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but I yeah. don't know anybody. Are you a racing car buff? No. Well, what the heck did you say it for? <laughs> it's the first thing that popped into my head. First thing that popped into your head. Well, that's what we tell you here. Trust your first judgment and it usually works for you. Stop. That's uh, the exception that proves the rule. Now, Donna, you uh, picked up another 250. You're up to $12,150. You're going to meet another player. So let's welcome Pat Lab. Would you like to step up on the merry-go-round, please? Pat, you know, Donna. Pat Lau, is that the way you say your yes. name? Pat Lau. Okay. How are you? I'm fine. Good. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. I live in San Gabriel with my husband and three children, and I like to ski, and I'm trying to learn to play tennis. How is that going? It's a well, difficult... Well, I'm a perennial lesson taker. Yeah. I never play. I just take lessons. Well, you... <laughs> You gotta play a lot in know, order to maintain and get some proficiency going there. <laughs> All right, are you ready, Pat? Yes. I'll push a button and reveal these two questions, ask you the challenger to make a selection. I think A. All right, A. Brand new game, here we go. The Martian said to the galloping gourmet, this is the most beautiful woman I ever saw. And the galloping gourmet said, that's no woman, that's my blank. <laughs> You run that up the flagpole again. All right, one more time for you, Charles. The Martian said to the galloping gourmet, this is the most beautiful woman I ever saw. And the galloping gourmet said, that's no woman, that's my bling. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? I love you with a rash. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't have a rash. Yeah, but it stings a he lot, will, though. Honey, don't I want worry. you to suffer a lot in there. Okay, upper tier is ready and the lower tier is ready. So we'll call on Pat here. The Martian said to the galloping gourmet, this is the most beautiful woman I ever saw. And the galloping gourmet said, that's no woman, that's my... Wife. <laughs> that's no woman, that's my wife. Okay, her answer is wife. What do you say, Ron? I wish I said wife or something. I said, that's no, I don't even know if I spelled it right, but that's no woman, that's my dessert. My dessert. Yes. Some tasty dish there. All Watch right. Cook. Rather suggestive. Is that Brett, what do you say? <laughs> I say his mother-in-law made that shirt, and after the way he spelled dessert, she's gone off him for life. That's a beautiful shirt. Isn't that a pretty shirt? Thank yes, you. very attractive. Mother-in-law don't like you no more. I wrote desert. <laughs> what did you I have? I said moose, as in desert. Moose. <laughs> you know how to spell mouse. I think everybody missed moose, the point M -O -U -S -S -E, here. M-O-U-S-S-E, moose, as yeah. in chocolate moose, coffee yeah. moose. Yeah, you missed the point, too. All right, Charles, oh. what did you say? A cucumber moose is lovely on a cold afternoon. <laughs> I said pot. 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 That's my pot. No one got it. No one, no one gets it. I don't know. You can't say it. Go ahead, yeah. Well, everyone knows when you learn how to cook and you become a gourmet, you cook souffles. Oh. I'm sorry, but Maybe I missed the point of the question. Right. I don't know. Read the question no, no, again. I was thinking Please. the Martian said to the galloping gourmet, this is the most beautiful woman I ever saw. And the galloping gourmet said, that's no woman, that's my refrigerator. No. That's no. not. Oh. Yeah. Her answer is the best. Actually, what is the was? Who? <laughs> what? That no woman, that my jello mold. <laughs> And let that be a lesson to you. She only takes lessons. All right, Fanny, this is uh, one time when it may not be a disadvantage to be last. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, I put, that's no uh, woman, that's my stuffed turkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Wasn't that a rotten that question? <laughs> Okay, so it's none for you and none for me and none for them, and this for you, so watch carefully. All right, here we go. Now, we're going to finish this round, and we've got this for you. Are you ready for us? Okay. Okay, here we go. As soon as you walk into Pete's living room, you know he's an airline pilot because he has blanks on his couch. <laughs> You're not too thrilled with that, are you, audience? Uh, I thought it was interesting. As soon as you walk into Pete's living room, you know he's an airline pilot because he has blanks on his couch. <laughs> Certainly you can change. Jay, you may change, change, change your mind. Do it quickly, though. All right, ready here. Charles ready, Brett's ready, and Ron is ready, right? Okay. Now, Donna. As soon as you walk into Pete's living room, you know he's an airline pilot because he has blanks on his couch. Wings. Wings. <laughs> Is this the girl who won $12,150 who tells me wings on a couch? Ron, what do you say? You know how dumb an answer I thought that was, Donna? That's the one I changed. I, no said, I, I said I've been married so long that I, who would ever put... You mean I, you wrote wings and you threw it away? Yeah, but I put Stuart Eye because he was a single pilot. Oh, Stuart Eye. Yeah. Okay. Brett? Well, I was thinking about Charles's teeth and I put caps. <laughs> caps on his couch? You know... You know oh, the airline uh, caps. Oh, it. yes. Right. I don't feel so Yes, dumb. sir. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Charles? I, of course, am perfect. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, he he is, is, too, you know. Oh, I know he is. He slays me. How about you? Are you oh, a perfect, perfect person? I'm perfect, too. Yes. But I don't correspond. I'm sorry. I put stews, which is short for stewardess. All right. <laughs> Steward eye. Right. right. Exactly. And I'm you, sir, what did you put? I'm going to lynch her if it's There's the last like thing I ever do. I'm going to lynch her if it's the last thing I ever do. Steward eye. Nothing like a short steward eye. Fanny. She's yeah. looking for the word wings. I know she is. You can tell he's an air pilot, air, airline pilot because he has blanks on his couch. What I do you say? I wanted to say seat numbers. But I said stewardess along with my stewardess. three friends. Stewardess. Apparently that's what everybody thought and said. Okay, now let's go to round two, shall we? There are the questions. Pat, would you make a selection? Well, I guess I'll try A again. You want to try A again? Wasn't too good to you last time, was it? Let's see how we do this time. At the South Pole... It is against the law for a man to blank a penguin. <laughs> At the South Pole. For a man to blank a penguin. It's against the law for a man to blank a penguin. I don't know how that is on the North Pole, but this is the way it is at the South Pole. <laughs> There are no penguins at the North Pole, I guess. Oh, I guess this is. The South Pole, this is a lot of penguins at the South Pole. <laughs> They're Southern, right. Southern. Right. Charles, you ready? Okay. You had a little trouble with that, right? Okay, here we go. Pat, at the South Pole, it is against the law for a man to blank a penguin. Right. Date a penguin. Date a penguin. She says there's a law on the South Pole that says you can't date no penguins. And Ron's talking to himself. Well, I was thinking about the South Pole and dates, and when you go on a date with a penguin, you're not allowed to rub noses. It's against the law to rub noses with a penguin. They don't kiss out there, folks. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Brett? Have you ever been there, dear? Yeah. Well, actually, they can date them, but they must not marry. Can't marry. Is that, uh, that uh, no match there? Okay, okay. Thank you, Mom. Kiss right. a penguin. Charles says kiss. kiss a penguin. Gee, you're getting close, but uh, so far, no, <laughs> no match. Let's see what you've got. I'm very humane. I said shoot. Shoot. Against the law to shoot a penguin. Yes. Good straight answer. Richard? It's against the law. Yes. To love a penguin. <laughs> to love a penguin. Uh oh. Pat, you're gonna have to match Fanny to stay in the game. I said it was against the law to eat a penguin. All right. Donna wins another game. Congratulations. Sorry, Pat. It's a real pleasure meeting you. You're a lovely Thank lady, you. and we've got a gift for you, together with our thanks for being with us at Match fun. Game 74. Pat Lau. Yeah,
here we go again, Donna. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, we polled a recent studio audience, got their best response to this. Blank Bailey. You know, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 to you if you match it. If you match the next one, $250, and the bottom one, $100. Whom do you want? Joanne. Pearl. Pearl Bailey, she said. Okay. Richard. Gentleman who won't come home, Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey. Won't come home, Bill Bailey. Charles. Charles. Ringling Brothers, Barnum and. <laughs> <laughs> And if, they, if you can get your mustache off, they can get all of that on that first one at the bottom. That's right. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Oh, all right. Kidding. Now, you got Ringling Brothers Barnum and, you've got <laughs> Pearl, and you've got <laughs> Bill. Whom do you choose? Pearl. You choose Pearl Bailey. Okay, that's Joanne's answer, and one we're looking for. We'll find out if it's up there right now. First, may we see the $100 response? Beetle Bailey. Have I ever lied to you before? No. Is that what you thought of? Beetle Bailey. He okay. Said Beetle Bailey, what and I said, position did he play? <laughs> Here we go. Looking for the answer, Pearl Bailey. May we see the two hundred fifty dollar response? Pearl Bailey, it is. Congratulations. Okay, so you've picked up another $250, and before we go on here, let's find out what's under the $500 response. What do you think? Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey finally did come home. All right, now you've got the 250. That means you're playing again for 10 times that amount, or... Bing. $2,500. Please keep your bings going here, because he may forget back there. Now, whom do you choose? Joanne. All right, Joanne, you get ready to write, and here we go again. $2,500. Chow blank. That's C-H-O-W blank. Chow blank. Okay, now, she's answered hers, and uh, we need a response from you. And the way you think we'll match her, what do you say? Chow Maine. Chow Maine. Okay. If you do match her, I guess you will be the new uh, high money winner here for $2,500. Joanne, may we see your response? Chinese food. I always eat chop suey. Chop suey? But I put Maine. Chow Maine! is a new all-time high money winner. You stand right here, and uh, we'll come back to you right after this message. Today's Constellation Prize is our Lady Schick Lasting Curls Hair Setter, the quick way to longer lasting curls. Beautifying this moisturizes your hair while setting from Schick. And skin care products from Baum Bar. Cocoa butter, vitamin E, wheat germ, lotion and oil. Nail grow for problem nails. Baum Bar for lovelier skin. And a great taste treat. Fifth Avenue Candy Bars. Luscious milk, chocolate and almonds. Fifth Avenue, one of America's favorite butter bars. Try to fill in the next blank on Match Game 74 in a minute. We're ready to play a new game, and to do that, we're pleased to present a new player. Here's Mary Strauss. Hello, Mary. Hi. You know, Donna? Yes. Tell us the story of Mary Strauss. <laughs> well, I have two little girls, and I'm married, and he's in the audience. And they're right. two and three years old. Okay. Are you ready for this? No. <laughs> no? I'm nervous. Take a deep breath, Mary. Yeah. See, now you're not nervous. I'll push a button and we'll get right to it and ask you to make a selection. Which B. one do you want? B. Okay, here we go. New game. As they led Frankie to the electric chair, <laughs> the warden asked him for his last request. And Frankie said... I know. <laughs> no, you don't know. Frankie said, Warden, could you hold my blank? <laughs> I thought it was going to be that old song, Tell Laura I Love Her. 
All right. Ready over here? Philip. Me. Warden, could you hold my... Okay, now we're all set. Mary Strauss, as they led Frankie to the electric chair, the warden asked him for his last request, and Frankie said, Warden, could you hold my... Hand. Hand. <laughs> Take my hand. What? You dirty rat. Yeah, what? Did he hold his hand? He certainly did. Hold his hand. There's one hand for you, Mary. Brett? Take my hand. <laughs> All right, you're rolling now, Mary. Charles? One good hand is oh. Okay. Could you hold my seat for me, Warden? I'll be right back. What no, did you say? Tell Laura I love her. Tell Laura I love her. All right. Joey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <hand>. <laughs> okay. To the guy in the chair, any advice? He said, yeah, don't sit down. Oh. Hand. Okay. And Fanny, do you make it unanimous? First-round question in a long time. I mean, that's most unusual. You got your work cut out for you. You'll have two chances to catch up to her. She's matched everyone. Now this. The surgeon trimmed his front hedge to look like a giant blank. The surgeon trimmed his front hedge to look like a giant blank. The surgeon. <laughs> Don't worry. He's okay. You leave him alone now. Love your mother-in-law's shirt. <laughs> I love your mother-in-law. I certainly hope so. Okay, now we're all set. Donna, we call on you. The surgeon trimmed his front hedge to look like a giant... Stethoscope. Stethoscope. That would be a most ambitious... <laughs> Topiary project. What do you say, Donna? If I couldn't spell dessert, how am I going to spell stethoscope? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of love thoughts and Valentine's Day. I put a heart. Heart. Yes. Okay. Not a bad idea, Brett. I, <laughs> darling, they like to hack people to death. Surgeons. <laughs> no offense, doctor. Scalpel. Scalpel. That would be good. Charles. No, they just like to hack some people. <laughs> Scalpel. Scalpel it is. All right. She's looking for a stethoscope. Why? The surgeon trimmed his front hedge to look like a giant stethoscope, she says. What do you say? Oh, I said an operating table. Oh, that would be, yeah. Oh, that could be done. Yes. Uh, that's indeed. I thought one. it was very good, didn't yes, you? Yes, quite good. I thought it was splendid. Oh, no. <laughs> very, very nice. Very nice. What do you say, Richard? Uh, a giant tonsil. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. Isn't that a good one, Fanny? What do you say, Fan? Tonsil. It was a kidney. Kidney. <laughs> so, uh, six to nothing is the score at the end of round one here. And now we've got to stop and do a little business. And then you hurry right back and see what happens. Okay, ladies, time is up. We finished round one. It's six to nothing. Favor the challenger. You got your work cut out for you. And next time, you'll start cutting out. <laughs> What's the name of your movie of the week? It's called Archer. And who's going to be on that? Well, it's a pilot for Peter Graves, and they have a very unique, outstanding cast like Dean, Dean, Dame Judith Anderson and Celeste Holmes and Jack Klugman. Don't you love the way she gives him last billing? I didn't give him last billing at all. He was one, terrific. Two and Jim Hutton. <laughs> Three. Two two May six. We'll look forward to seeing that. Very good. And what's the name of your movie again? Uh, the one that's going to start production in July is called The Sons of Erin. What's that? Yeah. Mean? And it's about an Irish family. And you and wrote it and you're and you're starring in it. I'm gonna be one of yeah. the five. Now listen, you've yes. been on my show. Yes. Now what about uh Gene, I've seen your work and with a mustache but okay. not yeah, sure. No. Listen, I'm only I'll kidding. No, I can listen. Can you hold the range? Mustache. Gene Redmond from Match Game 74. Yeah. Join us I next time. Thank you. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 74. A Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales next over most of these CBS stations.
Match game 74, production number 0246, and it's take one. Get ready to match the star. Maury Amsterdam. Brett Summer. George Kirby. Joanne Kluge. Richard Dawson. And Betty White. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Redder. Hey, thanks, Pat. Hello, Jerry Olsen. Thank you, thanks for joining us here. <laughs> Don't do it if it hurts, Richard. How are you? How's everybody? Terrific. 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 Yeah, nice, nice to see, see you again. like this once in a while. Not too Listen, well, everyone. Uh, you're not too well? No, I Betty. Just oh, well. No, just, I'm just, sorry. It's all right. Are you not well? No, I'm all right. I just Is there feel something we can do for you? No, I just feel a little blue. Yeah. Good Listen, press. shall we raise your spirits? No, don't you touch. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make you feel better? Yes. Good. <laughs> How do you feel, George? Hey, listen, fine, we want to welcome fine. the new kid on the block, George Kirby. Hey, hey. Isn't he a melody in pink? He's a melody in pink. If you don't have color television, you really ought to see that. Looks, like, a pool of Looks like an ad for a bowl of borscht. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly wait for tomorrow. Did you bring a lot of those, George? Oh, yes. Good. All right. Get robbed a float in the parade. How are you? <laughs> Good. What, my tie is perfect? Okay, Mom. Ooh. I fixed that oh, before we went on the air. Ride. She yeah. used to work for a funeral director. Yeah. She does it okay. very well. <laughs> Doesn't he look natural? All right, all right. I'll do the whole show like this. My <laughs> tie won't get crooked. There. All right, here we go. Let's say hello to our two celebrity, our two guy, uh, uh, whoever you are, Kendra Plummer and Jack Holder. <laughs> all right, Kendra. Um, what is that? That's a meatless fish. She's got a meatless fish on her lapel, she says. <laughs> Kendra's a current champ. She's won $5,600. Just one yes. game. She went all the way and did a perfect thing there. And she's very happy about that, aren't you? Ecstatic. <laughs> really? What plans do you have for that money, Kendra? Um, well, I hope to give us a better start when we get back east. Okay. And Jack Holder is challenging her. He uh, has had his first round question and did pretty well with it. Captured half of the celebrities with three matches. And we're in the middle of round one, and we've got a first round question for you, Kendra. Coming up right after you, have a look at these messages. Here we go. I'll push his button, and nothing happens. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Don't push a button, and something happens. All right, Kendra, this is your question. Everybody plays. Here's a little riddle for you. What's big and green and covered with fuzz? The answer, the jolly green blank. <laughs> big and green and covered with fuzz. The answer is the jolly green blank. Now you think about that, Kendra, while they're writing their answers here. Big and green, big and, green and covered with fuzz. It's the jolly green... <laughs> <laughs> That's the silliest thing. It is silly. I know it. <laughs> Upper tier is ready. Um, the first time this is ever been. Come on, Richard. <laughs> oh, drink your beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we expect it from Joanne Flew. She hasn't learned how to write yet. No. <laughs> now, Kendra, the little real, what's big and green and covered with fuzz? The answer, the jolly green. All I can think of is buzz. <laughs> the jolly green buzz? <laughs> the, only thing that rhymes the money went to her head, folks. The money went to her head is what buzz. happened. Okay, the Jolly Green buzz is what she says. Let's see if anybody well, that's else. That's what does. she said, but I said the Jolly Green idiot. Yeah. <laughs> buzz. Okay. Brett? It's a, what is a buzz? I don't know. The Jolly I know Green what a buzz, buzz just, on is, <laughs> but I don't know what a buzz is. I guess she had a rhyme idea there. Yeah. But this may sound like it's not true, but it's a dead truth. It is. Because you know, I was raised in the country, and I ain't come from Maine. Yeah. Hickory nuts, but when you take them off a tree, they have a little green thing around them, and yeah. they're all fucking. Right. Well, that's all right for you to say, but it happens to be accurate information. It is. I am. I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Learn a little something.
something that every day here on Match Game 74, <laughs> folks. There, George. I don't know what farm you come up from, but the farm I come up from, it would be a a peach, peach. a green peach, a green a, peach, a big a green peach. A peach is as smooth as a baby's blank. When no, 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 no. The peaches I know are all fuzzy. Fuzzy, fuzzy. Am I listening? Let's stop this now, right now. That's enough of that. Show us your answer. <laughs> I have a very obvious answer because something that's covered with green has to be in the water. So I put. Moss <laughs> 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 rock. Moss rock. <laughs> I tried to put covered, you yeah. know, a moss covered moss rock. Moss covered rock. But I thought it would be too many words. The jolly yeah. green moss the, rock. The jolly yeah. green <laughs> moss rock. Yeah. No, I like the shine of it. Yes, that. it's great. I like it. You've been away a long time, I haven't you? have to get thinking That's like right. this. It's very okay. weird. <laughs> Richard, what say you? I thought George's answer was very good. Big and green and covered with fuzz? Yeah, I thought it was very You know how to make a peach cordial? No. Blow it in her ear. <laughs> <laughs> I said peach. You said peach, yes. too. All right. No buzzes over here. Betty? Jolly Green Fuzz, at first I thought, was a good-natured Irish policeman, but it isn't. It's, it is. It's a peach. It's a peach. That seems to be the answer. Okay. Now we go to round two here and ask Jack to make a selection. Don't B. Right. He I wants B. Match. Well, in the first round, you this here, position thanks. was matched. <laughs> that position was matched, and so was that. I so the three of you will not proceed to the They were sitting right back like this. Right. Right. Because of the energy shortage, uh -huh. instead of taking Scarface to the electric chair, they made him blank on the freeway. <laughs> Now uh, you really regret not playing this game, though. I do, boy. I guess George and Maury are ready. Yep. Uh, okay. No, no. <laughs> We're all yeah. set here for Jack Hall. Because of the energy shortage, instead of taking Scarface to the electric chair, they made him blank on the freeway. Drive. I just came. Drive. Down it. <laughs> What'd you say? Drive. I just came down it. Oh, you just came down the freeway. It was pretty risky, was it? Right. They made him drive on the freeway, he said. Maury, what, what do you I would say? Have said. Well, according to I statistics, would... a man is knocked down by a car every ten minutes. Yeah. I figured this guy must be made of iron. <laughs> by now, that's right. <laughs> but now I said they made him walk blindfolded on the freeway. Walk blindfolded on the freeway. Does not match drive. George? Well, I said lay down on the freeway. Lay down on the freeway. <laughs> I don't do it every time. Lay down and drive. Betty, what do you say? I said drive like a streak on the freeway. Streak. Okay, so Jack, no, you stay at three, and you've got a question coming up in a moment or so, but right now we've got a message for you, and this is it. That's right. All right, we're all set to go here and finish this game. Uh, Kendra, three matches to tie, four to win. And listen carefully now. This is a question about Dumb Dora. Dumb Dora was so dumb. How dumb was she? <clears throat> she was so dumb, the first time she was on an ocean liner, she thought the porthole was a blank. <laughs> That's how dumb Dumb Dora was. You asked, and I told you. <laughs> dumb Dora was so, so dumb. dumb. When she got into a cab, they left a bacon sign up. <laughs> <laughs> she was on an ocean liner. She thought the porthole was a blank. Oh, there are a couple of beautiful answers to this. I can think of two great ones. Don't two? Don't you? I want that one. Yeah. Daddy, you know you, we haven't had you here for a long time. We've missed you, but would you just thank you? <laughs> all right. We're all set now. And we'll ask Kendra. Dumb Dora was so dumb, the first time she was on an ocean liner, she thought the porthole was a... Picture. A picture. You're getting groans from the audience, Kendra. Again. They're groaning you two times in a row there. Oh. That could be bad. I don't know. We'll find out. A picture. That hadn't occurred to me. Maury, what'd you say? I'm very happy it hadn't occurred to you. But <laughs> fortunately, it hadn't occurred to me either. What did it occur to you? I figured because it happened to me. I thought it was a washing machine. Yeah, that was a good answer. You know those washing machines with the glass in it with the clothes tumbling around? Don't you think that's a good answer? What do you say there, lady? I never have with washed With the fake hair clothes. on your head? You've never washed clothes. I don't wash only by hand. I have an old scrub board. I just put uh, them out sure there in my do. backyard and throw them in my pool. <laughs> <laughs> I think Hendra's gone bonkers. Yes, she has. The money went to her head. <laughs> I said John's seat looks just like a John's seat. 
occurred to me either, George. I got news for you. When I went overseas uh, in the Army, I'll never forget, I got caught up on deck, and I thought it was uh, a John. You thought it was a John? Okay. All right, Kendra, you got a match with three remaining celebrities to stay in the game, and let's see what happens here. We'll begin with you, madam. Well, I'm as zonkers as Kendra did, because the only thing I could think of was something that was round, and I said a donut. A donut. <laughs> All right, so Jack Hager wins the game. got to say goodbye to this lady, but uh, she's not going to be very sad as she goes because she, as she goes, she goes with $5,600. Thank you, Kendra Plummer. Thank you. <laughs> and she's gone. You can stop waving now, folks. But thank you. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. Has she left, Jim? No, she has. <laughs> I thought the studio was leaving the building. <laughs> All right, now, here we've got Jack Holder up here, his first go at the big money super match. You ready? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, too. Okay. Uh, Jack, we polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank stack. Oh. Uh, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, it's $250. The third, $100. Oh, that's Which celebrities would you like to get a little assist from? Richard Dawson. Richard Dawson, what do you say? Uh... Smokestack. Smokestack is what he says. Do you like Betty? Betty? Uh, haystack. Haystack. All right, we've got two, Jack. And Maury. Smokestack. It, it's already been it's said, hasn't it? Dear. Another smokestack. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you, you seen those chimneys smoke with two smokestacks? <laughs> Hat can rack. You, can you, think of, you can't think of another one. Okay. Stack. So. Bob stack. You've got two stacks there, smoke stack and hay stack. You can choose one of those as the answer, as we call for one now, or think of one of your own, Jack. What do you want to do? Smoke stack. You want to choose smoke stack and hope that's under the $500 response. Huh? All right, we'll find out if it's up there right now, and if so, where. First, may we see the $100 response? Oh, it is right off the bat. Congratulations, Jack. I'm curious to see. A haystack's got to be up there someplace, doesn't it? You think it's the next one? And Robert Stack, that ought to be there. What do you think is under the next one? Oh, Robert Stack! Well, let's see the 250, shall we? Robert Stack is there. He was hiding under the haystack, which is probably under the $500 response, wouldn't you say? Yeah. There you go. Okay. That was Betty uh, White's answer, and it was a good one. You've got the 100, now you play for 10 times that amount, or $1,000. To collect, you've got to match one celebrity, and it's time to choose one now. I'll take it with Betty. <laughs> oh. All right. He's got confidence in you at last. You see, you proved you were a winner there. And now, you'll face me, Jack, and Betty will write a response to this. Blank rabbit. Blank rabbit. Blank rabbit. Finished. Okay, now, what answer would you come up with, Jack, in order to match Betty White and filling in that blank? Blank rabbit. Jack rabbit. Jack rabbit. <laughs> you've got the audiences with you. If Betty White is with you, you've got it made. Let's find out for $1,000 right now, Betty. I forgot your name was Jack. Jack rabbit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The redhead is screaming her head off there. Is she pregnant? Yes. <laughs> How pregnant is she, Jack? I'm afraid to say right now. All right. Listen, it's only money. Don't let it excite you too much. She's very happy about that, and we're happy for you, too. And we're going to carry on here right at this point, Jack. But first, we've got a message for you, and this is it. All right, we're ready here to carry on and start a brand new game. To do that, we're very pleased to present a new player. Let's welcome Rose Carter. How are you, Rose? You know, Jack? We will now hear the Rose Carter story. Okay. Rose it's Carter. short. Is it short? <laughs> yes. Why? I, well... 
Tell us. Because I am. Oh. <laughs> I live in Glendora. I'm a housewife, and I have two little boys, Patrick and Gregory. All right. You're happy That's about that, are you? Very. We're happy about that, too. Good luck to you, Rose. Shall Thank we begin? You. Yes. All right. I'll push a button and ask you to make a selection. B, please. B. Brand new game. Here we go. Little Red Riding Hood <laughs> said to the policeman, I'm looking for my grandmother. She's a sweet little old lady with great big eyes and a great big mouth, and she looks a lot like blank. <laughs> I missed something. No. It's uh, Little Red Riding Hood said to the policeman, I'm looking for my grandmother. She's a sweet little lady with great big eyes and a great big mouth, and she looks a lot like blank. Yeah, they're very slow up there. Not me. Not me. I'm so fast. scared. Okay. Everybody I'm, ready up there? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. ready. You stutter, too. <laughs> now let's see what Rose Carter has to say about this. Little old lady with great big eyes and a great big mouth, and she looks a lot like... Oh, uh, Martha Ray. <laughs> he rehearsed your groaning, eh? Did you? This is the best groaning audience we've ever had, isn't it? <laughs> Martha Ray is your answer, eh? Let's hear one more groan for Rose Carter there. Okay. I think they're trying to tell you something, Rose. <laughs> Maury, Martha Ray's her answer. What's yours? I think I came up with just as good a one. Really? Yes. A hungry camel. <laughs> How about a little low for Maury, though? Oh. Okay. Oh. Brett? <laughs> I've only one thing to say. I was not the only person who did not understand that question. Obviously. <laughs> I said, look like a wolf. See? They're applauding the hissing. No, they're applauding you. That's the answer. George. Well, I could just picture her standing there saying, she looks like this in the big eyes, and she looks just like me. Like me? <laughs> A little familial resemblance there. What do you say, Joanne? Well, he was on the right line. He said it was the wrong object of a preposition. I said, like you. Like you. <laughs> Me and you ain't a preposition, Me honey. It's a pronoun. It's <laughs> object of. Object, object of. Oh, shut up. <laughs> it's a female <laughs> sheep. <laughs> Would you read the question again, please? The question is, I'm looking for my grandmother. She's a sweet little old lady with great big eyes and a great big mouth, and she looks a lot like... Brett. <laughs> but I haven't been well. I know. <laughs> she had another woman with her. That's 19 professional fights, you know. <laughs> don't fiddle around with him. Do you fiddle around with him? No, oh, you don't fiddle no, around with no, no, no. She doesn't even fiddle around with Alan Waddle. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, Betty White, after all of that uh, huzzah, you've got to show us your answer. I, I bet you had Martha wish, Ray. Martha Ray was the answer Martha Ray. that Rose I did Carter not. came up with. Him. And no. she looks a lot like Lassie. Like Lassie. 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 I said Tarzan didn't have a flag. Oh, well, I never said he did. <laughs> what kind of argument is that? So let's get on with it. Oh, all right. That's what I thought. I thought so, he wore it. <laughs> so when he marched in the jungle parade, he waved a star-spangled blank. <laughs> That's why he walked around going, oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, the top row's ready and the bottom row's ready. Just put it right in the slot there and let's get on. Okay, Jack Holder. Tarzan didn't have a flag, so when he marched in the jungle parade, he waved a star-spangled... Banana. Banana. <laughs> There's something yeah. euphorious about that yeah, answer. I like that better than mine. What's I yours? Said loin cloth. Loin cloth. Yeah. What did you say? Well, I actually think there is only one answer, isn't there? I don't think it's banana, dear. What is A that? Loin cloth. Loin cloth. George? 
I've been to the jungle and I know he waves a loincloth. He does wave a loincloth. Well, I don't know how he marched. He streaked in the parade, I guess. What do you say, Joanne? <laughs> he wasn't streaking because even though he did wave this, oh, I got myself all in a fuddle. Yeah, what anyway, did you it's just... <laughs> What have you got there? Loincloth. Loincloth. That's four loincloths so far. What do you say, Richard? Well, Joanne said it so eloquently. <laughs> <laughs> loincloth. <laughs> And Betty White. Well, I'm very sorry I don't match Jack, but I'm very happy I don't match the rest of these folk. A leaf. A leaf. A star a leaf. A leaf. Okay. So oh. at the end of round one, we have no score at all. I don't want to say uh, we got a couple of dummies up here, but... <laughs> The first round questions are really very difficult, and uh, you'll see how good they are in the second round, but first we've got to do a little bit of it. Listen, uh, I'm sorry to say we've got to stop right here. I uh, got so carried away, I thought we'd churn right on to round two, but we've got to hold it up here, and we'll finish this game next time we get together. I want to say you are all splendid through this whole miserable mess, well, thank you. and if we you've got the it. guts, you'll show up next time. Uh, <laughs> this is Gene Rayburn for Match Game 74. Join us next time. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 74, a Mark Goodson, Bill Trumpman production. ESN celebrates the life of game show legend Peter Tamarkin with a Press Your Luck Marathon tomorrow at 9 a.m. 8 Central. Peter will be missed by the GSN family as both a colleague and a friend. Thank you, Peter, for your priceless contribution to game shows. Get ready to match the star. Richard Long, <laughs> Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Rudd, <laughs> Joanne Flew, <laughs> Richard Dawson, and Kay Stevens as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now here's the star of Match Game 74, Gene Rayburn. <laughs> Dapper. I feel dapper today. How do you feel? You look I felt dapper earlier. You felt dapper earlier? Felt very good. That's good. What do you have to say? Anything? Scrimshaw. Scrimshaw. That's Ooh. right. Does not You're a very show. observant lady. Yeah. Scrimshaw cufflinks. It's uh, carved whale bones. Or the, whale teeth, I guess. No, it's from the teeth of a sperm whale. And they do this is what the uh, sailors used to do. When they uh -huh. out at sea, they do the Is that what they used to do? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, intellectual uh, information won't hurt you, Brett. <laughs> All right, now let's say hello to our two players here, Chuck White and Kathy Graff. Hello, hey! there, Chuck. Hello. Chuck has won $5,600. And he's being challenged by Kathy in a very formidable manner. She's had her first round question and matched all six celebrities. And his first round question is coming up in a moment or so. You ready for that, Chuck? Yes, sir. Okay. You'll have two shots at it, you know. <coughs> round one and round two well, to get the six. Right. right. Well, all right. First, we've got to do a little business with you. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. All right, Chuck, this is your first round question. Everyone plays. Snow White said, uh -oh. <coughs> Why are you I need some me? privacy. You ever try to blank with seven dwarfs staring at you? <laughs> Snow White said that. She said, I need some privacy. Do you ever try to blank with seven dwarfs staring at you? Richard, there's a furrow in your brow, but you're enjoying it, aren't you? Uh, yes. You're having a good time, aren't you, Richard? Say yes. A furrow around your brow. A furrow around your brow. Ricardo. <laughs> okay, bottom row is ready. Oh, my will... Okay, now we're all set. And we come to Chuck White. Snow White said, I need some privacy. Do you ever try to blank with seven dwarfs staring at you? Make love. Make love? <laughs> oh, Chucky. Really? Person here. Yes. Oh. Snow, Snow White, White, White that involved you're with anybody? She, uh, Snow White, Snow White, fairy godmother. Now. Right. No, Richard, what did you say? Well, I didn't say that. She ain't called Snow White for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what did 
you say, Richard? Well, I got as risque with old Snow White as I could. I said dress. Dress, right. That's a little awkward. Okay, Brett. Well, as you know, I have several children and dogs and various other things in my house, and I said go to the job. You said that. <laughs> okay. Speaking Charles. from my own personal experience. Right, of course. If yes. you know the fairy tale, she doesn't have a John. <laughs> she has an outhouse. Go to the outhouse. All right. Would you like to add a little tone to the show, please? Oh, mine is very pure. Her right? add tone? Mm -hmm. Eat your heart out, Brad. Mine is sleep. Sleep. Mm. Oh. Oh. oh, it's lovely. It's a clean but rotten answer. What do you say? Would you accept sleep in the outhouse? <laughs> I happen to know it's horrible with those little dwarfs running around looking at you when you're trying to bathe. Bathe. Take a with bath. With their clothes on. Yes, that's very you tough. Very good. Right. What do you say there? Oh, I am I'm very fond of the ever-popular Tinkle. Tinkle. <laughs> okay. As in Tinkle Bell. Chuck, you didn't do too well with that one. Now, you get another shot at it in the round two thing. We don't have a round two question for Kathy because she's matched all six celebrities. Mm -hmm. There's no point in doing that. So now you have your choice of A or B. Yes. I'll have A. A. Again, you must match all six to stay in the game. Listen, folks. Nobody knows this. Mm -hmm. But Julia Child, the French chef, yeah. stuffs her blank with marshmallows. <laughs> Oh, love Julia it. Child is Chuck. <laughs> I love Have you seen Julia it. Child? I love it. You haven't? Julia Child uh, does a, a marvelous cooking show on educational television. You ever watch educational television? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> well, take my word for it. Okay. She is the French chef on uh, television. And that's it. Everybody ready over here. So, we'll give it to you one more time. Goes like this. Nobody knows this, but Julia Child, a French chef, stuffs her blank with marshmallows. Has to be bra. Yeah. He said she stuffs her bra with the marshmallows. Is that what he said? Yeah, then she puts it in a 350-degree oven. And it's... <laughs> Oh, and, uh, it's a mess, I tell you. Richard, what do you say? Yeah. Toasted marshmallows. Richard Long. Uh, yes. I said bra, but I think I spelled it wrong. Bra. bra yeah, that's right. Bra. bra okay. <laughs> all right, we have to have five more bras. <clears throat> but I wrote it's bird. It's ten all together. What's that? <laughs> I wrote bird, but I felt it wasn't specific enough, so I changed it to bra. Bra. You're doing okay so far here, Chuck. Got to capture four you more. You stuff your bra, but with popcorn. <laughs> bra. Bra. How would he know? Chuck, that was a very good answer. You got half of them. Now, if you get this half, you got a tie going for you. Hello there, lady. Hi. How are you? Well, very distressed because I thought of bra, and I thought it was a little shaky, so I put turkey. Oh. Turkey. Happy oh. Grafton oh. oh. Husband. Oh. All right. Come on down, Kathy. And we've got $100 for Kathy, and you'll stand by for a moment or so while we bid a sad farewell to Chuck. Well, it's not too sad. You've got, you got $5,600. You got plans for the money? Not yet, but I will. Chuck White. Bye-bye. $56,000. Bye, Bye. Now, you stand by for another moment or so while we talk to uh, the people around the country, and then we'll have a go at the big money, okay? Okay. Lady says she's nervous. Why should you be nervous? I don't know. All right, now you're going to win a lot of money here now. Just think positively and everything's going to be okay, Kathy. You've got $100. Let's see how much more you're going to add. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. It's a blank. Oh. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match that top one. Then if you match the next one, you get $250. Then if you match the third one, you get $100. Okay. From whom would you like a little assist? Joanne. All what do you right. say, Joanne Flute? The first thing that popped into my mind was, it's a boy. It's a boy. Yeah. All right, there's one. Richard. Oh, Richard number two. Richard number two. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life. It's a, it's a, 
<laughs> you really drew a blank on that, didn't you? Gee, that's okay. terrific. Are you yeah, saying it isn't a wonderful life? It is. No, it's a wonderful right. life. Yeah. Just watch your language. Charles. Charles. That, that's, it's a lousy answer. <laughs> it's a deal. It's a deal. Okay, so you got, it's a deal, it's a wonderful life, and it's a boy. You may choose one of those, or you may think up one of your own. What would you like to do, Kathy? It's a boy. You want to say that? Okay, that's one she's looking for. Joanne's answer, let's find out if it's up there, and if so, where? First, may we see the $100 response? It's a mad, mad world. Oh, that's what I meant. That was a movie. Is that what you meant? Yeah, I couldn't It's a think wonderful it's life. That's what I meant. <laughs> It's Same a wonderful life for this mad, mad world. What a cop out that is. <laughs> okay, we're looking for It's a Boy. May we see the $250 response? It's a deal. Oh, no, that's what I meant. Really. That's what you meant. I'm that's not, what you really meant now. I'm not joking. I'm aside. That was Charles' wonderful answer. Wonderful deal. Last chance for It's a Boy. Oh, what if it turns out to be a girl? <laughs> anyway, here we go with the $500 response. It's a boy. <laughs> okay, Kathy, you've got five hundred more dollars. You're up to six hundred. Now you're going to play for the big money, five thousand dollars. But to collect, you know what you have to do? You have to match one celebrity head to head. It has to be an exact match. Please choose one. Joanne. You're going to choose Joanne. I'd choose Joanne if I were you two. All right. Now you face me, Joanne. Here we go. Ready? You will write your answer to this. Andy Blank. Andy Blank. Now, she's finished, Kathy, <clears throat> and we call for your response, which you think will match Joanne. Andy... Hardy? Andy Hardy, she says with a question mark. You think she's wrong? You think she's wrong? This girl who's up here trembling, hoping that she's gonna get the money? And you're awing her, and she's already won $600, and you haven't got a nickel in your pocket, and you're awing her? <laughs> For $5,000, may we see your answer? She says, Andy Hardy. I was thinking of the race car, Mandy. Andy Granatelli. And I didn't know how to spell it, so I put Hardy. Hardy! <laughs> How do you feel now, my dear? Fantastic. What are you going to do with all that money? Finish school. You're going to finish school? Yes, <laughs> Great. Charles? Richard Dawson was right. It is a wonderful world. It is a wonderful world, it is. Now, especially for this lady, line. Kathy Graff, right now. <laughs> We're going to meet another player now. Let's welcome Vicki Carbine. Me too, me too. Me too, me too. Here comes Vicki. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> Hello, Vicki. How are you? Oh, Would you be welcome Vicki Carbon? Welcome, Vicki. <laughs> you may get back up there. That's Kathy, Vicki. You know each other. Well, you're a pretty lady, too. Well, we got two you. pretty ladies up here now. Would you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, I come from beautiful Burbank. I've been married 10 years to a wonderful husband that's a salesman. I have three D's at home. Derek, Deanie, and Danielle, and I love swimming and dancing. Okay, Vicki, good luck to you Thank here. Thank you. Shall we begin? Okay. Okay, you ready? All right. Now, would you please make a selection? B. All right, here we go. Everybody plays. Off is that to an... the original or Carmen? No, this is the original. <laughs> yes. Nothing is too good for you, Richard. We give you the original all the time. We wouldn't think of you giving a Carmen. Marsha. Marsha's gotten married so many times, she keeps a blank in the trunk of her car. <laughs> Marsha has gotten married so many times, she keeps a blank in the trunk of her car. Did you hear that, Vicky? Yes. Marcia has gotten married so many times. She keeps a blank in the trunk of her car. You got the idea. Okay, bottom tier is ready. Charles is ready. Brett, for once you're the last one. Oh, come on, Brett. Well, it's a long answer, dear. Come on now, Brett. Bye now. All right. Vicky Carbon. Marsha has gotten married so many times, she keeps a blank in the trunk of her car. A wedding dress is all I can think of. A wedding dress? Yes, a wedding dress. She's ready. You like that answer, too? The audience likes the answer, everybody likes the answer, and she's hoping the celebrities like the answer. 
What say you that, Mr. Long? Well, I thought of a lot of things. Lawyer, all kinds of things. <laughs> Wedding dress you only use once, so I said, uh, mattress. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rude. No class. Back ABC for you. <laughs> what do you say? I say I was married in black, and for obvious reasons. I, <laughs> All right. I said she kept a copy of her Wasserman test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's two. <laughs> Charles? I Could I have a transfer from this floor? <laughs> <laughs> I said a very sweet answer, a box of rice. A box of oh, rice. Oh, that's sweet. Oh. That is sweet. Uh, so far, Vicki, I think your answer is the best. Thank you. What did I you think, say? Well, I think hers is brilliant. Yes. Because I ran through the lawyer bit, and I, yeah. did, I thought he might die. So I came up with wedding dress. Wedding dress. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Richard. Mr. Well, I Dawson. I said the same thing in a classier way, a trousseau. Trousseau. Right? Right. Sure. There it is. That's two for you. Another classy answer from you, Kay? <laughs> well, you know I got a lot of class. I just... I can't spell trousseau. Trousseau. I never. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How do you spell it? Well, the bottom row is the best. I think yeah. bottom row. Bottom row. Fish okay, pie. Kathy Graff, your first round question comes up in a moment or so, but right now we've got. Now here we go with Kathy's first round question. Ready, Kathy? Oh yes. All right. Three. Uh, Vicky did three in her first round. Let's see how you do. <coughs> Match game seventy-four is publishing the shortest book ever written. It's called The Wit and Wisdom of Blank. <laughs> the Wit and Wisdom of Blank. You understand that question, Kathy? Match Game 74 is publishing the shortest book ever written. It's called The Wit and Wisdom of Blank. One page, I believe. One page, yes. <laughs> I don't know. All right, bottom tier is ready. Great Let's go, upper tier. Richard, have you been watching this program? Yes. Good. <coughs> You've done your homework, have you? Yeah, of course. Good. All right. Kathy Graff, it's up to you now. Match Game 74 is publishing the shortest book ever written. It's called The Wit and Wisdom of... Gene. Of Gene. Gene. No offense. Yeah, I take offense at that. I am offended. Please. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Yeah. The wit and wisdom of Jean, she says. That's, is a very... that's actually a half a page. <laughs> well. What did you say? Well, I don't like that look in your eye, Jean. <laughs> I, I sort of hedged my bet a little bit. I said, Dick Dawson Rayburn. <laughs> <laughs> if I could have gotten Nelson Riley on there. Uh, the judge gave you a buzz on that. Well, Wouldn't you give wrong. a half? No. Can't. You don't have a half a credit here. Bro, well, what do you say? Second. Let's see if anyone <laughs> No, he can't it. have it. Do no, it. Right. Brett? I said... Dickie Dawson. The wit and wisdom of Dickie Dawson. Hi, darling. <laughs> Little blue eyed sweetheart. What's going on between the two Keep of them? Keep that up. I won't let you fight on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Charles? It's going to be postage stamp size. The wit and wisdom <laughs> of Brett. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Whom do you throw a bar back? <laughs> well, I just took, because this is supposed to be the celebrity group, I kind of lumped it all together and came up with stars. The wit and wisdom that of the stars. That a lot of things. Yes, yeah, that's everybody. Now, here he is. What do you say? Well, Charles, I thought, although correct, was a little cutting when he said it was a quarter. It's actually one full page. It's blank, but it's Brett. <laughs> blank Brett, okay. okay. Another one for Brett. Brett. We have three for yeah, Brett. We all think Brett, Brett is One for smart. stars. And one for Dawson. I liked mine best. And one for Gene. See? Brett was my second choice. Brett was your second choice. <laughs> okay. I'll Neither of us have to like that. that <laughs> Let's just ask you to make a selection. B again. B again. Now, only the upper tier plays, because the lower yep. tier matched Where during the smart? first round. Oh, Dummy oh. City will play. All right. <laughs> Gladys said, I knew Larry was the man for me when on Christmas Eve he blanked my stocking. <laughs> Gladys said that. She said, I knew Larry was the man for me when on Christmas Eve he blanked my stocking. Did you know that uh, Joanne was working as a good humor girl? She has a uniform on. I do not. Is that a good humor? I have pink, green, yellow, and blue stripes. And the good humor man wears white. I'm very chocolate, vanilla or strawberry? <laughs> chocolate. Okay, Vicki Carvin. 
Gladys said, I knew Larry was the man for me when on Christmas Eve he blanked my stocking. Uh, well, Larry was a kind of a nice fella. <laughs> Try on my stocking. <laughs> he tried on my stocking? <laughs> she hasn't seen him since. <laughs> Gladys said, Larry was the man for me when on Christmas Eve he tried on my stocking. <laughs> I like that. Well. That's <laughs> <laughs> Anything you say, Vicky. <laughs> what do you say? And it was over his head, too. Uh, I said, uh, Phil. Filled my stocking. Yeah, he gave her a gift. What did you say? Well, I said stuffed. Stuffed or filled? See, that was it, apparently. All right, Charles. Another filled stocking. Filled stocking. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, Vicky. That didn't, didn't, didn't work for you at all. And you've got another chance to tie or win, and we'll see how that comes out. We've got to find out how this Here we go. we got time for another question. Kathy, listen carefully. Everybody plays. The inventor said to the six million dollar man, when you start running out of energy, just stick your blanket in the nearest socket. <laughs> the inventor said to the six million dollar man, when you start running out of energy, just stick your blanket in the nearest socket. That's all. Quickly now. Move along, Brad. Come on. Move along now, Charles. Quickly. All right. All set, I say, Kathy Graff. The inventor said to the six million dollar man, when you start running out of energy, just stick your blanket in the nearest socket. Finger. Finger sounds like a reasonable answer to me. What do you say, Richard? Well, it's really a multiple choice question, but I put finger. Finger. There's one for you. Two more to tie, Brett. Oh, golly, I'm sorry. I put his whole head in there. Stick your head in the socket. Charles, what do you say? Two fingers. Two fingers. One more to tie. Two to win. Now, this matches because it's hand. Hand? Yes or no? Yes, it does. Okay. High score. One more finger wins the game. There it is. Oh, two more fingers. Congratulations. Come on down, Kathy. Okay, so Kathy adds another hundred dollars to her winning. She's up to five thousand six hundred dollars. We congratulate you. Stand by for a moment or so. Vicky, we've got to say goodbye to you. Sorry to say we've got a gift for you backstage. We thank you for being with us here on Match Game 74. There goes Vicky Carbo. Bye-bye, my love. Bye-bye. Bye, Vicky. Now, Bye, Vicky. excuse me for a moment. I've got to say, you follow me. Oh, that's it. All right. Uh, our time is just about up yes, here. We've got to say goodbye to you. Yes, we thank you. We look forward to seeing you too. next time. Charming. And you too on Match Bye. Game 74. Gene Ray yeah, yeah. here. Goodbye. <laughs> Get ready to match the stars. Richard Long, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Joanne Flute, Richard Dawson, thank you, and Kay Stevens. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now the star of Match Game 74, Gene Rivers. Johnny Olson? Uh, it's a hygiene class I have here. Oh, hygiene. Yeah. Hygiene. Well, <laughs> you got a bunch out there, haven't you? Well, we thank you for showing up here today and helping us out. You're going to help us out, too, because you're going to be gay, witty, sparkling, bright, hey! amusing. Not That's Captain enough. Quig. <laughs> Not well, Captain Quig. Captain Quig. <laughs> I'll be sparkling. I sing the first duet. Oh, look at this. Oh. Oh. No okay. kissing on my ship. No kissing on your ship. Well, come what about her poop. Come to my dressing room. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> but I guess we better get on with the show. <laughs> Let's say hello to our player here and our current champ, Kathy Graff. All right, Kathy. Bye. She's got $5,700 to her credit. 
Oh, yeah. Well, are you a junior or senior? Where are you? I'm a junior. In the San Diego State. University. San, San Diego, Diego State University. University. San Diego State University. What right. are you studying? Recreation. Oh, that's right. He's a recreational games. therapist. She's majoring that's in right. fun and games. No, recreational right. therapy, right? Right. Okay, good luck to you, Kathy. Thank We're going to start with your big money, super duper audience match here in a moment or so, but first we've got a little business with America. Here we go, then. Here we are with Kathy Graff, who's been here before. Second game she's won. Now she's going to see how much more than $5,700 she's going to uh, end up with at the end of this game. Ready? Yes. Okay, we polled a recent studio audience, Kathy. We got their best response to this. C blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500. The next one uh, you match is $250. And if you match a bottom one, you get $100. From whom would you like some help from whom? Joanne. Seesaw. Seesaw. Is one. Richard. Richard. The second. Remember yesterday, I gave such a great one. Didn't Terrific I? one. You remember that? It's yeah. a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life. <laughs> Listen to this. Then. This is a beauty. This is part Can two. Can hardly wait. See you later. Alligator. <laughs> See you later. Now, I, I guarantee like it's a wonderful be life better. Somewhere. You think it's going to be up there? Well, wasn't yesterday? Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Oh, well, See you later not. is his. Okay. Uh, well, this is something I really believe in, you know. See America first. See America yeah, first? Do you work for the airline? I know, but I just think America's a beautiful country. See we America first. It's a lovely thought. Okay. You know, so got, yes? Somewhere in Hollywood, somewhere in Hollywood at this moment, Johnny Mann is standing up. <laughs> <laughs> if he's smart, it's All right, Kathy, you've start. got Seesaw, See You Later, and See America First. You may choose one of those if you wish, or give us one of your own. Seesaw. You want to say seesaw? Oh, you're going okay. To That's Joanne's answer. It's seesaw is the one line. we're looking for. It's a wonderful line. We're going to find out if it's up there right now. May we see the $100 response? See through. Oh, that's you. See through. Okay, no seesaw yet. It may come up right now. Who knows? Here is a $250 response. See you later. I don't believe it. Thank you, Academy. <laughs> all the little people. All the little people. <laughs> well, didn't I tell you to come up? It, uh, yeah, it came up all I right. I feel okay. so good. Well, I'm glad we got that out of the way. See Johnny Mayer <laughs> will be next. Here we go. We're looking for Seesaw. Here is the $500 response. Oh! Oh! Okay. See you later. So you've got another 500, that means you're up to 6,200. Now you're going to play for $5,000, Kathy. Yay. Remember to collect, you've got to match one celebrity. Which one will it be? Joanne. All right. You've been lucky with Joanne, haven't you? Okay. I wish I'd been. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a wonderful life. It's a mad world. It's a boy. No. Ready? <laughs> Quiet. $5,000 question. Side blank. That's S I D E blank. Side blank. Joanne is finished. Kathy, she made up her mind very quickly. Now we need a response from you. What do you think will match her in this uh, blank? Side. Winder? Sidewinder. What? I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Sidewinder, she said. Sidewinder. It's a rattlesnake, isn't it? All right. Joanne, for $5,000, may we see your answer? It's close, but it's not it. I had sidekick. Sidekick. All right. No match there. Oh, However, you, you have enriched the coffers a little bit. You're up to, what, $6,200. Yeah. You're still a champ. Going to meet another player in a moment or so. The first is message for you. All right. Got a brand new player here. We're very happy to meet, him. Uh, uh, meet Mr. Scott Carrier. Hello, Scott. Hi. You know, Kathy. Now... I'll tell you one thing about Scott. He's wearing a Mickey Mouse watch. What else you want to tell us I, about Scott? I've worn that since high school, too, by the way. It keeps awfully good time. Good. I, uh, I'm an investigator with the coroner's office. I work in Los Angeles County. An investigator uh, with the yesterday. We had six dead. <laughs> <laughs> You're, that's what I, I watch the program. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, my wife is in the audience. I have a son and one on the way, I hope. 
Okay. All right. Nice to have you with us, Scott. Good luck Thank to you. you. Thank you. Good luck to you. Shall we begin? Sure. Okay. I'm ready. Push a button. Here we go. Scott, would you please make a selection? B, please. B is for him. Brand new game everybody plays. The Hollywood starlet said to the producer of the musical, You promised me I'd be a banana in the big fruit salad production number, and all I am is a blank. <laughs> The Hollywood starlet said to the producer of the musical... I'm first. You promised me I'd be a banana in the big fruit salad productions number. And all I am is a blank. You finished? No. Oh. You've heard of the motion picture industry, haven't you? Oh. <laughs> all right. Are you okay. ready, Charles? Charles. Wake him up. Now, he's, he's... Can we get an alarm clock for Charles? <laughs> so, never I'm not eating anything. You're chewing gum. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Where'd you get it? Where'd you You're get it? Not allowed gum, to chew man. gum. Give it, I'll look at it. Not no. Enough. Give me, I'll put it away in the ashtray. <laughs> put it in the ashtray. You can trust me. Shame on you, Brett, chewing gum. <clears throat> Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> See, I swallowed it. <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> the Hollywood star. The Hollywood starlet said. <laughs> the Hollywood starlet said to the producer of the musical. You promised me I'd be a banana in the big fruit salad production number, and all I am is a blank. A lemon. A lemon. Say a lemon. Oh, that's funny. That's, that's good. Wrong or right? Oh. Wrong. Yeah. I don't you know. I guess. Well, it's a nice way to treat a carrier. Yeah, there is no wrong or right here. Richard, Richard. what do you say? Oh, well, it all depends on how you look at it. I, I said bowl. All I am is a bowl. Okay. Bowl? Yeah. Another beautiful answer there, yeah. Brett. <laughs> yeah. Go. The captain won't let you sit at his table if you don't give me back my gum. <laughs> <laughs> Will you, Captain? Gum chewing is not allowed. I said cherry. All right. Because it's little, you know, and it can yes. get lost in a fruit salad what and did you down say, the bottom. Charles? Well, lemons are not in a fruit salad, and a cherry is bad because it discolors the overall thing. <laughs> oh, I didn't know I was talking to Julia Childs, for heaven's sake. I said pit. A pit. A pit? I don't understand. Give us a decent middle. answer here, would you? The answer uh, he's looking for is yeah. not too I thrilling, but it's lemon no, anyway. I, I didn't go with lemon, but a banana's very big, and so you had to think this thing was very small. Right. And I no thought kidding. Nut, but not too many nuts are in fruit salads. They're all up on the third tier. <laughs> so I said grape. A grape. I said thank you. Oh, okay. No okay. lemons yet. For Scott, what do you offer? I'd like a little traveling music as I show the word prune. Prune. <laughs> That's my best. Okay. We'll do four. All right. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And I have, of course, the ever popular peach. 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 Okay. Nothing. No lemons uh, there at all, Scott. Biggest. Okay, Sorry. let's see how you do with your first round question. Here it is. Again, everyone plays. Brett said. <laughs> Be very careful. Okay, I'm being very careful. <laughs> Brett said, be very... No. Brett said, true love is when a man takes off his hat before he blanks you. <laughs> All right. It's my show, and I can do what I want. Do you do windows? No. Oh. I wish you did. My name what are you going done. to do? Okay, just checking you. up on everybody in the second or upper tier, because the oxygen is so rare up there that sometimes <laughs> funny things happen with their brains. <laughs> Kathy, Brett said, true love is when a man takes off his hat before he blanks you. Kisses. Kisses is what she said. The audience likes that. Okay, Mr. Long, you're on. Well, I've been here chatting with Brett, and she has a lot of weird ideas, I'll tell you. Most of them I couldn't write down, so I put down kisses. Kisses. Aww. Aww. 
That's true love. What that do you is say, Brad? But actually, it's before he shows you his etchings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, takes off his hat and says, look at my etchings. Charles? The first man that showed you his etchings was so long ago was in stone. <laughs> <laughs> Etched in stone. Our carved in the cave wall. We're very close. Yes. Kisses. She's lovely. She would take kisses. That's right. Okay. So that's two for you, Kathy. Well, she has Kiss Me written on I her... On her uh, right. uh, That's a plea for know. help, yes, that right. Kiss Me. <laughs> yes. You've got to know where my mind goes. Yes, of course. It's got to say kisses, right? It's got to say kisses. That's what it says there. Okay. <laughs> and you, sir? Well, I know the sort of gentleman that Brett used to run around with. <laughs> mm. She looked just like them. Uh, <laughs> always removed her hat before. I see. No. She's always so stoned that they right. put her to bed. I see. Nighty night. At least okay. that's the way I All right. look at it. Now, here we go to Kay Stevens. <laughs> what do you say You're not there? Too romantic, right? right along. I always say exactly what's right. Kisses. What else? Kisses. Well, okay. That's four for you. So it's in a round one. Four to nothing. Favor the current champ. And round two will occur. But first, before that happens, this has to happen. We're ready to go to round two. Are you ready, Scott, to make a selection? B, and I hope it's not a lemon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he said the lemon was his last answer, and it didn't pay off for him. Okay, everyone plays since he didn't match anyone in the first round. Harry said, I'll never go to El Cheapo rent a car again. The cars they rent don't have motors. Instead, they have blanks. <laughs> Harry said, I'll never go to El Cheapo rent a car again. The cars they rent don't have motors. Instead, they have blanks. That's good. Thank you, Gene. Yes, very good. Okay, Brett? No. Why? Brett, you think too hard. It's just too much of a strain on you. I know it. She's riding it off. Remember, we didn't hire you for your brains, but for your beauty. All right, here we go. I've gotten old on this show. Scott. Harry said, I'll never go to El Cheapo rent a car again. The cars they rent don't have motors. Instead, they have blanks. I say pedals. Pedals. Like a bicycle, huh? That's good. He said the cars don't have motors, they have pedals. Oh, that's too bad. I wish he'd said rubber bands. Rubber bands. That's good, too. Rubber bands or pedals are both the good answers there. Okay. It's all your fault. What? Be because I would have said pedals, and I, and I had to hurry along. And a woman my age should never have to hurry. It makes her nervous, and then I have a hot flash. I said bicycle tires, but I didn't mean tires. I actually meant pedals. Oh, uh, sorry uh, about that. Now, yeah, they Scott, you've got to match everyone remaining who hasn't given an answer yet to stay in the game. Charles. I guess Richard and I made airplanes together. Rubber bands. Rubber bands. So Kathy wins another game. Congratulations. You all have pedals over there. Well, you got a lot of pedals there at the end there, Scott, and it uh, didn't work out too well for Thank you, you very Robin. much. Pedals is a very good answer. Thir we thoroughly enjoyed the program. Really, well, we enjoyed really meeting good. you, and we've got a gift for you together with our thanks, Scott. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got so excited you won, you didn't know what to do, did you? Really? You were kind of sitting there. Then. I'm surprised. Are you surprised? Really. Okay. Very. All right, we're going to have another go at it here. We, uh, you're, you're up to $6,300, and here we go at uh, whack at over $5,000. let us see if it happens. We polled a recent studio audience, got their best response to this. <laughs> Maxwell blank. Now, you know it's five, two, fifty, and a hundred. Three celebrities are allowed to help. Whom do you choose? Joanne. Maxwell Coffee. Maxwell Coffee. Maxwell Coffee. Isn't it Maxwell's Coffee? There is a Maxwell. The, but what's the Maxwell? Oh, it's, what's the it's Maxwell House. Maxwell House Coffee is the yeah. name of it. Yeah. Is that what you want to say? Well, I add Plum, and I'm Maxwell Plum, but I think I'll go Maxwell House. Maxwell House, okay. Yeah. Maxwell House, that's her answer. Another one? Uh, Charles? Uh, Don Adams is Maxwell Smart. Maxwell Smart. Okay, and there's two. Uh, okay. Uh, Maxwell Plum. Maxwell's Plum. Maxwell's Plum. Plum. That's the one you didn't use. Yeah. Yeah. So Maxwell, Maxwell House Coffee. Maxwell's Plum. You know about that? Maxwell Plum? No. It's a restaurant on First Avenue no, and 65th no. Street in New York. Okay. 
Forget Don't count it. On it. <laughs> I never heard of it. Okay. Maxwell Prune is so you <laughs> you've got Maxwell's Plum, Maxwell House, <laughs> and Maxwell Smart. Lovely. You may choose one of those or think up one of your own. What do you say, Kat? House. Maxwell House. Yeah. You think she's right with that? We'll find out right or wrong now. Joanne's answer. Let's see if it's up there. First, may we see the one hundred dollar response? <laughs> Maxwell That's Anderson, right. famous oh, distinguished American playwright. And coffee okay. Man. Looking for a Maxwell House, here is the $250 response. Max Smart is up there. That was Charles' answer. All right, that may be a good omen. Who knows? Here we go. For $500, the $500 answer is... Max ah! Smart House. I said Maxwell Coffee, I didn't want to say anything because, you know, I knew you meant Maxwell House, I'm but so, I couldn't help you, so... I thank you, audience. All right. You. <laughs> so you got the $500. Now you're going to go again play for $5,000, and remember, you have to match one celebrity head-to-head. -head. Time to choose one, as if we didn't know. <laughs> Joanne. Okay, you're really getting a big play today. Now, this week, as a matter of fact. Okay, face me if you would, please. Here's another $5,000 question. Blank Club. C-L-U-B. Joanne's finished. Kathy, we need an answer from you which you think will match hers. What do you say? Blank club. Canadian. Canadian club? No, there are no... <laughs> Eight winos in the audience are applauding. The others are all going, uh... All right, Joanne, for $5,000. She says Canadian Club. May we see your response? And my mother's a Canadian. She'll kill me. I said country. Country Club. Well, they were both good, I think. I guess they were he had Canadian. Good. He yeah. had Canadian. Canadian he's Country foreign, Club. You know. there, I guess there are a couple of other good ones, too. All right, keep Kathy. Trying. You're up to $6,800. And here comes your next challenger, Margo Chase. All right, you want to climb aboard, Margo? You know Kathy Graff? Nice to have you with us, Margo. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a housewife. Yeah. And I'm married, and I live in Seal Beach, California. All right. I have two very young children, Raymond and Heather, and I enjoy watching soap operas and game shows. So okay. All right. Here we go, Margo. Good luck to you, and good luck to Kathy. I'll push the button and ask you to make a selection. A. A. All right, everybody plays. This is Margot's first round question. The nurse said to the patient, Dr. Quacko will take out your appendix for free. However, it will cost you 500 bucks if you want blank. He said, the nurse said to the patient, Dr. Quacko will take out your appendix for free. However, it'll cost you 500 bucks if you want blank. Oh, I get it. Got it? All right. I think it's very good. Good, good. Good, good, good. All right. Jay is finishing up hers, and we're all set. You ready, Charles? Yes. All right, sir. Did you change your mind, Kay? I don't know how to Quickly. Spell the spelling off. doesn't count here. All right, Margot. Nurse said to the patient, Dr. Quack will take out your appendix for free. However, it'll cost you 500 bucks if you want. Sex? I don't know. What? <laughs> I think sex. Just hold up your card, no, if you would, please. Anesthetic. Anesthetic is the answer there. Brett? Who is this Dr. Quacko, anyway? <laughs> Anesthetic. There's two. Charles? Stitches. Stitches. Stitches and ether are good. Yes, what have you got? Stitches. Stitches. Excellent answer there. I can undercut that doctor by $200. Ether. Ether. <laughs> and you came. Have you been watching Days of Ireland? And it's the ether. I don't know ether. All right. right. So that was the answer, Margo. I guess uh, you just quite didn't get the handle of that question. Your first round question comes up later, but right now this is coming up a message for you. Gene Mayburn from Match Game 74. Join us for the next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you.
Get ready to match the stars. Charlie Brill, Brett Summers, Richard Deacon, Joanne Flute, Richard Dawson, and Patty Deutsch. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now the star of the Match Game 74, Gene River. Hey, Johnny Olsen and friends. Uh, ensembles is, is terrific. You always look so chic every day. Thank you, my dear. Don't get too close. Benita, my darling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's very yes. perceptive of you. Yes. For those who did not see me do my uh, bare shoulder number yesterday, should I do it again? No, they were, no. For, they were fortunate no. ones no, that didn't no. see it. Oh, they, uh, I just once, wanted to check it out. Once is more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you said in the motel this morning. <laughs> We need you, my darling. <laughs> it is a far, far better thing I do than that. No, right. She's just funning, folks. <laughs> just funning there. <laughs> Stop that. What are you, uh, that's very neat there. What's that? I, isn't that a nice shirt he's wearing? Clean and neat and well-pressed yeah, and well, no wrinkles. white, if that's what you mean. <laughs> yes, it is. Brett, I think when you're attractive, it doesn't matter what you wear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who did that? I mean, the drawing. Jim Lapidus, who is a very talented young designer. And did you uh, sew it on there? No, he did. Oh, he sewed it right no, on I there. I do needlepoint. I don't do this jazz. Yes. Yeah. And he does windows. He does windows. Good. Now Move you're talking on. about Jim or me? No. Here we go. Now let's say hello to our two players, okay. Major Goolsby and Sheila Windman. How are you? Very good. How are you doing? Okay. Major's our current champ. He has a total of $5,950 to his credit. He's happy about that. Oh, that and. Uh, we started this game last time we were together. Sheila had her first question and matched three of our celebrities, and we're about to give you your question, and we're going to do that right after we do this. Oh, you are there, aren't you, you rascal? You snuck up on us. Okay, I'll push this button. Major, you ready? Yes, I am. This is for you. Your first round question, everyone participates. Well, we're saying don't Why write. is it flashing at us? Oh, that's all right. Would you turn the, uh, these don't write signs off, please? Well, I'll turn Thank them you. off. Okay, are yours off? I hate off? you. Yes, mine are off. Everyone plays because this is his first round question. Gee, I wish I could imitate Howard Cosell, but I can't. It says oh, here... Oh, it's Richard. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. You do Howard no, Cosell? Can't. You can't? No. I'll do a little Cosell. I you do, do Cosell? Oh, a little Cosell. Howard Cosell... No, I'll do a little Cosell. I do his mother. It, start, it says doctor. <laughs> Howard does. Cosell said to the psychiatrist... Doctor, I think I need help. You see, I've fallen in love with my... blank. <laughs> That's right. You got a little Cosell. Very, Very damn little. <laughs> All right, you all understand. Howard Cosell said to the psychiatrist, Doctor, I think I need help. You see, I've fallen in love with my blank. Oh, I, oh honey, I ah. got it. Oh, there's some good ones here. That's one. Well, I mean, it's obvious. That's okay. So, well, That's okay. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> now, as soon as the Richard Deacon got, got his slide, I'm ready. Major Goolsby. Daddy. Howard Cosell, you know who he is, said to the psychiatrist, Doctor, I think I need help. You see, I've fallen... <coughs> she just what? put her... She, I, she, they were all having hysterics over there. Why? She, because she didn't have her, oh, her thing in her... You forgot to put the card in the slot? I saw no, you write I... an answer a long time ago. Yes. All right. I had to clarify it. Oh, Everybody right. was getting nervous, Jean. Oh. Howard Cosell said to the psychiatrist, Doctor, I think I need help. You see, I've fallen in love with my blank. Just have to say self. Myself. Well, don't be ashamed of that. The audience agrees with you, Major. They think you're right. <coughs> and that's, you know, I mean, he has been in love with himself for many years, yes. so nothing to be behind you. That's a fact. I mean, you've got to face a facts here, Charlie. But you know that he really is nuts when he falls in love with his own body. With his body. Uh, Cassell's body. Well, that match. That matches. Okay. 
You're right, Charlie. Right, Brett? What? What? What I want to know is why would he fall in love with himself? That's a good question. Okay, Major. Uh, it's you and me. It's uh, all. <laughs> Okay. What does what is a Howard Cosell? Howard Cosell. Well, he's a a man. Uh, he's the mouth that roared. He's the oh, mouth that roared. Yeah, that's a pretty good description uh -huh. of him. Well, then I'd have to say self. Self. Okay, three for you. You know Howard Cosell, don't yes, you? Yes, I knew Howard Cosell. And we already knew he was in love with himself. Oh, you knew that? Yes, and oh. you just said so. <coughs> That's right. Didn't you say so? So I said the next most obvious thing was his voice. Fell in love with my voice. He likes his voice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, what'd you there say? It went. Yeah. Howard Cosell. Um, I know because he did laugh him with Patty and I, didn't he? Yeah. And uh, he has, he's not only in love with himself, he's been engaged to himself twice. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> But broke he it is off. in love now with his hairpiece. He's in love. <laughs> which is the most horrible hairpiece in yes. history. Oh, my that's God. right. No, I do. No, no, no. No, 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 no you've oh, got yeah. a great hairpiece. Yours yours look good. Right, yep. yes. exactly right. Yes. What do you say? He is in love with his toupee and or hairpiece. Right. <laughs> right, yep. right. Yes. exactly. Right. Did I'm oh, laughing. Uh, I did Howard tell mother. mother. Why didn't you tell us? Read well, the question. Just finish. Well, no. Go on, read it. Come on, read it. Just a Howard Cosell said to the psychiatrist, Doctor, I think I need help. You see, I have fallen in love with my toupee and or hairpiece, also known as a rug. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a tie score at the end of round one. Let's see if we break the tie now with round two. Sheila? B, please. B. Who plays? Well, top row. obviously the ding dong. Oh. All right. Yes. And this is only for the ding-dongs in the top row. Yeah. Hello, top row. You right, ready? Honey. Yes. Okay, now listen to the... Now hear this. Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> the policeman said, That mugger we brought in is weird. We caught him mugging a cocker spaniel and trying to take his blank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly, another one of those. That's an easy one, isn't it? No. The That's policeman said... Insane, Joe Man. Now, now, listen carefully now. Watch my lips. I am speaking to you, Brett. Are you listening? Watch my lips. The policeman said, that mugger we brought in is weird. We caught him mugging a cocker spaniel and trying to take his blank. Oh, kiss me, you fool. Okay. <laughs> okay, now write an answer and be a good girl. Why Sit are you up doing that, Gene? Yeah. Have you had any of the diseases on this list? <laughs> <laughs> No. I've had I hear one. That one's rampant. <laughs> no, yes. Yeah. I've had one, three, five, nine. I've had all the odd ones. I got you sick. <laughs> You've now gotten all the even ones. Now that you've just spread. We're, wait, we're at living one. You're uh, flipping I, around I'm here. Done, Mike. Will you I'm done, Mike. I'm together. I, this is it. I'm ready. Okay. Oh, heavens. Cool it now. Okay. All right. Sheila, you ready? I'll do it one more time for you. The policeman said, that mugger we brought in is weird. We caught him mugging a cocker spaniel and trying to take his... Collar. Collar. Oh, what would you say? Oh. Bone. Okay. They said... She said collar. They said, ah. <laughs> they said... They said bone. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Charlie. I didn't say call. I said he'd try to take his ears off. It's such a... Uh, 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 rotten. Uh -oh. uh, give it to him. That's give right. I'm not going to give it to you, Charlie. Uh, <laughs> like ears. Uh, ears. Uh, <laughs> oh, rotten. Oh, Audience, let's it. give it to him, shall we? Oh, it's okay. Thank you. Save something for me. <laughs> You got ears too? No, I have license, which is on a collar. No, sorry. Okay, oh, I'll take that from them, not from you. Sheila, not you didn't do too good with that one. <laughs> Where'd you get all of them ears at there? Okay, now we're in the middle of round two. We got to stop right here. We got three, three. All you need is one to win the game. Let's see if it happens after this. Now, we're ready to carry on here. Let's see what happens. Major Goolsby, you need one match to win the game. New version here of an old Barbara Streisand song. Oh, are you going to sing for us? Well, you see? Now, you no, see how I... Dickie Dawson is always picking uh, on the upper It's the dummies on the bottom now. Oh, you're right. The dummies on the bottom. That's right. Okay. 
No, well, the alert three. We, we wanted to be on camera again. Yeah. We, at least we don't have to wear <laughs> glasses. Why? That's do right. We? <laughs> False hair pieces. <laughs> Are you ready? No. I need my glasses and my rug. <laughs> This is a, a very hard song for me, but I'll... Uh, what How, what, 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 tell me the name of the song. Tell me the name. What is it? Just tell me the tune. I'll give you a That's note. People. I'll give you yeah, a people. Song. Yeah. Yeah. What's it? People? It. Yeah. People who look... Huh? <laughs> 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 There's more. People. No, no, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I'll give you another one. No, I don't want that. I don't people. want it. I'm going to sing it. No. I don't want it. I guess I'll, I'll go all by myself and do it. In the Lipton oh, spotlight, Charlie. ladies no, and gentlemen. I'm going to do it right here. All right. Oh. No, wrong. Stop that. <laughs> I'm just giving Garlic. you the note. Guess quiet. No. Garlic. Quiet. <laughs> Garlic. <laughs> garlic. People who eat garlic are the blankiest people in the world. <laughs> funning me and when you're serious i think you're funning me he will now sing on a clear day you can see claire trevor sing the question again <laughs> major goes ah. no well barbara says <laughs> garlic people who eat garlic are the blankiest people in the world talkingest people <laughs> i think you just blew it major <laughs> are the talkiest people in the world he said <clears throat> Did you understand it? Garlic? People who eat garlic are the blankiest people in the world. No, I said talkiest. That's his answer. Okay, my dear, go. Smelliest. Are the smelliest. Okay, Richard. Uh, would you repeat the question? <laughs> go on, I'd like to hear it. Sing it. Yeah, I'll give you a note. I'll give it to you. Garlic. People who eat garlic are the talkiest. <laughs> Tight Somewhere, <laughs> Lairdale woke up and said, what was that? <laughs> Smelliest. Smelliest. Okay. You need one more to win that. But I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to end in a tie if you don't match him or vice versa. Almost anything could happen, don't People. you know? Could you sing it again, please? No, no. I will not sing it again. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Are the rudest people. Are the rudest. Yeah. Okay, so this oh, game rude. ends in a tie. we got to go to a tiebreaker. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. All right, everybody ready for a tiebreaker? Here we go. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love tie Cancel out the threes here. And push the button and reveal the questions and ask Sheila to make a selection. A, please. Okay. One question for each. The one who scored the most will be the winner. Sing it. The judge said, I don't care. No, I said, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care, I don't care if the trial is dull. I, oh, no, the judge said, yep. I don't care if the trial is done. <laughs> oh, I, I, I got you. Different, different judge. Different, yeah. no, no, different judge and Charlie. Here come the judge. What do you think of the judge? He said, I don't care if the trial is dull. I've got a blank under my robe. <laughs> he, said, he said, I don't care if the trial is dull. I've got a blank under my robe. Oh, hey, really? He said that. <laughs> he said that, oh, the I judge said. He's got this big, voluminous robe. Yeah. And he switched it around. Oh, he, he looked like Loretta Young when he made his entrance into the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> what? What oh. did he do? Oh, he did it again! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here come to ready, judge. ready, ready, ready. Okay. Here come to judge. Here come to judge. Here come uh, what do you think the judge has got under his robe? Ready over there. Well, I hope he had some trousers. Uh, uh, <laughs> the judge said, I don't care if the trial is dull. I've got a blank under my robe. Bottle. A bottle. Yeah. Well, okay, let's hear it for jurisprudence. Uh, <laughs> Charlie? That was a good answer, but I would uh, have a lot of fun, too, if he had a lady midget under his robe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What did you say, Brett? My judge was a fine person, and he had a girl to talk to. Brought a girl with him. Okay. Richard Deacon. I went to the same school. A girl? <laughs> yes. Okay. I got carried away. The judge said, I don't care if the trial is dull. I've got a blank under my robe. And he said bottle. Uh, she said bottle. I'm sorry. <laughs> she <laughs> what you... is a girl. He said that he shed, and she And I shed. said girl. A girl. All right. Got four girls under the judge's robe. It's getting a little crowded under there. 
Oh, it's the Andrews sisters. <laughs> the Andrews sisters. No. <laughs> Come on, Richard. I just think that's, I'm amazed that the judge would do that. Yes. My judge is much neater. <laughs> what is he? <laughs> You're worried, aren't you, you Yes, I am. I am. No, we had a TV set. A very good answer. See, it like that. Yes. While watching a match game, 30 days. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, sure, go ahead. Yeah, come on now. Okay. Here comes the smash roof. folks. Oh, yeah, this is a killer. The judge had a party under his <laughs> Oh, really? Party in a first party. A party in a first party. Sheila? I was going to say girl. You was going to say girl? You thought about it and rejected it. Well, never reject a girl. We never do, do never we? Have no, yet. no, no never not. have yet. I well, refused listen. to answer that question on the grounds it might incriminate No me. doubt about it. I'll get back under the judge's robe. <laughs> <laughs> While you're ruminating about that, we're going to have this message. Ready? Now. Major, you're in the driver's seat again. One match will win another game. Ready for it? Yes, I am. Here we go. Listen carefully. Everybody plays. Okay, okay man. Tiebreaker. Okay. Good. Okay. While right. visiting the North Pole, yeah. little Tommy said, Santa Claus might be somewhere near here because here's some reindeer blank. <laughs> again you're gonna have to repeat that <laughs> while visiting the North Pole <clears throat> little Tommy said Santa Claus might be somewhere near here because here's some reindeer blank he said that Santa Claus might be somewhere near here because here's, here's some, some reindeer blank <laughs> oh, come on you've got it <laughs> It's easy for you to say. I can't steal your ball. Come on, now do it, right? Time's a wasting. Put it right in the slot there. Get it in. Go. I have two choices, please. Get, get with them. Okay. Major Goolsby. While visiting the North Pole, little Tommy said, Santa Claus might be somewhere near you because here's some reindeer blank. Tracks. Tracks. Very good. May I come in? Yes, you can. Come right, right in. How do you think. have to say? Well, after before the tracks, he had he saw a little doo doo. Doo doo. <laughs> I like his answer better. <laughs> what do you say? I say, when in doubt, sing a song. Do da, do da. <laughs> okay. You're both Piling up over here, Major. <laughs> do, 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 and do, da. Crap. Crap. Yeah. Okay, you're over $6,000 now. Stand by for a moment or so, Major. And uh, Sheila, we thank you for being with us. We've enjoyed meeting you. We've got a gift for you, together with our thanks for thank being you. with us on Math Game 74. Goodbye, Sheila. Okay, you got your fan club out there, eh? Yes. You got friends there in addition to your uh, wife and your mother-in-law, right? Half that row there. Half that row. They're all friends and neighbors, are they? Yes, they are. And okay, mothers. they're rooting for you here. Now, the big money super match. We pulled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank climber. The answer they gave, you know, is worth five, two fifty, and a hundred. And uh, three celebrities are allowed to help. Whom do you choose? Uh, Charlie again. Charlie Brill. I would say mountain climber. Mountain climber is one. Joanne. Joanne Flew. Social. Social climber. And Brett. Brett, have you got one in the Give third... Give me a minute, sweetheart. Okay. Easy social climber, mountain climber. Huh? <laughs> wow. Oh, Rose climber. What? Rose climber? I'm glad the buzzer sounded. <laughs> Nobody wanna... else had a third I'm one. I'm glad he didn't clutter up his mind. Okay, you got those two. You can choose one of those or give us one of your own. I would say mountain climber. Mountain climber is one you want, and one we're looking for. We're going to find out if it's up there right now, and if so, where. First, may we see the $100 response? Tree climber. Well, There's said, one. Tree climber. Looking for mountain climber. Charlie Brill's answer. Here's the $250 response. Social climber, the one Joanne gave you. Last chance for mountain climber, the $500 response. Oh, you got it.
You're up to $6,550. Let's see if you're going to go all the way here. You're going to play for 10 times that amount. Whom do you choose? Charlie again. Okay, Charlie gets set to write. Here's the $5,000 question. Basic blank. Basic blank. Okay, he's finished. Now, Major, we call on you to give us an answer which you think will match his. What do you say? Basic. Basic. I would have to say mathematics. Basic mathematics. You went, you were blank on that one. Okay, he says basic mathematics, Charlie. May we see your answer? I, I put down what we basic, wear, basic black. What basic black. black. Yeah. That's a phrase in women's clothing, basic black. They wear basic black dresses with their pearls, as many of us do sometimes. All right, here we go with this little message, and we'll come right back. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 74, a Marcus and Bill Todman production. Get ready to match the star. Clifton David, Brett Summer, Gary Vergoff, Joanne Flew, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flay. We play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rivers. You get them all riled up like that, Johnny. You got them, I say. Now, uh, what? You're going nuts earlier. You're going nuts? I'll see you. That's terrific. We were growing bananas up in the dressing room. Quiet. It's my show. Get your own show. Oh, you got your own show. <laughs> Thank you for saying He's got his own show, yes, Clifton Davis. Yes, That's my does. mama. And lucky You look different. Welcome. That's because I don't have a bright and smart. All right. Why? He's that's got his own. Your, that's your mama? No, no, that's not his show. Clifton Davis stars in That's My Mama. And, and we say it shorter sometimes. Sometimes we just say your mama. Your you mama. Know. I knew Gene was Czechoslovakian, but I didn't. Okay, welcome to Clifton Davis, and uh, shall my we have a go at it by. Troop is here. What's that? I said my Girl Scout troop is here. Your Girl Scout troop is here. Where? Oh, they must have left. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> What are you featuring, Fanny? Just trash I picked up here. Oh, I see. <laughs> just this, oh, just I, little things. They're beautiful. Uh, May I say well, She picks up my accessories. Jo oh, I remember oh. Joanne. Thank you, Richard. You, you know, Missy has you. a brand new series? She has? Yes. I didn't know that. Well, With tell Craig me about Stevens. it. With Craig Stevens. is called The Thin Man. Really? Yeah. yeah. She's brand new. She's going to do the part that Myrna Loy did in all the movies. Yes. Wow. How nice. Congratulations, yeah. my dear. That's good news. Thank you. Also, are they going to fix her hair? With child, she is with child. Well, you're kidding she me. Is also going to play the part of the fat lady. <laughs> Aren't you with child? Yes. Isn't that oh. exciting? You are. She has been busy yep. <laughs> since our last meeting, hasn't yes, she? Indeed. Okay. All right. Dishes. Now let's say our two players, Sally Brooks and Mary King. She's won a total of eight thousand four hundred and fifty dollars, and we've started this game. It's uh, and Mary King is challenging her, and she's ahead at this moment, five to four. We're going to finish this game uh, with round two. Each of you have a question coming up. We'll see how it ends up in a moment or so. But right now, this for you. Here we go, ladies. Second round, final round. Mary King, please make a selection. Um, I'll take A, please. A. All right. Who plays? One person. Oh, Fanny. Fanny, you're the only one. Why? Because in her first round question, she matched every one of our celebrities. And uh, now this is her second round question, and you're the only one, right? Ready? Here it is. 
Pinocchio, quiet. Don't you remember last week when you weren't here? No. Pinocchio's, no, who was in that position last oh, week? Uh -huh. He was the only one. <laughs> Pinocchio's <laughs> girlfriend pregnant. said, I like Pinocchio a lot, but I'm not seeing him anymore. The last time we went out, I got blank. <laughs> Did you hear that, Mary? Pinocchio's girlfriend said, I like Pinocchio a lot, but I'm not seeing him anymore. The last time we went out, I got... Oh, oh. Okay. All right, now she's finished, and we'll call on Mary King. Pinocchio's girlfriend said, I like Pinocchio a lot, but I'm not seeing him anymore. The last time we went out, I got... Splinters. Splinters. They like her answer. Does she match you? They're so sweet. They wouldn't hurt me, would you? You would. If she doesn't would say splinters, not you're not going to hurt her, are you? Money. Splinters. Splinters. <laughs> now, Sally, you've got your work cut out for you. You've got to match the two celebrities you did not match last time we were together to stay in the game, and they are Richard and Fanny. <laughs> All right, here we go. I don't like this. I don't get to play. Me, me neither. neither. Just sit there and be quiet and do what I tell you to, or... Well, you uh, won't take me to Encino? That's right. <laughs> well, we will well, he take, will you, take you, you to Encino. <laughs> Jim said, yes? My blind date for the dance was such a dog, instead of giving her a corsage, I gave her a blank. <laughs> Jim said, my blind date for the dance was such a dog. Instead of giving her a corsage, I gave her a blank. Think about that, Sally. The best dancer. All right. <laughs> Richard and Fanny are finished. We call on Sally Brooks. My blind date for the dance was such a dog. Instead of giving her a corsage, I gave her a... Bone. A bone. That seems like a good match. Got to match both of them to stay in the game. All right. She's his bone, Richard. So what? <laughs> That's a very chauvinistic question, isn't it? We've got to talk to our writers, talk about uh, women and uh, dogs. Well, let's say... Uh, no, know. I don't like that at all. You don't all. like that question? No. Well, uh, we're not serious. You know, we just, we're just funning a little bit. Yeah? We're not uh, male chauvinist pigs here. Are uh, we? Yeah, I, I think we are, no. deep down inside. <laughs> <laughs> no, I yeah, say that because I'm us. hoping to get a few winners in the mail. Saying, <laughs> Thanks for sticking up for the girls. <laughs> Al Bono. Bono. Now, Fanny, she's got a match you to stay in the game. Uh, I don't know. I said dog biscuit, which is sometimes a bone. <laughs> well, sometimes you're in the shape of a bone. That's not a match. Okay. Congratulations, Mary. Are you happy? Very. Okay. Now we're going to say goodbye to Sally Brooks, but she's leaving with a smile on her face because she's got a pile of money. She's got $8,450. This is Mary's first time up here, and uh, we'll take her through it step by step, little by little here. We polled a recent studio audience, Mary, and we got their best response to this. <laughs> Crushed blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, you get $250, and the third, $100. Three celebrities are permitted to help. Whom do you choose? My favorite, Richard. Uh, Richard. Crushed ice. Crushed ice is one. Okay. And Fanny? Fanny, what do you say? Crushed velvet. Yeah. Crushed, Crushed velvet. velvet. Crushed velvet, she said. That's two. How about Clifton? How about Clifton? <laughs> I Crushed, told you to write down. Crushed, Crushed, grapes. Crushed grapes. Crushed yeah. grapes. He's off to roaring, roaring beginning here. <laughs> well, they took all the good ones, Gene. Now, listen, don't blame. This is his first time. You're going to make him feel very insecure if you boo him Crushed on his feelings? first time. Charles just sent one in from New York. <laughs> Charles he just was caught in traffic and stopped at a phone booth and said, crushed to death. <laughs> crushed to death. <laughs> Wrong! <laughs> okay, so you've got crushed grapes, crushed ice, and crushed velvet. You can choose one of those or think up one of your own. What would you like to do? I'll go with crushed ice. Crushed ice. All right, that was Richard's answer. We'll find out if it's up there and so where. First, may we see the $100 response? Crushed pineapple. pineapple. That's a close oh, yeah, that was, that was, I was in the fruit group. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> he was in the fruit group. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Close. Wait a minute. Uh, all right. Look at that. <laughs> crushed ice. Yes, that's the one we want here. Let's see if it's under the $250 response. Crushed velvet. 
All right, that's Always Fanny's answer. Always a bridesmaid, answer. never a bride. <laughs> last, last chance for the five hundred uh, for the crushed dice. Here's the five hundred dollar response. Crushed dice. Congratulations. Well done. Okay, good choice. Now. Now, Mary's got the $500. It means she's up to $600 altogether. She's going to play for $5,000 right now. To collect that, you've got to match one of them head to head. It has to be an exact match. Please choose one. Oh, Richard, for Richard, sure. Richard. All right, Richard, Richard. 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 Right, for Richard, sure. Richard, Richard. Hey, my said, life's Fanny. easy. I do this show all the time, you know, Fanny. <laughs> so do I, Fanny. Yeah, you basically. Nobody ever says for sure to me. When you oh. stop your bickering, I'm sorry. we shall go on with the game. For sure. Richard, Richard. Richard. For sure. Now, very serious moments. $5,000 okay. for this girl now. Here we go. Bridge blank. That's B R I D G E blank. Bridge blank. Bridge blank. Bridge blank. All right, he's finished. Now, Mary King, we call on you for an answer which you think will match Richard's. What do you say? Bridge. Port. Only Bridgeport. Thing. You know, it's the only thing I could think of. The only thing I could think of. I hope it's the only thing he could think of, because this is a hard one. Bridgeport is what she said. I thought a bridge over troubled water. Oh, And I thought a bridge of size. Bridge of size. So I thought bridge oh, my. Oh! Where is he? Is he here? No, he's no. up north. Your husband is up north. Uh, oh, that's right. Great. You live in is Northern really? California. In yeah, it's good. Oh, well, then I've got good news and bad news for him. <laughs> now Mary's going to pull herself together here and calm down a little bit while we do a little business, and then we'll meet her new competitor. Here we are. You all ready? Okay. Let's meet your new player, and let's welcome Jackie Clark. Jackie Clark will now tell us a little bit about herself, would you please? I'm a nursery school teacher from the San Fernando Valley. I have two little children, a boy, four, Adam, and a little girl, six, Jill. And my husband is a paramedic, and he likes to deliver babies. Your husband is a paramedic. Really? And where does he paramed? In the county. In Kelly. the county? <clears throat> That's a very interesting uh, occupation, isn't it? it. Mm -hmm. All right, good luck to Jackie Clark mm -hmm. and to Mary King, who's had good luck already. She's got a lot of loot there. All right. Jackie, please make a selection. A, please. A, here we go. Folks, brand new game. This is your first go at it. Here it oh, is. Oh, good. Grandma said, she said, Grandpa is so forgetful that every single morning I have to show him how to blank. <laughs> That's what she said. Every what morning? Every single morning. Grandma said, Grandpa is so forgetful that every single morning I have to show him how to blank. Hmm. What do you think of that? I think I'll wait till Brett writes hers. <laughs> And help so look at the lower oh, tiers. Ready? Are you ready? No. Yep. You're ready. Okay, that's good. Good. All right. Finish there. Lower tier is finished. Upper tier. Oh, really? Uh, hey, uh, Grandpa is so forgetful that every single morning I have to show him how to blank. Boing, boing, boing. boing. Right. Okay, Jackie Clark. Grandpa is so forgetful that every single morning I have to show him how to get up. Get up. Out of bed. Get up out of bed. You don't like that? You may not like it, but these dingbats might have said it. <laughs> so, get up is what she said. Clifton, what do you say? Well, no, Grandpa always knows how to get up. He just don't know how to put on his clothes. Show him how to get up. Yeah, I guess that's what the audience had in mind. That's a good answer. All right, you're off to a good start. No match, but you're okay, well, Clifton. Well, there's no need to strike him. <laughs> no, I wouldn't hit him. <laughs> what do you say? his little box. It's not nice either. I said, I didn't say, uh, what did she say? She said, get up. Oh, I didn't say that. Get up out of bed. I said, uh, Chad, to show him how to button his fly. Button his fly. <laughs> Okay. Oh, All right. 
specific. Yeah. You know, my grandmother was a paramedic. Your grandmother was a paramedic. That's actually, Isn't that interesting? Well, they didn't call her. Here param- comes the biggie, folks. They didn't call our, le- our old ladies paramedics in Connecticut. What do they call them? Paragorics. Anyway. Paragor- <laughs> Why do I ask? Why? Actually, Why did you just show you why I said that? Because I'm so embarrassed. When I, no, he might not be forgetful of putting his clothes on. That's not forgetful. A lot of people walk around naked for the first ten hours of life in the morning. I said, Would you show us your answer I and said, shut up? Biddle. <laughs> Joanne's still saying that's not nice. Show her and tell time. Nice. <laughs> May we see you? I always thought he was a sweet young boy. He is a sweet young yes. boy. <laughs> well, I thought this was quite obvious because he's a grandpa. Yeah. So I said he forgot how to shave every morning. Didn't know how to shave. Okay, Jackie Clark, Clark, so far no one's it. matched you. answer. Get up was the answer Jackie Clark is looking for. <laughs> Grandpa's so forgetful every single morning I have to show him how to get up is what she said. What do you say? Oh, dear. <laughs> no. <laughs> I said walk. Walk? No. Close, but no cigar. All right, Fanny. You know that sound that you just heard? You hear it again. Yeah. That's two in a row. Okay. Now let's see how you do with your first round question, Mary. The magician's wife said, My husband's been acting weird lately. Last night he came to bed with his blank. What? The magician's wife said that. My husband's... Been acting weird lately. Last night he came to bed with his blank. <laughs> did he really take it to bed with him? Yes, he did. Oh, oh. Last night he came to bed with his blank. Yada ba dum yada I think it's an excellent one. All right, everybody's ready and made up their minds very quickly. Mary King, magician's wife, said my husband's acting weird lately. Last night he came to bed with his fiddle. <gasps> no. Magician. I didn't say musician. Oh, I, I said, said a... magician. Oh. Oh. So. Do I get another try? Well, I think in the view of the fact that you didn't understand what I said, it would be um, like... A magician. How about his rabbit, then? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, have all, I have always prided myself on my enunciation. Yes, that's right. And all this time, she thought I was saying musician, I and too. I was saying magician. That's right. I thought you said musician, too. Did you say that's fiddle, funny. dummy? I thought you said Harry. <laughs> what I said. All right. Uh, Clifton, yeah. you're up. Well, I didn't think it was so weird, but uh, he's starting to go to bed with his wand. With his wand. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thanks so much for the magician. <laughs> that's right. He's no, that's a good. fairy musician. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, turn to dirt. Okay. <laughs> Let me see your oh, card. Of course, please. I need a pick of it before you die. <laughs> oh, go. If he doesn't stop being a point killer, I am going to stab him in the forehead. <laughs> point killer. Bunny. And Bunny. Bunny. Okay. Same There's to one. you. Same to you, fella. Bunny. Oh, There's two. So suddenly rabbits are springing out of the hat. What do you offer this lady? You know, you what? looked at it. Yes, I did peek. <laughs> well, because we think so much alike with musician and magician, I said rabbit. Rabbit. That's three, Mary. All right. Now Dawson will pull another rabbit out of the hat. That wouldn't bother me if I was married to a magician. What would make me very nervous is if he came to bed with his lady assistant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two, three, four. What do you say, Fan? Oh, gosh. Um, what do I say? Rabbit. Rabbit. Okay. That's pretty good for the first round question. Four for you. None for you, Jackie. You got to go to work when we get back here for round two right after this message. Here we go. Round two coming up. All right, Jackie. What do you want, A or B? A again. A again. Everybody plays. I'm going to do better now. I swear. You're going to do better? Oh, All right. No, you're doing okay, Clifford. Oh, Don't yeah. worry about it. Count Dracula said, The Transylvania National Bank just foreclosed on my loan. <laughs> By dark of night, they came and repossessed my blank. <laughs> Dark of night. By dark of night, they came and repossessed my blank. My blank. 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 Oh. Please don't talk about me. When I'm when gone, I'm gone. Oh. it must be wonderful to be dead. To be really dead must be wonderful. 
Are you finished? Brett and Gary, will you finish? Okay. I'm ready finish. when you are, kiddo. I'm just waiting Here for you. Here we go. <laughs> Count Dracula said the Transylvania National Bank just foreclosed on my loan. By dark of night, they came and repossessed my blood. Blood. My blood? There were two. Another one that I liked, too. What was your second choice? Coffin. Coffin. I think you just nailed down the lid. <laughs> Okay, her first choice is one we have to go with because those are the rules, and blood was her answer. Clifton, what do you say? No, no. He no. didn't have a place to sleep after they came in the night and took his casket. Yes. Okay, good answer. All right, Brett. It's odd the bank usually does take your blood. Yes, they do. But in do. this particular instance, he did take the casket. The casket. Got to match everybody else to stay in the game, Jackie. All right, Gary. I'm sorry, I said casket. Casket was the answer. You said blood. Pleasure to meet you. We'll have a gift for you together with our thanks for being there. There goes Jackie Clark. And here comes a commercial message for you. Oh, there you are. I thought you were over there. Listen, uh, your program, MASH, Nash won one of Nash. CBS's biggest hit shows, won an award. Well, tell us about it won that. won the, the National Academy of Humor Award yeah. for the funniest comedy series on television. It and is funny. Kind of funny That's very also, good. Also, we're all very proud of you. Also, That's Pinky Lee won for dancing. an Al Martino <laughs> farewell tour. <laughs> Same to you, fella. <laughs> you tell a fat lady. Now, is there anything else we can do for anybody else? Yes, you have an announcement? No, I have. I did the Bob <laughs> Crane show. It'll be on a year from yesterday. <laughs> I just want to keep it moving along. Okay. I don't want people terrific. to think I'm sitting home alone and lonely. Ask her a coffin question. I around for this National Academy of Humor thing, and I am happy to say I voted for Match because it. Oh, you was voted nice. for Match. I, really yeah. I was also I nominated for, yourself. for Best Supporting Actor, but I didn't win. I won. No, you didn't. All right. <laughs> Pinky That's Lee. That's the way won. it is. You can't oh. win them all, Gary. Gene Rayburn, Match Game 75. Join us next time. Goodbye. <laughs> This is Johnny Olsen speaking from Match Game 75, a Mark Hudson, Bill Tubman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales next over most of the CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Clifton Davis, Brett Summers, Gary Berghoff, Joanne Clue, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Fly as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rayburn. It hurts there, that's why. <laughs> you know why it hurts there? Why? What is it? Because they got something. <laughs> oh my God, he's got a pacemaker. No. Oh. <laughs> my liver is in trouble. Oh, oh did you like this? Yeah. Do you remember making a statement on several occasions in this program? That Tarzan and Jane were never married. You made that statement on this program. Right. This lady from Kansas City sent us a book by yeah. Edgar Rice Burroughs called The Return of Tarzan. Yeah, let me see. And on page. the last page, you want to read the last uh, paragraph? I bet they've just printed it now no. that I've exposed <laughs> the no, demo. <laughs> this is an old book. Oh, they can just age read. Page. All right. Read that right there. There's a read that. And just... so it was arranged inside the cabin that had been his father's, the great Tarzan, queen of the jungle. Lord of the jungle. <laughs> Jungle. What is Lord of the Jungle was married to Professor Porter. No, by, <laughs> Professor, by, by Professor, Professor Porter. Porter. To the lovely Jane. It was then Hazel's turn. <laughs> It was then Hazel's turn. <laughs> that was it. He was a bigamist. No! 
Read that whole last sentence. It was then Hazel's turn with Lord Tennington. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> but anyway. I'll take this. That was a bit of a the lady. <laughs> That's what it said. Did you, did you, Violet Van Horn of Topeka, first? Kansas, sent that to you right. to prove that Tarzan and Jane were married. I, I don't ever Hazel want you to make that maid. statement again. Well, I'll withdraw then. They were married, but they also had affairs with Hazel. And <laughs> With Tarzan, I never could understand well, how, how he all, I mean, like, how our people were there for thousands of years, and this kid could come in one day and just talk yeah. to all the elephants, and we went uber, uber. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody could talk to them, we could, you know? What do you say to that, Perry Jones? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Here we are. Perry Jones has won his first game. He's got his $100 for winning the game. Now he will try for over $5,000. Ready, Perry? Yes, sir. How long have you been on the Los Angeles Police Force? Almost nine years. Wow. Terrific. Is it interesting work? Very interesting. Okay. If you win here, you may find this more interesting. Right. Right. <laughs> All right, Perry. We polled a recent studio audience. We got their best response to this. Blank to you. <laughs> I hate to say that to a cop, but uh, there it is, Perry. Blank to you. Now, the answer that audience gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. $250 if you match the next one. $100 if you go down there with the bottom one there. Which celebrities would you like a little assist from? Richard. And the same to you. Yeah. The same to you, he said. Thank you. Clifton. Clifton, what do you say? Nuts to you. Yeah, but what's your answer? <laughs> Don't get smart with me, boy. Okay, that's two. Ball was Fanny. Uh -huh. Fanny? Fanny. Happy birthday to you. Yeah! Happy birthday to you. That's, that's good. good. Yeah. That you have good news and bad news for us, Fanny? I, I have good news and bad news. Oh. I went to the doctor, and he said that I'm going to have to wear glasses, and I brought them. <laughs> Which? <laughs> well, you gotta get on with it oh, now. I just want to know which side is the bad news. That's all. I think. <laughs> oh. all right. Now you've got nuts to you, the same to you, and happy birthday to you. Perry, do you want to choose one of those or think up an answer of your own as the answer? Go on, Clifton. Nuts to you. Nuts to you. About two-thirds of the audience think you're right. We'll find out if you're right or wrong, and if nuts to you is up there, and if so, where? May we see the bottom response, the $100 response, the same to you. That's the one that Richard gave you. Okay, we're looking for nuts to you. Here is the $250 response. Nuts to you. Do you think Fanny's answer is going to be under the top I think response? That's the best one. I, what I do you do think? Too. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you! Okay, the audience thinks it's happy birthday. Let's find out what it is right now. Happy birthday! You're right. Well done. Okay. Well now, Perry, you're up to three hundred and fifty dollars. You're going to play now for two thousand five hundred dollars. But to collect that amount, you've got to match one of them head to head, and it has to be an exact one. Which one will it be? I'll try Clifton. You're going to try Clifton, all right? You face me, if you would, please, sir. Clifton, you get ready to write <coughs> your response to this. Cool blank. Cool blank. C-O-O-L blank. Just uh, put the first thing that comes to your well, head. Well, I your did, first... baby, and I'm going to see what happens. Uh, okay. I'm ready. Okay, you yeah. ready. Please. All right. There it is. Now, he's finished. And, Perry, we need an answer from you, which you think will match his. Get down. Cool blank. Man. Cool man. <laughs> cool man. Well, we'll find out how cool Clifton is right now. For $2,500, he says cool man will match you. What do you say? We were in the same ballpark. Uh, I'm, it's cool cat, I said. Oh, you, say? Whoa, you were in the same ballpark. Same ballpark. You had cool man? Cool what did you have? 
I had Cool Whip. Cool, cool Whip. whip. No. <laughs> Sorry, Perry. No. Ah, cool whip right. there. All right. Well, listen, Perry, you got your 350. You're going to meet another player right now and play another game. You ready for that? Right. Okay, let's bring on Judy Jennings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Judy, you know, Perry. Do I see Fanny Flagg before me here? Didn't you wear one of those once mm -hmm. that Judy's wearing? That's, That's Laurel and Hardy, right? I'm a little short of Fanny. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same one. She sells them tell backstage. Tell us more. Would you uh, tell us about Judy Jennings, if you please? I'm married to a masonry contractor. We have two teenagers, a 10-year-old and a baby. That's impossible. And I'm very happy to be here. Well, we're very happy to have Judy Jennings with us here. We wish you the very best of luck. We'll have a go at this game right after we have a go at this message for you. Now we shall begin at the beginning and ask Judy to make a selection. Be please. All right. Here we go. Bert Park said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bert Park said, I couldn't believe it. In the talent portion of the Miss America contest, Miss Iowa blanked an ear of corn. In the talent portion of the Miss America contest, Miss Iowa blanked an ear of corn. Did you hear that, Judy? Miss Iowa blanked an ear of corn. Do I have to play? Yes, everybody plays. We have a new First player. round question, new That's game. Why everybody Sorry, Ma. Right from the top. There. Fanny, dear, what's trouble? I was just that, just question Listen, brought no, that. Uh, just do your thing, then. If they're all finished down here. We're waiting for you oh, slow folks up oh, here. Oh, I'm now. already. Miss Iowa blanked an ear of corn. I know how, know what the question is. Did the music stop? No. Oh. Just slow no, down a little. No, you've gone deaf, sweetheart. All right, Biff, finish that. That's it. Okay, you got it. All right. Oh, well, I, if I've Why got it. never think of it? Call me a doctor. Now, Judy. Bert Park said, I couldn't believe it. In the talent portion of the Miss America contest, Miss Iowa blanked an ear of corn. Eight. Eight ear of corn. Ta da da. Da 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 da. What do you say there, Clifton? Do you she dance? Said, no. Uh, Will you dance? No. <laughs> not with you. What, I <laughs> with hope her, not. All right. If you, I would dance with you if you're letting me lead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she ate it there. I think she just skinned it right back. She shucked it. She shucked an ear of corn. Yeah. <laughs> Good answer. Shucked an ear of corn on stage, slowly, you know, peel by peel, <laughs> stalk by stalk. What do you say? I say that little Judy is as big as a minute and full of the devil. Really? <laughs> yes. You did do And uh, I say... Smart as a whip. Eight. 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 There it is. There's one for you, Judy. Now show them yours. Peel by peel, stock by stock. Yeah. It was shuck like a strip shuck. tease. She shucked an ear of corn, you and see. Shuck by shuck. Shuck by shuck. All right. All right. Shucked an ear of corn. That's two shucks and one eight. And what do you say? I think that Judy's adorable. I like her style and the way she thinks. Oh, there's there. another one for you. Now, would you put the book down, Richard? <laughs> Richard! Later that night, Tarzan went to a no. topless <laughs> bar. <laughs> topless <laughs> bar? Tarzan didn't go to the... Everybody was topless in the jungle. <laughs> Son of shucked. Shucked yeah. an yeah. ear of corn. Right. Well, all right, so far, all we had is shuck an ear of corn or eat an ear of corn. Uh, what do you say? Oh, Judy. One from column A. Get, get, get... My turn. No. Uh, yes. You know, that question makes me very sad. I was in the Miss Alabama pageant seven years in a row and never won. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, because I would become over-emotional about losing and run up and hit the winner. <laughs> <laughs> the talent numbers, I, I did have a great talent number. I played two grand pianos while standing in authentic Mississippi mud. But this girl ate a... Ate hey, this girl. Girl. Oh, Now, first round question for Perry. Everybody plays. When Fanny Flag roller skates, <laughs> she falls down a lot. So she puts an extra pair of roller skates on her blank. <laughs> Fanny Flag roller skates. Think about that, Perry. She falls down a lot, so she puts an extra pair of roller skates on her blank. You got the picture? Got the picture. All right, we'll ask you in a moment or so for your picture. Hurry up, Jerry. Why do you always rush me? Jeepers. Jeepers. Coming, Mother. Okay. Put Jeepers it in the slot. Jeepers, America. Yeah. <laughs> do not delay. 
It's always rushing me. There I am. Rush, rush, oh, here rush. Here we go. Wonderful world Perry Jones. When Fanny flagged roller skates, she falls down a lot. So she puts an extra pair of roller skates on her... Uh, breast. <laughs> Blazoom, he said. Blazoom? Yep. <laughs> Is that what he said? That's right. Apparently she falls forward. I didn't know that. I thought so. <laughs> That's what he said. Clifton? I had another answer at first, yeah. but then I couldn't figure out how she'd be able to strap them on. <laughs> so I put down her boobies. <laughs> well, surprises me, Brett. Life is full it of surprises. doesn't surprise me at all. The it's... poor little devil is top-heavy. She never falls back. Which she always pitches forward, you so silly therefore, Billy. Yeah. I said boobs. <laughs> what did you say? I said Fanny. What Fanny, else? Fanny, this. Yes, yes. That's what I thought. I don't know. What do you think? I did too. I you thought did? it was a perfect play on words. Yes. Fanny. Fanny. Two roller skates. No. One on each cheek. <laughs> what do you say? Well, that's what you said. Pardon? Let <laughs> me see your answer. Derriere. Derriere. <laughs> okay, that's two fannies and two boobs. What do you say? Do you realize that the parts of my body have been banded about upon yes. this <laughs> We're banding your body. I do fall forward and I fall on my little face. <laughs> Put roller skates on your face? <laughs> you are some dumb broad, you know that? She was a holy roller. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so where are we here? End of round one, score is three to two in favor of Judy Jennings. Go to round two. I push a button and the thing slides down slowly. Judy? B, please. B. Three do not play. Brett does not play. Joanne does not. And Fanny does not. Confucius say. <laughs> Confucius say, man who make date with chicken. <laughs> End up with Brank on face. God? Oh, am I glad I don't have that? That I don't need to Don't say what if you don't play. Don't say what, that's all. <laughs> well, don't I say what if you don't play. Tell me, what are you? Don't talk if you don't play. Don't do nothing. <laughs> Just say that. Could I go to the Brank? You can't go to Brank. Not in the middle of the show. You can't go to Brank. I told you, go before we go on the air. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know Confucius was Japanese. No, he's not Japanese. He's Chinese. Chinese. But then he's Czechoslovakian. Huh? Everybody heard right? He's doing a West Indian accent. Okay, here we go with Judy Jennings. Confucius say, man who make date with chicken end up with brank on face. Egg. Egg on face. Oh. I know you're a show business. You're supposed to be funny, but she's pretty funny, too. Oh. She say, egg on face. Egg on face. What do you say? Oh, I, I come close. I try to figure out how the guy, where he had his head, but he got egg on his face. Egg on his face. <laughs> Gary, what do you say, Judy, old bean? You're a very clever woman. I wish our writers had thought of that egg. Oh. Yeah. All right. Now, Richard. Do you know he opened the first hamburger hamlet? <laughs> <laughs> So at this moment in the middle of round two, it's six to two in favor of Judy, and your second round question will come along a little bit later. Right now it says here on page 160, you stop for a commercial dingbat and pass along this message, okay? Here we go. Middle of round two, gonna finish up here. Now, Perry Jones, you must match four celebrities to stay in the game and achieve a tie. This is his second round question. Clifton and Brett do not play. Everyone else because does. Because we're smart, even though we were poked fun at. Mm. Right. Mm. To end with a preposition. One stewardess said to the other, you'd better run into the cockpit and turn off the intercom. The passengers can hear the pilot blanking. <laughs> Cockpit and turn off the intercom. The passengers can hear the pilot blanking. All right. All set. That's okay. Good. Now we come over here, Perry Jones. Answer, Gary. Now think carefully before you respond. One stewardess said to the other, 
you'd better run into the cockpit and turn off the intercom. The passengers can hear the pilot blanking. Snoring. Snoring. Got to match everybody. Got to get four snorings to stay in the game. Gary, does he match you? Oh, yes, he does. Yes, he does. There's one, Gary. Now the ball is in your court. You want a home run? Yes. Okay. Snoring. Snoring. All right, Gary, that's two down and two to go. There are always two pilots, so that wouldn't concern me if I heard one of them snoring. No? When you hear him praying that you're in Then you're in trouble. Let's... Judy Jennings wins the game. What do you have, Judy? Congratulations. All right. Judy is our new champion. We got to say goodbye to Perry, but he's got a smile on his face because he's leaving with a little bundle of cash. Right. There are $350. <laughs> Perry, it was a pleasure having you. Good night. Are you thinking your luck is going to run out here? No, not No, yet. indeed not. She's got her $100, and she's going to have a go at the big money super match here. Shall we have a go at it? Why not? All right, we pulled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank Lane. Uh, now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500, remember, then $250, and then $100. Three celebrities are allowed to help. Whom do you choose? Fanny. Fanny? Frankie Lane. Frankie Lane is what Fanny Flag says. Um... Richard. Richard, what do you say? The lady who was involved with, was it Superman? Uh, Lola Lane? Lois Lane. Oh, Lois. Lola Lane sang with Fred Waring. Mm. Well, God bless her, her for that. I'll yes. say Lois. <laughs> you say Lois Lane. And her sister Priscilla. And? and all right, one more. Joanne. Priscilla. Joanne. He should have took me. Uh, or me. I can just think of, uh, you know, a highway Joanne. term. What? Joanne. Clifton. Oh, how about Lover's Lane? Yeah. How about Lover's Lane? It came out of the black, is what it came out of. It's all right. Yeah. All right. So you got blue and gold, black, but the blue is all and you got Frankie Lane. You want to choose one of those, Judy, or give us one of your own? I'll take Lover's Lane. Okay, follow me. <laughs> Lover's Lane. Uh, she said Lover's Lane. Is that what you said? Okay, Lover's Lane is what she said, and that's one she hopes is up there in a high position, like $500, right? Let's start at the bottom, Judy, and find out what is under the $100 response. Memory Lane. How soon they forget. Well, she went out with Superman as well. She went out there. <laughs> All right, we are looking for Lover's Lane. Here's a $250 response. Abby Lane. You all remember him. Okay, last chance for Lover's Lane. Here is the $500 response. Lover's Lane! Congratulations. Okay. Now, you got the $500. Should we try this? Okay, you're going to play for $5,000. Which one celebrity do you want to try and match? Richard. Okay, Richard, get ready to Richard! Right. Well, I Here's gave her a little explanation. Let's see what we can do. It. Quiet. He's psychic. Bath blank. That's B-A-T-H. Bath blank. Okay, he is finished. Now, Judy, what response do you give us to match him? Bath? Tub. Bath tub. All right, Richard, for $5,000, may we see your answer? Bathroom. Bathroom. That was a hard one. Bathtub, bathroom, bathroom. Very good. Oh, all right. All right, you stand by, Judy. We're going to pass along this little message for you. Here we go. And as all the time, we have Gene Raver to match game seven. Goodbye. Thank you. Last is Johnny Olsen speaking for match game 75. I'm Mark Hudson, Bill Cotton, and the Ducky. Get ready to match the stars. Avery Shriver, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Joanne Flute, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flag as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 76. And 
such a warm reception. I'll go out and you can do it again. <laughs> Shall we begin? Yes, yeah, sure. Oh, yes, dear. No, uh, no preliminaries at all. Straight to the... Straight order. to the... All right. Is that all right with That's you? That's right. Carry on. No beginnings of... Mm -mm. What the heck is that? That's the Marine emblem. Oh, it yeah. is. Really? <laughs> and you're a corporal. I'm a right? corporal. Really? All right, I think I'll promote Best you. Shape the Marines has been in in nine years. <laughs> That's right. Now, let's say hello to Julie Wingate and Greg Todd. Hi. You all right? Yes. Good. Julie's our current champion. She has a total of $4,050 to her credit. And uh, you can do a little more than pay bills with that, can't you, Julie? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Greg is challenging her, and uh, so far he's successful because this game ended up in a tie. And what we're going to have to do, well, I'll tell you what we'll do when we get through with this commercial message, and then we'll wait. Yeah, we'll do all that. So you go back and go away and come back. And, uh... Ready? I push this button, and uh, what happened? Oh, first I've got to get rid of these two fours here and turn off all those lights. Now zero to zero, we go to the tiebreaker. And uh, one question for each of you. The one who matches the most celebrities will be the winner. Greg, will ask you to make your selection, A or B. I'll take A this time, Gene. A? All right, you got one shot at it, and then this is it. Okay. The first time Bonnie went parachuting... She missed the ripcord and pulled her blank off instead. <laughs> the first time Bonnie went parachuting, she missed the ripcord and pulled her blank off instead. I got it. There are two okay. terrific choices. Yes, indeed. And uh, Brett will be ready in a moment, Greg. And then we'll call on you. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. All right, I'll give it to you one more time as soon as Brett's finished. Well, uh, well I... Brett, what are you doing? Well, I, there are two choices, and I can't decide on which okay, one to Okay, now she's Snap ready, Greg. There. First time Bonnie went parachuting, she missed the ripcord and pulled her blank off instead. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> bra strap. Hey, bra strap. Geronimo! <laughs> Geronimo's busting out all over. Geronimo's busting out all over. And I say to move it along, bra. Her bra. There it is. One for Greg. <laughs> what do you say, Brad? Boy, am I getting lucky. After all that decision making, I finally came up with bra. What was the other one? Oh, Charles? I don't know if I'm playing the game right, bra. Bra, that's right. <laughs> if you've got a bra, you're playing the game right. <laughs> Hello, Joanne. Oh, hi, Jane. Uh, she missed the ripcord and pulled her blank off instead, and Greg said bra. I'm glad he did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you say that? Well, I always thought the ripcord was up here. No, that's the static line. <laughs> I don't know. I never jumped before. Really? Oh, that's the statue of liberty. <laughs> the only thing I could come close to that was up here. It's yeah. a rotten answer. <laughs> <laughs> Be nice to a guest, Brett. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Show your card there. I said a wig. A wig. She's going to get the Marines after you. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Listen, sir. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> what do you say, Richard? During Wake Island, you didn't boo the Marines, did you? That's right. Thank you. You're doing great work. <laughs> Bra. Bra, it is. Four for good. Okay. Fanny, now hear this. The first time Bonnie went parachuting, she missed the ripcord and pulled her bra off instead. Yeah, you should tell the end of the story. What? She lived, because she pulled a little bra stat and went Rrr, all the way down. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm an individual. 
I dare say, Fanny. If she went like that, or all the way down, it must have been at least a Q cup. Or a R. R. I mean, or. Hick. What are, or what? Hick. So, what did you do, Greg? Pick up. Five. Pick up. Hey, that's pretty good. You got your work cut out for you, Julie. <clears throat> Got a match five to tie, six to win. Hey, did you hear what happened to the India rubber man? Yeah, I heard uh, that. You heard that? I know. Well, then I can't do <laughs> that question, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the India rubber man? Two muggers. <laughs> <laughs> Two muggers blew him up with a bicycle pump, uh -huh. and then they blanked him. <laughs> <laughs> the India Rubber Man. Yeah. Two muggers blew him up with a bicycle pump, and then they blanked him. Now, there's one marvelous answer. That's terrific. You got it. Okay. Very good. I'm a little okay, unsure. Okay, Right. Avery's ready. I'm ready, ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. All right, we come over here to Julie Wingate. Julie, did yes. you hear what happened to the India rubber man? Yes. You did hear? Yes. Then you don't want to hear the rest of the question. <laughs> uh, no, uh, two muggers blew him up with a bicycle pump, and then they blanked him. They popped him. Popped him. <laughs> now, we need five pops to tie, six to win, Avery. <laughs> There it is. One for Julie. Brett? I wasn't so cruel. I said they bounced him. They bounced him. <laughs> Bad. Bad choice. Bad choice, Brett. Ha! I'm an heiress. <laughs> do you hear that? She's an heiress. She doesn't need your money. What do you say, If that Marine yells at my chick again, I'm going to floor him. <laughs> Didn't go over. Uh, <laughs> I said I'm sorry, launched him. They launched him, so that means Greg wins the game. Pop, 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 okay. Now you stand by there for a moment or so. Listen, you missed it by one. Did you see what the yellows had? They all have popped and burst, and, uh, oh. but that's the way it goes, Julie. You've got $4,050. Yes, I do. Thanks for being with us. Julie, bring that while she's spinning off. We'll spin these messages just for you. Here we are. This is the first time uh, Greg Todd's been up here. He's won $100. Now he has a chance to win over $5,000. How about that? He's all right speechless. <laughs> yeah, I, yes. Anything we can do for you? Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Oh, okay, Greg. <laughs> now listen, Greg. We polled a recent studio audience. We got their best response to this. Blank afternoon. Now, the answer that group gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the second most frequently given response, you get $250. The third gets you $100. Now, whom do you call on over here for a little bit of help? Well, I'm going to call on Richard for my sister. Richard? For, now, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to call on Richard for your sister. Yeah, well, she told me when I, when I told her I was coming on the show, she told me to call on Richard. Okay. Well, listen, I'll call on her. She sounds like a nice guy. Uh, Come on. Why not? Sure. Okay. Get back, you devils. <laughs> it's a lazy afternoon. It's a lazy afternoon. And I always match bread at home. You always match bread at home? Let's see how you do here. Well, there were so many choices, and the, so I'm going to go for, because there's, uh, I'm going to go for the, for the movie, Dog Day Afternoon. Dog Day Afternoon? And Fanny. Fanny, Fanny honey, have you got one? <laughs> no, but they do. Um, I say early afternoon. No. You want to do your reading on that. Early. You could do. <laughs> That's it. Early afternoon, eh? It's the best you can do. Okay, now you got those three. Dog day afternoon. It's a lazy afternoon and early afternoon. Now, you may choose one of those, Greg, or give us one of your own. My first thought was Sunday afternoon. It was. That was Is that what you want? Sunday afternoon. Okay. Greg is on his own. 
He says he wants Sunday afternoon. He thinks that's what the audience said, and it's entirely his choice. So let's find out if Sunday afternoon is up there, and if so, where. May we see the $100 response? You got it right off the bat. Okay. Cool it. Let's see what's under the 250. Early. Good, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I always thought it was good morning. Uh, <laughs> all right. What do you think's under the big one? Dog day. The audience says dog day is under the big one. Let's see the big one, Earl. Dog day. That's the one that Brett gave you. For my first time. Very good, Brett. Now, you've got $100. That means you have a total of 200 at this moment. And, Greg, we're going to... Multiply that 100 by 10, uh, which means 1,000, and that's what you're playing for right now. To collect it, however, you've got to match one celebrity, and this has to be an exact match. It's time to choose one now. Brett. Okay, oh. Brett. <laughs> Brett, he says he always matches you when he watches the program from at home and uh, plays along with us. I think we'll I'm having a How you do now. All right, both okay. of you get your thinking caps <clears throat> going here and get a little ESP going between you. Blank stamp. S T A M P blank stamp. Blank. Blank. Blank stamp. Blank stamp. I I got it. Brett's finished. Now, Greg, we ask you to come up with an answer which you think will match hers. What do you say to that blank stamp? The only thing a postage stamp. Is that all you can think of? Well, I suppose there are other answers, too. Brett, we'll find out from you right now if he does indeed match you for a thousand. What do you say? You always match me at home, huh? Yeah. I wish I'd never read that bloody Los Angeles Times because they were talking about food stamps. But I said post again. Anyway. $200. What are you going to do with that money? Oh, is he yeah. happy? Too bad he's All right. While well, he's getting it together there and calming down a little bit, let's welcome another player. Here comes Deborah Kelly. Hey. Greg, you can climb aboard now. I guess you two know each other, and we welcome Deborah Kelly. And we ask you to tell us the Deborah Kelly story. Oh, the Deborah Kelly story. Well, I'm originally from Walla Walla, Washington, and I moved to Santa Barbara a couple years ago, planning to go to school. Uh huh. And what I didn't plan on was meeting a handsome young man and becoming engaged. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, we can. <laughs> We can change all that, can't we? Yes, <laughs> And we started a business, and when I have any time left over, I enjoy cooking, and I do photographic modeling. And now, what did you say about a business? Uh, we own, we started a wholesale retail manufacturing pipe and jewelry business. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, that sounds Santa like Barbara. A, it's very interesting. Well, good luck in that venture, and good luck here, too, Deborah. Thank you. Now, shall we begin? You may have A or B. B for B. B it is. Okay. Are you all ready? Everybody plays now. Snow White said. <laughs> she said. <laughs> You're interrupting Snow White. <laughs> she can be very mean. <laughs> Snow White said, I just invented a terrific new appliance. It's an electric dwarf blanker. <laughs> Dwarf blanker. Oh, I love my answer. It's an electric dwarf blanker. I love my answer. I bet you do. An electric dwarf blanker. Dwarf blanker? Dwarf blanker. Yeah. Listen, you did a movie, didn't you? Yes, I did. I did What's a it called? Movie. It's uh, called The Blarney Cock. The Blarney Cock. Yes. You made that in Mexico, did you? Yes, it's a pirate movie at Universal. We made it in Mexico. Right? Now, what, is it a period piece? Yes. 
From what it's century? From like, uh, oh, mid 1800s. Yeah. About the pirates in the Caribbean. Yeah. Will it be out soon? It'll be out in June. Yeah. Which is soon for Christmas. Sure, that's right. <laughs> and what kind of part you play? I play a pirate. Yeah. I played a pirate named Polanski. Really? Polish My pirate? wife was telling me that you did all of almost all of your own stunts in it. Yes, I did. And some of them were tough. And you've lost yes. weight since we've seen you. Well, of course. Take a look. Oh, Take look, look at his beautiful body. All right, everybody ready? Okay. Yes. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that. What was the question? <laughs> Hello, Deborah. Hello. <laughs> Snow White said, I just invented a terrific new appliance. It's an electric dwarf blanker. Dwarf blanker. <laughs> oh, dwarf blanker. Um, giant maker? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, what? Giant maker. Uh, <laughs> uh, giant maker. A dwarf uh, so small, I don't know. Oh, to make a dwarf bigger? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Whatever it is, it's an electric appliance to make a dwarf bigger. Well, I What'd you say? There were so many of them that she needed an electric dwarf sorter. A sorter. A dwarf sorter. All right, Brett. Now, this may come as an absolute shock and surprise to all of you. Why? <laughs> I said a dwarf stretcher. Dwarf stretcher. <laughs> Okay. I told you I love my answer. Yeah, that is a good answer indeed. All right, Charles? She was into, <coughs> among other things, photography. Yes. So she had a dwarf enlarger. A dwarf enlarger. Two for Deborah. Deborah, you thought this was going to be a disaster, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. All right, it's Joanne. I invented, just invented a terrific new appliance. It's an electric dwarf stretcher or make her bigger or something like that i i just put the first part what's that because they're so handy around the house to do things yeah that she made a mold and she was going to pour it and make make them maker a dwarf maker mm -hmm. yeah that is quite unlike a stretcher <laughs> now richard it's up to you sir they turn on you so fast yes here. they do right right Funny, they have no Very loyalty fickle bunch. <laughs> well they were always <laughs> messing around with her you know Oh, they were. <laughs> oh, truly. Never really? had a moment's peace. I never heard that. So she invented an electric dwarf warmer. <laughs> <laughs> Called the fire. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it just kept them away. Yes, of course. They're as okay. happy as larks. <laughs> Fanny, give us an answer here that makes you sense. You think that girl's ah. life was easy with those 12 drawers all by herself? A little thing? She did... Number seven. She, what, how many? Seven. Well, seven. she invented a dwarf killer. <laughs> I love her. Right? <laughs> and this... Uh, this electric uh, dwarf killer was called uh, uh, a, a shotgun, shotgun was it? Yeah. Okay, so that's two for you, Deborah, and your first rounder will be along in a moment or so, but right now, this for you. <laughs> Today's Constellation Prizes are a matched set of Regal's decorated Harvest Aluminum Waterless Cookware with Teflon 2 and matching Poly Fresh Coffee Maker, all from Regal Wear. And a waffle grill from Staley Syrup. Naturally thick, naturally rich Staley Syrup with rich country breakfast flavor enjoyed by Americans for 50 years. And cosmetics from Mary Kay for your skin care, including an assortment of Mary Kay creams, lotions, glamour, makeup, and men's toilet grease. Keen as the old guy goes, who is that lady I saw you with? That was no lady, that was my blank. I love you. Masking 76 with Gene Rayburn will fill him in when he returns in oh, one God, minute. Wonderful. Now we're ready to carry on here. Are you ready? Yes. This is your first round question. Listen carefully now. They're a little bit tougher. Georgie is the world's greatest salesman. Mm. Yesterday, <laughs> he sold a padded bra to Blink. <laughs> now that's some salesman. Oh, I got it. I got it. World's greatest salesman sold a padded bra to Blink. Well, two great answers. I think I'll go with my. <laughs> ba -ba -ba. <laughs> ba -ba -ba -ba. All right, let's go. Come on now. Charles. <laughs> ready, Charles? Okay, wait. Now. Wait, ready? I'm sorry. Oh, honey, you like there's no bowl of cherries with him on the job. You didn't see the speed up, speed up single, did you, Charles? Uh, hello, Greg. 
George is the world's greatest salesman. Yesterday he sold a padded bra to... Since she's here, Fanny Flagg. Fanny Flagg. is indeed carrying coals to Newcastle. <laughs> Avery! He's a great salesman, right? So yeah. he sold it to Annette Funicello, I felt. <gasps> Annette Funicello. Uh, uh, Brack. Hey, 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 hey. That's enough. Come on back. What? There we go. Speed up. Go. What do you mean, speed up? Of course, speed up. Fanny Floyd! Yeah. Fanny Floyd! Go ahead. Marie Benedetti. Marie Benedetti, a friend of yours? No, but you should see her. Raquel Welch. Oh. But you should see Marie Benedetti. I see. <laughs> Go ahead. I thought of Fanny, but it was the last too late. I said Raquel. Raquel Welch. And Richard? Fanny. 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 Look at Charo. Charo. Wow. <laughs> two to two at the end of round one. Now this message for you. Oh, we just have five seconds to say goodbye. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Say goodbye. Bye. Team Bye. everybody join us next time. Next time. Next time. Goodbye. This is John Wilson speaking for Match Game 76. Omar Goodson, Bill Topman production. Stay tuned for Title Tales next on the most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the star. Dick Gaudier. Brett Summer. Charles Nelson Riley. Joanne Blue. From Family Feud, Richard Dawson. And Fanny Flagg. As we play the star-studded big money match game, PM. And now, here's the star of Match Game PM, Gene Raver. We greet you. We thank you for joining us. We thank you for joining us because it'd be bad without you. Now, would you join me in applauding Charlotte Farrell and Bill Seffers? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Gaudier is giving you a standing ovation. You look like a handsome couple there. We want to find out a little bit about you. Bill, we'll begin with you. Okay. I'm from New Jersey. I'm a retired New York City detective. Hmm. I'm visiting my son, Navy pilot. Yep. I have my wife in the audience and a daughter back in New York. Well, you got a rooting section on both coasts. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck to you, Bill Seffers. Thank you. And you, Charlotte, where are you from and all that sort of thing? Thank you. I am from Hawaii. Yeah. And um, I'm a domestic engineer. And my husband is an airline pilot. Yeah. And he flies to the Micronesian Islands. Uh-huh. And you have pierced ears. I do indeed. Those are very pretty, aren't they? Thank you. They were my great-grandmothers. Really? Indeed. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. <laughs> now, I want to point out to each of you here that on Match Game PM, we'll give each of you three opportunities to match as many of them as you can. And the one who has done that most often at the end of the third round will be the winner. And we'll go on to play that big money super match, which can pay off over $10,000. You ready for that? Okay, here we go. Bill will ask you to make the first choice. You may have A or B. I'll take B. You want B? You uh, bent your microphone there, Bill. Yes, sir. That's uh, in your enthusiasm. You bent it a little bit. That's that's three marks against you there now. <laughs> All right, here we go. Bob said, "My wife must be an impressionist." On our wedding night, she did an impression of a blank. <laughs> That's what Bob said. I love, I, I hope this is going to work. What is it again, Bill? Bob said, my wife must be an impressionist. On our wedding night, she did an impression That's of a blank. Oh, it's oh, War you. and Peace that he's writing. Hey! hey. hey. Now, Bill. Bob going? said, my wife must be an impressionist. On our wedding night, she did an impression of a blank. Dancing girl. A dancing girl. I don't feel so bad about mine now, Gene. 
Did you buy a round-trip ticket back to New Jersey? No, I'm driving. Oh, you're driving. Okay. What do you say here? He said a dancing girl. Impression I love his of a headache. Of a headache. <laughs> They're not to thrill with that either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Leave him alone. Brett? Isn't he cute? He's cute. I said she did an impression of an innocent. Of an innocent? Oh. I get it. Oh, she I understand. My other answer yes. Wasn't right. An innocent girl on her first night in a motel. <laughs> uh, first night in a motel. No, not at all. So there we have two of those and one of his. Now, what do you say, Joanne? On our wedding night, she did an impression of a. Of a ghost and made a disappearing act. That says, says all that. <laughs> it says all a that. ghost Please, and made a disappearing act. Yes. <laughs> oh well. So far, Exit. Bill. Dancing girl hasn't come up yet for no, Bill Seffers. No. She did an impression of a delighted rug maker, or as we call them, a happy hooker. Oh. <laughs> but just an impression. Just an impression. Okay, Fanny. Yes. <laughs> We've come to you. Yes, and I'm publicly embarrassed. I said, oh. <laughs> and rightly so, I said she did an impression of a car. <laughs> now, you may ask me why. Why? Uh, I hesitate, but I'm going to anyway. I said, why? she did, <laughs> because she took off. That's the only thing I can think of. Okay. I'll be picking up my check. Fanny. All right, Fanny. <laughs> no, Fanny, we're going to let you finish the show. Thank you. Don't worry about it. All right. All right. Now, Charlotte, we've got... Aren't, isn't this fun? Aren't you glad you came? Oh. There? Dr. Harris, the diet doctor, guarantees you'll lose weight. First, he cuts off your desserts. <laughs> then, he cuts off your snacks. <laughs> then, if that doesn't work, he cuts off your blank. <laughs> down here is ready. Now we go to Charlotte Farrell. Charlotte, Dr. Harris, the diet doctor, guarantees you'll lose weight. First he cuts off your desserts, then he cuts off your snacks, and then if that doesn't work, he cuts off your blank. Your legs. Your legs. We got two of a kind up here, haven't we? Okay. Your legs. Yes. Cuts off your legs. Can't be a dancing girl. I don't get it. Okay. I'd say cut off your mouth. Cut off your mouth. So then you couldn't eat no more. Let's I hear see. it for that one. All right, <laughs> Brett. That's not a popular favorite. It may come up yet. Uh, 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 evidently not. I said they cut off your tongue. Cut off your tongue. That seems that we're getting there. That's lukewarm, Charles. I like cut off your big mouth. You do. Well, yeah, then if you don't just, like it, you know, it I would mean, sew up your mouth, so that, you know, make it impossible for you to eat. Joanne, what'd you say? If that doesn't work, he cuts off your... I made it really tough. Cut off his head. Yeah! Oh, thank you. They're warming up a little bit here, yes. Richard. But there's no need to diet if your head's gone, darling. <laughs> well, that's the so point, The secret dear. is, look, Ma, no hand. No hand. Can't eat. Well, no one has really given... Oh, I see. No one has really given the definitive answer yet. Oh. We may get it from Fanny. Or I, oh, sorry, Chad. <laughs> I'd like to throw my answer on the mercy of the audience. I thought that he cut off the... <laughs> I, I'm really not a very good game player in this game, but if I, in this round, if I happen to be playing, I'd say first he cuts off your desserts, and he cuts off your snacks, and if that doesn't work, he cuts off your buns. <laughs> Mouth is the best answer. All right, right. Yes. so there we I'm are. Round one, no score. Or round two coming up yeah. right after this. Now, since we have zero to zero tie score here, and Bill went first last time, uh, Charlotte will ask you to go first this time. All right, I'll take B, please. Okay, here we go. Hey, did you hear about Ugly Edna and the cop? Oh. It's ought to be yours, Bill. And he, he took one look at her face and arrested her for blank. <laughs> About ugly Edna and the cop. Took one look at her face and arrested her for blank. Well, so what seems to be wrong with our little mother down there? 
Are you waiting for me? Yeah. Oh, I'm yep. sorry. She writes fast. She just thinks she's very got her answer, and I'll read it while she's finishing. Did you hear about Ugly Edna and the Comp? He took one look at her face and arrested her for indecent exposure. Indecent exposure. <laughs> she came up with a pretty good answer there. Yeah. Very good answer. Bravo! Indecent Yay! exposure. This is, this is probably a match. It's just a question of, of the judges not being hateful. I said defacing public property. No, you get a buzz on that one. That's different. Buzz off. Yeah. <laughs> Charles? The correct answer, of course. There is. it is. <laughs> Bless you. Hello there. Hi. He took one look at her face and arrested her for... Indecent exposure. There it is. Three for her. I was there, actually. You gave were there? Her, gave her a ticket for littering. Fanny, <laughs> <laughs> oh. were you there? <laughs> yes. And you know, bless her heart, she can't help but be ugly, but she could stay home. In decent exposure. <laughs> there it is. Three or four. Now, Bill, let's see if you catch up with your opponent there. Albert said, I'll never go back to that X-rated theater. The ushers all wear blank. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm almost there. Oh, I hope so. All right. This is yours, Bill, right? Ready? Here we go. You changing your mind? There you go. Albert said, I'll never go back to that X-rated theater. The ushers all wear blank. Clothing. Clothing. All right, Bill. That's the way you want to play it. I love your sense of humor, Bill. <laughs> you nearly killed me, okay. <laughs> I said they wear black masks and socks, and that's all. <laughs> black masks and socks, and that's all. I said you're not going to believe this. I said black socks and nothing else. That's you very said close. That's very close there. We almost, that you know what they're talking about, Bill? Oh, you don't know what they're talking about. All right, Charles. You must have seen the same movie. What party was that? <laughs> I said the Italian niente, which means nothing. Niente. In an X-rated movie, Bill, it would be niente. more likely that they would be wearing nothing than clothing, I would think, if you're going, yes. Yes, that's what I would think. Really? But Don't I made you? it easier to understand. I wrote in English what Charles said in Italian. Nothing. Nothing. And Richard? Could you read the question again? Albert said, I'll never go back to that X-rated theater. The ushers all wear... Raincoats. Raincoats. Oh, dear, check out. Fanny? Oh, that's a wonderful that's answer. It's a wonderful answer. Oh, it was difficult for me, but having had no experience. So, strangely enough, I said they all wore flashlights. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, there that we are. The score important. at the end of round two is four to nothing in favor of Charlotte. And since you're ahead, Charlotte, we'll ask you to go first. B, please. B, I'm two people like play. Me. Brett and Richard. Isn't that... Darling, That's what's come most over you? I think he's lost his touch. Charles. New York City is a strange place. When Norman went out on his window ledge to jump off, somebody blanked him. Got it! <laughs> Imagine, Imagine. and me being the only ones playing. That's you know, this series of sequence of questions that has been interesting, because uh, this really should have been one for him, having been a <laughs> detective in the East. New York City is a strange place. When Norman went out on his window ledge to jump off, Somebody blanked him. Mugged him. Somebody mugged him. All right, she's been watching the show. That's the traditional joke there. Brett, what do you say? What do you say, Richard? Now you go first. Oh, okay. I said, oh, I said mug. Mug. He's up to five. Now he'll show you his. Since well, yeah, that's what I said. That's what you said, mug. mug. So she's got them all. Okay, Charlotte. Bill, you ready to go to work? Yes, sir. Now, you've only been kidding around up until now. Now you're gonna give us a real answer, right? Okay, Bill, here it is. Hey, you all know that great song? Everything's coming up, Rose. Yeah. You know that song there. Well, there's a new song about Burbank. Oh, no. It's called, Everyone's Blanking Their Noses. <laughs> oh, everyone. What? 
Okay, Gypsy. Everybody ready over here? We go to back to Bill Suffers. Now, Bill, you got to match everybody to achieve a tie and stay in the game. Think carefully now. You know the song, Everything's Coming Up Roses? And there's a new song about Burbank. It's called Everyone's Blanking Their Noses. Picking. Everyone's picking. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bill. <laughs> a little touch of hostility. I, I said holding. Holding. So that means Charlotte Farrell wins the game. What the rest of you have? Everyone's low. At least they're picking. Okay. Come on down, Charlotte. Picking. Here you go. Now you uh, hang around over there on the tape, and we congratulate you, and we'll get back to you in a moment. We're going to say goodbye to Bill Seffers. Listen, it was a pleasure to meet you. My pleasure. We've got gifts for you, together with our thanks for being with us here on Match Game PM. Bill okay. Seffers, goodbye. Now while we're spinning him off, we'll spin these messages for you, then you come back and see how she does. Here we are with this lady who's won the game, and now she's going to try for a big bundle of money here. Now, we've got two audience matches for you, and I want to point out to you that whatever you win in these audience matches, you'll multiply by 10, and that will be the final dollar amount you could be playing for. Uh, let's begin with the first one. We polled a recent studio audience, Charlotte. We got their best response to this. Silly blank. Now, the answer that bunch gave most often will get you $500 if you match it, $250 for matching their second most popular answer, and $100 for matching the third most popular. And we can get some help from our celebrities. Okay, thank you. Um, um, Fanny. Silly putty. Silly putty. Richard. Silly soap. Silly soap. And Charles. Silly Billy. Silly Billy. So those are the three, Silly Billy, Silly Putty, and Silly Soap. Now, you can have one of those, or if you think you've got a better idea, give us that one. But you have to make a decision now. I'll take Silly Putty. You want Silly Putty? That's what we're looking for. Let's find out if it's up there, and if so, where? We'll be getting down at the bottom, and we will reveal the $100 response. Silly Goose. Mm, silly Goose. Okay, let's see if we got a little silly putty under the $250 number. Silly Willie. Silly Willie. Well, so far we haven't got anything that anybody gave us. I silly hope silly. Billy, Bill and Will. Oh, I see. Fairly Not close. Yeah. Match. Oh. All right, last chance for a silly putty slighted Earl. Yeah, you got it. Congratulations. Very good. Now. Charlotte, you won the $500, which means that the least we'll be playing for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. And we are going to see how much more you can win with the second audience match. So may we see it, please. My little blank. My little blank. Let's turn around and see who will give us some good... Joanne, have you got one? Yeah. What? You want me to... Oh, my little chickadee. My little chickadee. Very good. Um, Dick? My little Margie. My little Margie. Yeah, yeah. Richard? My little Fred, no. <laughs> Dirt is tough. Now give him a chance oh, no, to think wait. for a second. Wait I... a minute. Something may come out of the blue. Wait a minute. <laughs> Something may come from heaven. Uh, uh, uh. No, I'm going to say my little. Same oh, that's thing. That's ridiculous. Thank you, thank you. That's a song and a big hit show. I know. Show. My Little Girl. My Little Girl. Yeah. Okay. My Little Girl. My Little Girl. Mike Douglas. Already sold two records. <laughs> I bought one, he bought the other. One, two, half a course. Oh, uh, yes. The yeah. girl and my... Uh, oh, thank you a lot. <laughs> my Little Margie, My Little Chickadee, and My Little Girl are the three, Charlotte. You want one of those, or have you got a better idea? No, I think I'll say My Little Chickadee. My oh, oh, Little yeah. Chickadee. But I do have a little girl. You do have a little girl. How old is she? She's three. Oh, three. Okay. We're looking for my little chickadee. May we see the one hundred dollar number? My little darling is up there. Oh, darling girl. My little darling girl. <laughs> not the girl. Little... No, it's not my little Caesar. It's my little chickadee. What we want? Slide it, Earl. Oh! Margie. Looks very good for you, dear. I think you're gonna get it. 
Rapid Here we go. Yeah. My little chickadee, reveal yourself. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Now, you want another $500. Remember, we multiply that by 10, makes another five. Add it to the previous five. You're shooting for a pot of $10,000. Now, we'd be glad to give you the money, but one little hurdle. You've got to match one celebrity exactly. Now you must choose one. I'd like to choose Joanne. You want to choose Joanne? All right. <laughs> To yes. Yeah. She's just had cardiac arrest. She's never been chosen before. All right, this will be a written response, Joanne. I'm ready. Here we go. Stand on the tape. Face me, if you would, please, my dear. And here it is. This is worth ten thousand dollars. Good luck to you. Here we go. Boo, blank. That's B O O blank. We appreciate your enthusiasm. But you may be saying a rotten answer and lead her astray. So not too loud, if you please. Joanne is finished. Now, Charlotte, we ask you to think of an answer which you think Joanne Flug has written on that card. And if you give us the same one, we give you the $10,000. That's all there is to it. Boo. Well, I don't really feel like this, but boo who? Boo who. Okay. She says boo who will match you for $10,000. What do you say? Well, I have a little girl, when she falls down, she makes a boo-boo. And I thought of that, but then I thought, boo-hoo. Boo-hoo! Yeah. 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 got the money! Congratulations! Oh! You kiss them all, Sarah. You got a grand total of eleven thousand dollars. And while she's kissing everybody and hugging everybody, we're gonna do a little business with America. Hurry so, right back. This gal is really happy. She's got $11,000, and we hope you'll tune in next week and see who else is going to win some money here on Match Game PM and meet more fascinating celebrities as these are. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Some contestants will... than a new leading car wax. Water beat improves it. DuPont guarantees it. And Bardol's new fuel system treatment, the gasoline additive to help keep your entire fuel system clean from gas tank to carburetor, you'll feel the difference. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game PM. A Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. From Matt, Gary Burgoff, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Joanne Flu, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flay as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 78. And now, here's the star of Match Game 78, Gene Raver.
I see. <laughs> Some little gnome has been at work oh, yesterday. If you were tuned in, you remember we had a little microphone trouble. And I see Thor, the god of war and lightning, came down here and put a little thing on the microphone to dissipate the static electricity. This one seems to be working fine. Good. I will handle it very gingerly now as I greet you. Is everything all right? Everything's terrific. Aren't you gay you? and colorful? Oh, why, thank no, you. No, just gay. Oh. <laughs> Let's get, let's get on right with it. You should try the whole thing without that facocta arrow. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave that on there. I think that gives it character. <laughs> let's say hello to the current champ, Terry Harrell. $2,600. Now, as the time expired last time, she won another game. That's her fifth game, and that means she's going to have a go at over $5,000. Are you ready for that, Terry? We're ready for you. We'll do that right after we do this with you. Here, here we go. Terry Harrell. Now, I said she's going to try for over 5000 What she's going to try for is $2,500 because she won the 250 Now, to collect that $2,500, you must match one celebrity exactly, and it's time for you to choose one. Richard. Okay. You swing around here and face me. I'll get the question worth $2,500. Wish you the very best of luck. I hope you win it. Richard, here it is. Blank trial. That's T-R-I-A-L. Blank trial. Blank trial. Now, if you give us the answer, which Richard has written on that card, we give you... $2,500. What do you say to that blank trial? I have two good answers. We'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Court trial. Oh. Court trial. Just for the heck of it, what was the other? Jury. Jury trial was the other choice. <laughs> they don't like either one of them there. No, I, I, would, I might have said jury trial. What do you say, Richard? Murder trial. Murder trial. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, I guess all three were really good. Number of good choices. Now, Terry, you've got $2,600. You are going to meet another player now. Here comes Deborah Colburn. Debbie, you know Terry? Yes. We welcome you and ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself, if you would, please. Okay, I'm here from Orange County. Yeah. And I'm married. I have two boys, Michael's seven, and Todd is 19 months, and I'm a housewife. Well, we welcome you, Deborah, Thank and wish you. you the best of luck. Thank you. Shall we have a go at it? Well. B, please. Which? B. B it is. Deborah said she wants B, and she gets B. Yeah. Yeah. Harry said, <clears throat> my ex-wife really hates me. Instead of sending me a singing telegram for my birthday, she sent me a blanking telegram. <laughs> my ex-wife really hates me. Instead of sending me a singing telegram for my birthday, she sent me a blanking telegram. Give me your hat. No, oh, you're not a well person. I go to you. All right. I know, but if I say it out loud, then the contestant will know. Uh, she needed a little clarification. Oh, I was going to ask you a question. Oh, I see. I but if there's, if there's tax, all right. Yeah. Listen, I don't want to ask you a question. I just want to blow in your ear. Is that all right? <laughs> I won't be sneaky out there. All right. Now, I didn't get an answer. Oh, you want an answer? Well, you finished here. Oh, okay. Harry said, my ex-wife really hates me. Instead of sending me 
a singing telegram for my birthday. She sent me a blanking telegram. The only thing I could think of was shooting. A shooting telegram. You mean like, yeah. bang, you're Come dead. Come out shooting. <laughs> you sure have pretty teeth, Deborah. Thank you. <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> yes, Gary? I said a punching telegram. A punching telegram. Any hostile Thank thought you, would be acceptable here? The one with the black eye. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. I guess I, guess, I, guess I went. You certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> this I... is the runner-up to a pathetic award. Uh, I mean, it's not as bad as. Uh, well, no, I thought it had to be within the framework of the kind of telegram you could send, as in a condolence telegram. A condolence telegram. Oh, don't pick on me. Look now, how cute I was yesterday. <laughs> Any hostile thought would be acceptable here. Charles? <clears throat> screaming. It's a silly. screaming. Oh, that's all right. He did to pick up my answer. At least it ended in I-N-J. Well, now, you know, like a singing telegram, a screaming telegram. This is a hard one. Any number of good possibilities here. Joanne? Well, you know, we singing to yeah. my telegram, so I tried to relate when you have an argument, what right. you would do, and Sir Charles and I were just right on. We did screaming. Yeah. Scream. Oh, it was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Screaming. Deborah's just looking for a shock like here. <laughs> you related to an argument, did you say? Well, it was very difficult, but I've watched you and Brett and uh, Charles, and I kind of picked up on it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> She's not playing with a full deck, folks. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Yes. Yeah, I said a shouting telegram. A oh, shouting. Oh, that's horrible. Yes. yes. Shouting would be in the same family as screaming. Absolutely. Wait a minute. Screaming. Wait a minute. Family. I have Drug. to do something here. Just a minute. Hold it. Don't give your answer yet, honey. Okay. Go ahead. Shooting. <laughs> So that's one for you, Debbie. Yours will be long in a moment. Right now, this for you. Here we go. The other half of round one, Terry, this is all yours. <clears throat> Harvey said. Yeah. He says, you know how at most, <clears throat> you know how at most motels you put a quarter in the bed and get magic fingers? <laughs> well, I know a motel where you put five dollars in a bed and get magic blanks. <laughs> But I think I better look at it to make sure. You know, I... at most motels, you put a quarter in the bed, and you get magic fingers. I know a hotel where you put five dollars in the bed, and you get magic blank. <laughs> when we had our bad earthquake a few years ago, a guy had just put a quarter in one of those beds in the valley and ran out in the street and said, "It's me. I did it. I caught it." <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I love it. What was the question? You know, at most motels, you put a quarter in the bed and get oh, magic I got it. fingers. I got it. All right. Okay. Now, Terry, you know, these motels, you put a cord in the bed, you get magic fingers. Well, I know a motel where you put $5 in the bed and you get magic blanks. Magic tricks. 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 <laughs> okay. Take me to your motel. <laughs> Been there. Oh. <laughs> She's prettier when she blushes. Look. Yes, I see that. The trouble with your answer is it's too good. Yeah. This panel. Speak for myself, I know. Oh, I said magic bodies. Magic bodies. Body. Right, okay. Brett? Talk about too smart for the room. Listen, uh, it's in this, uh, this should be an art. Uh, uh, tricks or hookers? <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Oh, okay. Charles? <laughs> Chuck chose broads. Okay. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> uh, magic fingers for a quarter, well, five dollars, you get magic... Well, magic fingers mean massage to me. Right, right. So the best kind of massage is with your feet. Oh, yeah. yeah. You These are that? run up and down your run back. Up in the back. Stinks, mm -hmm. Joanne. Throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do I know? Yeah, your feet stinks. <laughs> okay, Richard. Dr. Scholl says howdy. <laughs> <laughs> magic boobs. <laughs> five dollars, you know. Five dollars worth, eh? Yeah. Right. And speaking of... Uh... <laughs> worth every penny. Right. Well, of course. Oh, yeah. Hey. Well, so this there we are at the end of round one. Let's go to round two and see what happens. This is the final round. Deborah, you may have A or B. I'll try A this time, please. All right. Who will not play? Fanny, you do not play. Imagine yeah. that. The doctor said... Uh-oh. 
Today I treated the worst case of heartburn I ever saw. Oh. When the man came into my office, smoke was coming out of his blank. Oh. Now that's heartburn. And I know the answer to that. I can't play. Worst case of heartburn I ever saw. The man came into my office, smoke was coming out of his blank. What's that wonderful Buddy Hackett joke? He says he thought that heartburn was a permanent state of affairs until he went into the army and got rid of it. <laughs> his mother <laughs> Remember, you remember it, Richard. Uh, to do the game, uh, to heck with the all. Uh, I was stalling for time trying to think of a brilliant answer. Oh, this is an easy one. Oh, sure, of course it is. Just go with it. All right. Okay. Ready then? We're ready. All right. Deborah, the doctor said today, I treated the worst case of heartburn I've ever seen in my life. Man walked into my office. Smoke was coming out of his blank. His mouth. No, oh, straightforward. <laughs> now that's straightforward and direct and to the point, isn't it? There it is. Right there. Yes? Boy, heartburn. For all the pregnant women in America, God love them. <laughs> mouth. Mouth. <laughs> what do you say, Chuck? I disagree with that. <laughs> I mean, you, you didn't get heartburn when no, you were I pregnant? Pregnant, but I mean, those are like old wives' tales. If oh. your diet is correct, there should be no symptom of heartburn that's or right. agitation in the entire that's rest right. of the That's right. Let's hear it, folks. Right. Those were all men who gave that round of applause. Right. <laughs> They've all got heartburn, too. Ears. Where did you no. go? Ears was Ears. his answer. Deborah is looking for mouth there. Oh. Now, Joanne, we come to you. Heartburn was so bad, smoke was coming out of his... I have another winner for you. A winner? <laughs> well, uh, mm, chest. Chest. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. All right. Richard? Probably one of the saddest answers I've oh, ever seen. Well, tears. Chest, chest. <laughs> so that's three for her. Now, Terry, three to tie, four to win. Glorious, Ed. <clears throat> That musician must be high on something. Look, he's trying to blow a blank horn. <laughs> that musician must be high on something. Look at that, he's trying to blow a blank horn. The answer came to me so fast, I figured it had to be wrong. Put it right down, trust your first instinct, that's what we say on this show. Oh, I love you when you get angry. <laughs> that's what I like. A blank horn. <laughs> Just He's a musician, sir. That musician must be high on something. Why do you need all this Look. special attention? <laughs> He's trying to blow a blank. I can read lips. That's a good answer. <laughs> He's trying to blow a blank horn because he's high. Don't make me talk too much. No, it hurts. but I get it. I'm just trying to think of another brilliant answer like I'm the last one. Start without yeah. you. <laughs> uh, Terry, have you thought about it? I've thought about it. Okay. <clears throat> Come on now. All right. Gloria said. Smarty Pants hasn't finished over here. <laughs> Too busy talking. Come on, Charles. He's got a heartburn. <laughs> well, if you watched your diet. <laughs> Gloria said that musician must be high on something. Look, he's trying to blow a blank horn. A foghorn. Foghorn is a good answer. <laughs> Now, that's not a bad answer at all, is no, it? No, uh, you want to see a bad answer? I'll give you a bad answer. Right, show me it's a bad answer. a unicorn. Oh! <laughs> that's really bad. You came all this way from Malibu to show us that rotten answer. Don't tell people where I live. <laughs> yes? I'm mm. sick of her being smart. <laughs> How'd you get on this show? She's too here. clever. I said elk. Fanny gave it to me. <laughs> Heard How'd you get on the show? Well, mine isn't smart. Hers are all smart. Charles. I said bull. A bull horn. Well, Terry, we're down to it one more time. Let's see if you're going to tie again this time. Uh, musician must be high on something. He's trying to blow a fog horn, according to Terry. A good response. Well, I had fog, and they told me it was just rotten, so I picked another one. And I said car horn. Car horn. Yep, yeah, there's Deborah Colbert once again. There's a fog horn. There's a car. 
would, please. Well, Terry, you're gonna leave here with a pretty good bundle of money. $2,600. Yep. <laughs> and we're very happy for you. Terry Thank Harrell, you. ladies and gentlemen, while we're spinning Thank it off, you. I'm gonna spin a message or two for you. <laughs> here we are with Deborah Colburn. Now, she's won her first game. She's got her 100. She could win over 5,000. Here, let's see how it goes, Deborah. Let's begin by pointing out to you that we polled a studio audience and we said, you give us your best response to this. Spirit blank. Now, the answer they gave most often will get you $500 if you match it. For matching the second most popular answer, you get $250. Then if you match the bottom one, you get $100. And three of the six loonies will help you. My father told me to ask Richard. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, my place or your... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I was so happy to hear from her dad again. Uh, I'll say the spirit of St. Louis. Spirit of St. Louis? Yeah. Okay. Lindbergh played it. it? I saw the spirit of St. Louis, the original, just a few days ago. I went to that wonderful aerospace museum right. in Washington, D.C., and it's a beautiful place. Sorry for that, yeah, but I just had no, to it say is. that. It's a great place. Spirit of St. Louis is one. Fanny, you've been called on for number two. Oh, really? <laughs> Spirit of 76. Yeah. Okay. And Charles. Spirit gum. Spirit gum. <laughs> but he buys it by the case. <laughs> Charles. What's so funny? Charles buys spirit gum in 50-gallon drums because it's used in theatrical parlance for certain things. He keeps his hair down. That's not true. I use tape. Oh, God. <laughs> now, you may have spirit gum, spirit of St. Louis, or spirit of 76, or reject all three and give us one of your own. What is your pleasure? I'm going to go with 76. Spirit of 76. We'll begin down at the bottom, and we will reveal the $100 response. Spirit world. Oh. That's where I wish Charles was. <laughs> May we see the $250 response. Spirit of St. Louis is Richard's answer. Well, you're getting close to it, Deborah. I hope it's going to be up there. May we see it, please. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Congratulations. Now you've picked up another $500. Are you going to play for 10 times that amount or $5,000? And we'll give you the money if you'll match one celebrity. I'm going to go with Fanny. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you thrilled her. Good luck to you. Here it is. This is worth $5,000. Now think carefully. Herbert Blank. Herbert Blank. H-E-R-B-E-R-T Blank. <laughs> All right, Deborah, give us the answer she's written on the card. We give you five thousand dollars. Herbert Blank. I'm drawing a blank. Herbert Blank. Something must come to All your I mind. All I think of is Einstein. <laughs> well, that was Albert Einstein. I know. Oh. That's Just take it. a deep breath. That's it. That's it. Okay. All right. Sorry. I guess we have to go with that because that's what you said. Oh, sweet. All right. Fanny, what have you got there? Hoover. Oh. Herbert Hoover. Oh, oh, Herbert yeah. Hoover. Gone. All right. Now, listen, it wasn't a total loss because you did pick up a little money. You've got $600, and that's not bad, and you're going to meet another player later, but right now we've got this for you. Ready to match the stars, Richard Paul. Rex Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Joanne Flew, Bill Daly, and from Flo, Joyce Bulewak, as we play the star-studded big money match game.
And now, here's the star of Max Game, Gene Rayburn. Hi, John. Thank you, friends. Welcome, one and all. Look at the jewelry on him. What yeah. is all that? Look at that. I wore this today. My wife said, that's mine. I said, well, you never wear it. I stole it. Okay. <laughs> See? Welcome, Richard. Oh, now, let's say hello to Gene Noyes and Ray Marks over here. Good luck to both of you. Let's find out who you are and where you're from. Ray, tell us about you, please. I'm a native Californian. Yeah. I am working as a microwave technician now and finishing an engineering degree. And I hang glide and play bass guitar. Hang gliding looks like a lot of fun, but I don't think I have the courage to try it. Oh, sure. I, there's a place out here. Where the heck is it? Down uh, south of uh, uh, Monarch Bay in South Laguna. I went out, drove down there once. These guys get on these things and they run off. And here's the cliff here, and the ocean's down below, and they just go. <laughs> and they go around. It looks so like so much fun, but I'm a coward. All right. And Gene, how about you? Well, I live in Los Gatos, California, which is up about 60 miles from San Francisco. Yes. And I'm a cat person, and I write a little column for the local paper and things like that. But I want to tell you why I came here today. Why did you come here today, I came Jean? on a mission of mercy. Really? Yes. What is that? I'm volunteering my services now that Miss Brett is going to be with her play back in New York. You want to be a regular? <laughs> no, I want to be, if you need a substitute to go to Encino with you, I'd be glad to Oh! <laughs> Well, that's the first offer today. <laughs> uh, well, I thank you, and I am flattered and honored, and I'll be uh, waiting. we'll negotiate. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right? Good luck to both of you. Thank you. Here we go, Ray, A or B? I'll take A. A it is. See, Brett, you can be replaced. <laughs> <laughs> you lucked out. <laughs> Here it is. Paul said, I grew up in a really strange town. You're fired. Well, not the kids on the left. Yeah. Uh, the, the, let them all... Eight can stay and the others will have to go. Paul said, I grew up in a really strange town. The ice cream truck doubled as a blank. <laughs> I'll read it one more time, Ray. Paul said, I grew up in a really strange town. The ice cream truck doubled as a blank. As a mail truck? Oh. oh. You expect these weirdos to say mail truck? A straight answer think, uh... like that? <laughs> all right, if that's all you can think of, that's all right, Ray. That's the way we play the game. First thing that comes into your little head. What do you say? <laughs> Speaking of little heads. Yeah, what came into I your big head? I think Ray had a wonderful answer compared to a street sweeper. Street sweeper? <laughs> well, I guess any kind of truck would be all right. Yeah, I, I don't know. What do we do, fire our whiters? Is that what we did? Is that what... Where do we get these questions from? I want the name of the person who wrote that question. I want to send it off to Mark Goodson. It's probably one relative. Patty Wagon. Patty Wagon. Boy, what a stinky question. Now, wait a minute. When you hear a good answer, you'll realize it that... Isn't that terrific? Trust me, I've the seen The question it. is not as bad as you think. Very close. What do you oh. say? Now, wait a minute. Get Bess Meyerson now. <laughs> Bess Meyerson, are you available? Hearse. Hearse. Now, well, wait a minute. That's good, isn't it? Now, Miss Brett, Still ice cream trucks are cold. They're right. refrigerated. Yeah. Yes, I and understand that. A hearse, you know, is where they carry stiffs. It would be nice to have them refrigerated and cold. It's so not they're sanitary. Well, whatever Awful. it is. So that, that oh. makes some sense there. So it's not as bad you, a question as you All of a sudden, there you are wanting this game to make sense yes, after I do. seven long years. I grew up in a really strange town. The ice cream truck doubled as a... Well, I couldn't spell it quite right. As you saw, I ended it with a T, then I switched it around, and it, since it was cold, the logical thing had to be a hearse. But first you said Hearst. <laughs> I know, it was Charles Hearst. <laughs> William Randolph Hearst. All right, Bill. Uh, how about a garbage truck? Can I come? Garbage truck is okay. <laughs> See, isn't that good? Thanks. Good audience. That's yeah, fine. good audience. What do you say, Joyce? How much did he pay him off? That's yeah. what I said. I said a hearse. Did that spell it right? Hearse is all right. right. Yeah, you got it. Right. it. <laughs> Now, let's see what we have for Gene Noyes here. Garbage. Larry the Lover said, That girl is wearing a dress made out of newspapers. Oh. I'd love to look at her blank section. Are you sure? Here we go. 
Joyce, you're ready. Larry the Lover said that girl is wearing a dress made out of newspapers. I'd love to look at her blank section. Classified. Classified. <laughs> What'd you say, Richard? Jean is pretty. Classified. Fabulous time in Encino. Older is better. <laughs> Classified. That's two for Gino. Now, uh, you are the expert on these questions. Why is classified so wonderful? What does that mean in it terms of... It matches the contestant, you idiot. <laughs> I said sports. Sports. I love to look at her sports section. Well, I mean, you want to know if she's got a little life in her. That's right. I agree with you. <laughs> Full back? <laughs> Larry the Lover's that girl's wearing a dress made up newspaper. You love to look at her blank section. What do you say to that? The obvious. What? Want ads. Want ads. Thank you. Well, I was yes. on a roll there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you got a late oh, yes oh, it there. Does, it does go yeah, with that. want oh, ads right. and classified. <laughs> what do you uh, say, Bill? I don't know. This, I'd like to look at her front page. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's all right. Joyce, you Keep were laughing going. long in advance, weren't you? I, I, I know it. I just had the, all of those things came to mind. But I love, I always look, when you have children, you look at this section. Their weekend activity section. Their weekend activities. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we had some interesting responses there. And we're at the end of round one. Three to nothing in Gene Noy's favor. Round two coming up after this. <laughs> now, shall we carry on? That's a good Let's see. Gene, you're ahead. You'll have to go first. I believe I'll stick with B. All right. Charles, Bill, and Joyce. You are the only three playing. Three. Wilma said... Yeah. Wilma. Wilma. Wilma said, you know you've got an ugly baby. <laughs> when you take it to the zoo oh. and people start throwing blank at it. Oh. <laughs> blank. Well, you know, plural or singular, whatever you want to do. All right. Now, Jean, we're ready. Wilma said, you know you've got an ugly baby. When you take it to the zoo and people start throwing blank at it. Peanuts. Peanuts. <laughs> what do you say, Chuck? Chuck. Peanuts. Peanuts. All right. What do you say, Bill? I'm sorry, I blew it. <laughs> Bananas. I went to another Bananas. Crowd. I can say anything. Doorknob. Yay, yay, yay. Right. Oh, bananas and peanuts were the two good responses yeah, well. there. Do you have one of those? Fish. Fish. <laughs> I just said bananas and peanuts were the two good answers. You say fish? What? Don't do that to me. It was like those little things. You told fish. All right. So <laughs> now, the Ray. Seals. You yeah. throw fish at the seal. You, you throw need. Uh, let's see, you need four to tie and five to win. Here we go. Ruth said, this restaurant is really sleazy. How sleazy is it? It's your last chance. <laughs> it's so sleazy, the hot dogs have blanks. <laughs> That's an easy one, I think. Let's see. <laughs> I'm so used to beautiful, I don't know who I am. You don't think you know you are anyway. Ruth said, this restaurant is really sleazy. The hot dogs have blanks. Flea collars. The hot dogs have flea collars? <laughs> flea collars, he said. I understand that. All right. <laughs> well... Well, I quite frankly, I just went for the obvious and yes. said fleas. Fleas, yes, I would draw that. That'd be the answer. Hot dogs and fleas. I am into heavy sleaze. Heavy, heavy sleaze. No, little fleas. Now, I'm so sleazy, the hot dogs have the mange. Oh. That's a wonderful really? answer to think about. Now you got to match it's everybody sleazy. else, Ray, to achieve a tie and stay in the game. I'm sorry, fleas. Fleas is the definitive answer, kind of. There, what the bottom tier have? Come on down, Gene. Come on up, Fleas, fleas, and top there. All right. 
Today we're going to wheel you off here, and we come back later for game number two, all right? I'll be here. All right, Ray, thank you. Now we'll have a go at the big money. You can win over $10,000 here, and good luck to you, my dear. Here we go. We polled the studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Milking blank. Okay. 500 for matching the most popular answer, 250 for the second, and 100 for the third. Three of the six stars are allowed to give you a little assistance. Uh, Miss Brett. I don't like to date myself, but what about milking stool? Yes. <laughs> a milking stool. Milking stool. We understand. Uh, Joyce? Uh, I will date myself. Uh, a milking machine. <laughs> <laughs> Charles? A milking maid. Uh, milking, milking maid. maid. Milking, milking maid, milking, milking maid. stool, and milking machine are the three. Now, you choose one of those or give us one of your own. Milking stool. Milking stool. All right. I don't pick on you. Just be nice now. Come Let's on. find out if milking stool is up there somewhere. We'll go down to the bottom and reveal a $100 response. Oh, it is right over there. That was a great one. Let's take a look at the next one, please. Yeah. Machine. What do you think's on top? Milking and laugh. Go. Milking and cows. Yeah. No one said that over there. All right, now you've got $100 means the least you'll play for is $1,000, but you can make it $2,000 if you get a lucky spin of the wheel. So let's go up here, and can you reach that one up there? All right, you've got it. Give it a whirl. We'll root for a double. slid past for a second, the light went out, and then it came back on again. So that's show that means you are playing for $2,000. Good luck to you. And this is it, Gene. Blank Babe. B-A-B-E. Put it in the slot. Oh! <laughs> Shoot. All right. Jump shot. She's finished now. And you match her, you get $2,000. What do you say to that? It's you, babe. It's you, babe. Is that, is that part of that song? It's a song, yeah. That, I think so. Yeah. I went blank, frankly. It's you, babe. Yeah. Wasn't that a, a, one of the early hits or the theme song of... Uh, Couple, Sonny and Cher. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. right. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. well, that's, a, that's what occurred to me. What occurred to you, Joanne? The only thing that occurred to me was hey, babe. Hey, hey babe. babe. <laughs> I was. I know. I know. You're too smart. Oh, I just got too clever. Oh. Yeah, she should have said it. Well, anyway, you've got $100. You'll <laughs> we'll be playing game number two in a moment or so. And right now, this message for you. Now, we'll carry on. Have either of you ever been to England? No, that's Lady. my friend you were just speaking with. That oh, really? I, I haven't seen her in 35 years. She lives in England? Yes, and I picked her up at the airport Friday after 35 years of writing. Hey, are you an American? You're an English lady. Well, she was reminding me that a fellow named Terry Wogan does a show in England called Blankety Blank. So she told me, yes. Which this company has franchised, and they do it over there. Oh, I see. And they do it also in, uh, in Germany, too. It's called Schnickschnack. <laughs> and apparently, there's no word in German for blank. So uh, yeah. they, and uh, isn't that interesting? Oh. <laughs> Okay, Ray, A or B? I'll take A. Hey, okay, anything you say is all right with me then. Gloria has the world's most useless job. She's a fashion designer in a blank. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we'll go on, Ray, because Charles is doing his artwork. I see he already has an answer. Gloria has the world's most useless job. She's a fashion designer in a blank. Mortuary. In a mortuary. <laughs> I tell you, 
another great. Yeah. He continues his winning ways, doesn't he? <laughs> well, we have to accept that as his response. Well, they do have fashion designers in more trees. All those backless dresses, if you recall. Oh, yes. Actually, I was thinking of a girl who spent a lot of time working with leaves and flowers and buds. A nudist camp. camp. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Marching endlessly to the sound of my own drummer. I said prison. A prison? Yeah. Well, that's interesting because they all wear the same thing. Wear... Stripes. Why is basic that stripes. Rotten ass? No, I never said it was rotten. I thought it was quite good. A nunnery. Nunnery. <laughs> yeah, any place where they'd wear a uniform would be good. It right, would. Joanne? No. Sure. Fashion designer in a blink. Someplace. Oh, I mean, I can't understand where Ray's mind was. Well, it has to be in a nudist colony. A nudist colony. Yes. <laughs> Think oh, nude, yeah. Ray. Think yeah. nude. <laughs> Do you think nude? I can have a bad... No, do I think nude? What do you have in mind? Not since he's been sick. <laughs> At a massage parlor. Yeah. Go, go, go for I'm going to roll here. All right. right. Go ahead, Joyce. I, I know what he was thinking about, about the mortuary, though, because there's a, that, a friend of mine who, when her husband died, she went to see him laid out, and he had a brown suit on. And she said, no, no, I wanted him in the dark blue suit. And he said, well, would you mind stepping out just a minute, and we'll take care of that. And so she no sooner stepped out the door, and they said, would you please come back in? She came back in, and there he was in the dark blue suit. And she said, well, how did you do that? He said, it's easy. We just switched heads. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You, You're going to stay out of show business from now on. I can see that. What do you do, darling? All right. Gene, you ready? Yes, sir. Here we go. Oh. Rodney Rich yeah. is really rich. Don't respond, please. His parrot doesn't say, Polly want a cracker. It says, Polly want a blank. Rodney Rich. Quick reading. Are the fish biting, Chad? Yep. Now, Gene, Rodney Rich is really rich. His parrot doesn't say Polly want a cracker. It says Polly want a blink. Cracker with beluga caviar. A cracker with caviar. All right. <laughs> Richard? Hello. <laughs> I want a Polly want caviar crouton. Caviar crouton. Aha. <laughs> Very good for you, Richard. But he'd also like to have a caviar canapé. Aha! That's two! Well, I thought you were going to bomb out with that answer. You're joking. I said a little petit beurre. Aha! Uh -huh. A little butter? Does that say? What does that say? It means a little cracker. <laughs> wait a minute. petit beurre means a butter cracker. Now, wait a minute. Take a look at that. That says B-E-A-R-E. -E. Bear. Any Frenchman in the audience? Butter. What? Butter. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's in the audience shouts butter, the other guy shouts parquet. Has butter. <laughs> well, yeah. you ever heard of Burr. What do you got there? Polly wants a cracker, does Polly want a... Oh, well, this is a very sophisticated parrot. It's a, he wants a gold Krugeron. Krugeron, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was very chic, though. Yeah. Not good. But almost said caviar. Mm. I said a, a bottle of Dom Perignon with caviar and croutons. <laughs> you better get this spelling out. Look at that card closer, Kate. I can see it. You got it. Now, I don't know how to spell Dom Perignana or caviar or croutons. So I really got a good one well, This also was my last, last answer, if you look closely. Right here. Right here. I use this one card for all answers. I just pull out this one card that looks like that. So there it is. Maybe we can know the caviar is down there. That's, That's right. It's there. I can read it just as plain. Joyce? Well, I got confused. I, so I meant to do? say English trifle, but I said English truffle. Yeah. Truffles. <laughs> Well, truffles are different from trifles. Up. All right. Now, so we're with three to nothing at the end of round one. That's the way it was in the last game. And now this for you, if you please. Yes, it's time to go. Thank you all. You were splendid. I'm Gene Rayburn asking you to join us next time for the match main. Uh, match uh, playing game thing. Anyway, goodbye. It's America's favorite ball game. Bingo America with Patrick Duffy, where the world's biggest bingo machine lets you play along with the contestants for a chance to win some money. I want you to play and I want you to win big. Print your card for free at GSN.com and if your bingo matches our bingo, you can win cash.
B-I-N-G-O. It's that simple. Watch and play Bingo America. Get ready to match the stars. Richard Paul. Rex Summers. Charles Nelson Riley. Joanne Flug. Bill Daly. And from Flo, Joyce Beautifly. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Redmond. Okay, John. Thank you, friend. Welcome. Ready? Ready when you yes. are, CB. Anything you say. Yes. Right. Any uh, opening comments? He's starting with the artwork no, already. I'm practicing. Haven't even asked you a question yet. You're writing the answers. All right. Well, that's unusual. Would you all join me in greeting Tom Chaplin and Marianne Gauchy? <laughs> greetings once again. To refresh the memories of those who uh, were with us and uh, to inform those who are not with us, let's lightly go over the story of your lives. <laughs> Beginning with you, Marianne. Okay, how long You're a runner, you right, right? From UCLA. Right, and I go to medical school there. And You're in your second year second of medical year. school. Does that mean you finished four years of pre-med? Uh, right. So I got my uh, bachelor's. Bachelor of Science at UCLA as well, mm. and then I'm now in big medical school, finally. You're working with <laughs> cadavers and all that? Last year. Oh. <laughs> I'm done with that. You've, gradu you've, you've graduated, graduated from <laughs> cadavers. Yeah. Last year we did all the normal stuff. This year we get into all the abnormal stuff. It's I really don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. Tom, about you? Yeah, I'm from uh, Santa Maria. Yep. I'm a registered nurse. Yeah. I work in an emergency room. Yeah. yeah. You have two kids. Right. Jason and, a wife. and Jennifer. A wife, too. Yeah, she right. comes with the package. Right. And, uh... <laughs> All right. Nice to have you here. Where are we in this thing? Let's just take a look. Oh, we're practically at the end, aren't we? And, Tom, it's up to you now. You need four to tie and five to win. It can be done. Let's see if you do it. Muggsy said, Santa Claus will never come back to our lousy neighborhood. Aww, Last hot. Christmas, Aww. someone blanked his reindeer. <laughs> yes, a sad story. Four out of six, five out of six, now six out of six times. Santa Claus will never come back to our lousy neighborhood. Last year, someone blanked his reindeer. Somebody stole his reindeer? Stole his reindeer. <laughs> All right. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Yourself. Christmas already, hey? Yeah. Well, yeah, stole. Stole the reindeer. Four to one to score. It's just so upsetting, you know. It's, it's sad. Like, well, mugged. And then, and then stole the name. Oh. What? Hey. Stole the name? Stole the name. It was so terrible. Oh, oh, my oh. land of goats. I hope they had a Dugas Porsche. Oh, dear. Yeah. Can you follow that act? Boy, that's bad acting. <laughs> <laughs> now, my mother was a registered nurse, but of course she didn't have a mustache. Stole. 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 I heard your mother shaved. <laughs> All right. Joanne. I, yes. Uh, last Christmas, someone blanked his reindeer. Well, my mother was a registered nurse, and she did have a mustache. She did. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I hope Sorry, you're Sorry, Tim, but, uh, no, Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> Wherever you are. Off. I said stole with a Z. Stole it in. Four to four to four. Nice score. Now, you got two more chances here to win it with either Joyce or Bill. Oh, Bill. Naturally, you don't expect to match Bill because no. he's a left field. Well, fortunately, someone follows me. Yeah, we see, we always have to have a one yeah, left field person different. among every... Uh, I'm uh, really out of this game right here. I said they saddled his reindeer. Saddled, saddled his reindeer. reindeer? Didn't ride him, just saddled him, huh? Oh, good. I thought... <laughs> Joyce? I thought you told me that you had a funny answer. You meant funny peculiar. Yeah, funny oh. peculiar, yeah. I said stole. That was good. Now, Marianne, this thing is going to turn around so that you'll be going backstage for a little while while we All do the right. big money super match here. But we'll see you later for game number two. All right, here we go. You're going to have a shot at the big money now. 
and we wish you the very best of luck. We polled the studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Mobile blank. Okay. Mobile blank. If you give us the answer they wrote down most often, you get $500. And then for matching the second most popular, $250. And if you match the third, you get $100. <laughs> Who do you want over there? I think I have to ask Richard. Oh. 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 Mobile, Alabama. Everything. Joyce? Joyce? Mobile home. Yeah. Yeah. Joyce. It's mobile home. Mobile. Oh, they said mobile. We're Is it the we're same saying spelling? Mobile. Does it have to be the same spelling? Well, we're pronouncing it differently. It's spelled the same. Mobile. Will I say mobile home? All right. <laughs> okay. Or Joanne. mobile home. Now you got one more to go. Uh, Joanne? Yes. Help. Oil. Those two. Mobile oil. What? Oh, mobile oil. Very good. I just no, that's mobile oil. Oh, mobile oil. Oh, mobile oil. Mobile oil. Mobile oil. Mobile is the word we have here. Is that mobile? Mobile. Mobile is the name of the oil. Yeah. Well, what is this? Mobile. Well, that's Alabama. That's right. <laughs> Gee, when those folks are filling out their cards, no one's standing over them telling them how to pronounce it. it. Yeah. They let them write what they want to write. Mobile. Mobile oil. Now you got a choice of uh, uh, choosing mobile oil, mobile home, or mobile Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> mobile home was the one I was going to choose. You were. Yeah. And if so, where? Let's take a look at the one hundred dollar number. Say. But I love Joanne Flew. That's right, my angel. Hey, attendant, I want a quart of mobile oil. I'd like. Fill her up Jim. with mobile gasoline. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the next one, please. Mobile Alabama. Yeah, it. It's going to be mobile home. Hi, right, Job. I think you've got it, old bean. Here we yeah. go. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now, you got the $500, and I'll tell you more about that right after I tell America about this. All right, Mr. Chaplin has a $500. That means the least he'll play for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. But he's going to spin the wheel, and if he gets lucky, he'll play for $10,000. Step up there, have a go at it. We'll all root for a double, right, John? Here we go. Yay, double, 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 double. Stomping on you, Joanne. Why every time. Call the Wheel of Fortune. So oh, that's why. Yeah. With any luck at all, it'll be three, three out of three. Here we go. Oh, Good luck for that, that, that feeling of encouragement. Grape. Blank grape. Blank grape. Yes, I'll let you look at it. You match Joanne Flug, we give you $5,000. Nothing to it, right? Right. Seedless grape. Seedless grape. <laughs> I half agree and half disagree. He says seedless grape will match you. Joanne, what do you say to that? I grew up in the South, and we had a drink called New Grape. And that was my first guess. And then I put green grape, but they are seedless grapes. Green grapes are. Yeah, well, here in the big <laughs> money part of the game, it has to be an exact match. Oh, sorry about rude. that. I'm sorry. All right. Listen, I you've got $500, and uh, we'll bring your opponent back, play game number two, and who knows, you may be back here again. Let's welcome back Marianne Gauchy. Hi there. Hi there. All right, welcome back. 
He's uh, got his $500. He had a little trouble with the big money. But we'll see how this game goes now. You may again choose A or B. I think I'll stick with A. A. Yeah. <laughs> Someone making a funny noise there. there. Oh. It's my stomach. I'm hungry. All right. In the delivery room, the nurse said, that woman must be married to a butcher. She just gave birth to a 10-pound blank. Your mic is out, so we'll have to share this microphone. Oh, with what can Bill. I share with her? That's yeah. great. And when it comes time for you to talk, you talk in the hidden. Right. Whatever. See, I just say right. I can't see what he's writing, but I say right. <laughs> in the delivery room, Marianne, the nurse said that woman must be married to a butcher. She just gave birth to a 10 pound blank. This is tough, but I'm going to say rump roast. <laughs> <laughs> 10 pound roast. Just gave birth to a 10-pound roast. Not only is that a weird answer, but it's also insulting. You said it was tough. Yes. All his roasts are tender, you know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, we trying. can't win them all. Give up. I was thinking maybe, this is fantasy time, a 10-pound salami. A 10-pound salami. All right. What do you got here? They've really gotten surly, haven't they? They have, indeed. They've turned on poor little Richard. Yes. Well, what can I tell you? Okay. This may be a match. Now, keep a close look. A 10-pound slab of beef on rye bread with lettuce and tomatoes. Tomatoes? Yeah. Tomatoes? Oh, tomatoes. Well, tomatoes. Oh, that's the main tomatoes. coming out every once in a tomatoes. while. It sneaks in there. All right, Chuck, you're on. Tomatoes. Chuck said a roast. Rib, pork, crown standing, Chuck or I, and rump. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, you got it. Does your whistle blow? That's a very, very personal question. <laughs> oh. Yes, my whistle does blow. It's gently. Just... I oh, said gently. I, 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 I... A tap move. <laughs> All right, Joanne. Mary, she must be married to a butcher. She just gave birth to a 10-pound... Chop. Chop. What pork chop? Is that Veal what it says chop. on it your just card? just says chop. just says chop. All right. <laughs> yes. Great. Anything else we can share? She I likes sharing, share. doesn't she? Oh, I like to share. I said a, a ten-pound tongue. <laughs> yeah. Ten-pound tongue. That's two boos. Yeah. I got two boos going for me here. They're gonna lynch you. Here we go. I ever thought I was just getting pushy. Yes, she thought no. you were uh, getting. Well, I didn't hear it either. I thought I, thought I was out. making out here. I don't know. <laughs> All right, right Joyce. Let me use your mic now. <laughs> Everything out, out of yours. Everything is out of yours. Everything You're out of yours, yours. Yes, but I'm out of myself. Yes. Uh, a standing rib roast. <laughs> a standing rib roast. It's a roast. All right. So that's two for you, Marianne. And now let's see how you do. Well, no, we'll uh, hold yours for a moment or so while we do this. Ready? Here you are. Here we are. Uh, Tom Chaplin's round one question reads as follows. Fred the farmer said, I just visited China. It was strange. The cows over there don't give milk, they give blank. <laughs> Tom, Fred the farmer said, I just visited China. It was strange. The cows over there don't give milk, they give blank. Soy sauce. Soy sauce. Soy sauce. Oh. Soy sauce. Well, you see, I'm in California. Man. Yeah. I was born here, you know, so I'm heavily into ginseng tea. Uh huh. I'm putting it on my face. It's good for you. It's it's really you. It's what they right. say, man. Makes you virile and powerful. All of those things, yeah. Right. What do you I got know, there? A lot of people who try ginseng tea and hasn't done a damn thing for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said your oolong tea. Oolong tea. If you go for oolong like I go for oolong. If you go for oolong, like I go for oolong, baby, whose record is that? Slim, that's right. Oh, hum, another match. Aha! All right, Tom, you got one. Two to one to score. Joanne, uh, uh, Fred the Farmer visited China. It was strange. The cows over there don't give milk. They give... Ho, oh, hum, another miss. Tea. Tea. <laughs> T, 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 T. Two for T. Three for T. Rice. Rice. Oh, that hurts coming 
through the other. That would be strange when you're milking a cow and a rice comes out. All right, here we go. Marianne, it's two to one. So that means you have to go first. Oh, great. I'll stick with A again. Hey. All right. Little Rodney Rotten is really rotten. Today he wanted to play carpenter. So he hammered his blank into the mound, into the ground. <laughs> so he hammered his blank into the ground. <laughs> All right. Little Rodney Rotten is really rotten. Today he wanted to play carpenter, so he hammered his blank into the ground. Okay, he's so rotten, he hammered his little brother into the ground. His little brother. <laughs> little brother isn't bad. Not bad, right? Actually, Gene, it was one of my earliest traumatic experiences when Rodney <laughs> nailed his little brother Truman to the ground. <laughs> All right. One for Mary Ann. She's and up I have not forgiven him either. I don't blame you. Yes? Another sibling, but of another gender. His baby sister. Oh, his sister. She said brother. That's cruel. You say brother or sister? Brother I said brother. Little, little, you said little brother. Sister. Little, does it say little brother? Yes, it says little brother there. All right. What did you say? Something weird. <laughs> I bet it's none of the above. He hammered his parish priest into the ground. <laughs> Danish now, wait a minute. <laughs> you don't write. Okay, now, four to one is the score, and that means you need three to tie and four to win. You did it last time. Let's see if you can do it now. It's up to you. Weird Willie loves fish so much. Last night, instead of eating a fish, he was blanking a fish. <laughs> Yes, you're the perfect person, Charles. Right. I want to show the audience. Just look at that, Uncle Gene. Imagine that. Right, interesting. From the mother of three. Mother of three. Oh. You got it, Joanne. Very good. Ready, Brett? <clears throat> Weird really loves fish so much, last night, instead of eating fish, he was blanking a fish. Kissing. Kissing is good. Well, instead of just a quick meal, which is what I usually opt for, <coughs> this guy liked fish so much, he wanted to have it on his mantle to look at for years, so I said he was stuffing and mounting a fish. Stuffing and mounting a fish, all right. Right. What do you got? I've lost them, Gene. Well, it may be a match because it doesn't. It has to do with you have to do one to do the other. I think. I don't I think. I was so. hugging. Fish. Hugging. No, hugging does not necessarily involve kissing. Baby talk doesn't work Isn't that either. Right? Huh? Well, no, not necessarily. That's true. What do you got? I have got kissing. Kissing. Huh? All right. Forty-two to score. What do you got there, Bill? Uh, being a good Catholic, I said he was marrying the fish. <laughs> He's marrying. The fish. We don't get into that heavy stuff. All right. Like that means Marianne wins the game. What do you have? All right, whatever. <laughs> Come on down here and take your place on the uh, point of view down there. Tom is going to be leaving here with $500 and our best wishes. A pleasure to meet you, Tom. Thank you for coming by here. Tom Chaplin, while we spin him off, we'll spin a message for you. Hurry back. All right, listen. Now, it's time to... <laughs> yes? Okay, time to fill a minute is what it is. <laughs> oh, well, now it's the yeah, show right. in January. Uh, I'll be doing a play in St. Louis with the fabulous Paul Winfield. Ooh, wonderful. What's the name All of right. it? One of the best actors in the whole wide world. What's the name of it, Brett? They haven't uh, chosen a title they yet. What's a work? Has anyone told Paul Winfield he's doing this yet? <laughs> <laughs> or St. Louis or anything? You're just going to just go there and stay, stay there and wait for this play? You're dying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, when Johnny this Olson introduces happened. everybody at the top of the show, the only one he gives a credit to is Joyce Bullifant. Are you the only one working? Am I the only one? Yeah, he says, and from Flo, Joyce Bullifant. <laughs> yeah, 
Congratulations. Did you see airplane? You're, yes. yes she was funny airplane. You weren't in it. Oh, you were oh, marvelous sure. in airplane. My yeah. ex mother in law was in it. Something. Yeah. Right. Loved you it. were darling in it. Thank darling you. Darling in airplane. I'm Gene Rayburn flying away until tomorrow, the same time for the match game. Bye. Rally the troops and get ready to laugh your blanks off. Get on your mark there, Sergeant. <laughs> it's the Match Game Memorial Day Marathon. And do what I tell you to. GSM salutes the lighter side of the service with a whole day of patriotic punchlines. Hooray for the red, white, and fishbowl! Oh, yeah. And madcap maneuvers. I'll try and march it. I wish you would. <laughs> Watch the Match Game Memorial Day Marathon, Monday, May 26th, starting at 9 a.m.